Yay! What? Yay! Christopher Stockman. So we meet again. Imagine his name was Our fates S. are intertwined. Tuckman. Like his middle name was you know, Stephen, and then his name was Tuckman, and he was like, what if I took the S and put it onto the Tuckman? And it becomes Stuckman. What does Stuckman make you think of? That he's, he's stuck? Yeah. He is kind of stuck, I don't know he? that it makes me think of anything, honestly. There's got to be something thematically valuable about his name. You know, Chris uh, is a very are... uncommon name. Guess... It makes you think of all kinds of things, right? Who's called Chris? There was a comment Nobody. on the, uh, that montage I made of his thumbnail faces. Someone said, his face is stuck, man. And I wish <laughs> I had thought of that. Oh. <laughs> So definitely stuck. Is a... Why did you put a copyright song on that video, you fool? People can't watch it on video uh, randomly on stream. It just it was the perfect song. You know, there's nothing that could be done about it. You it's know just... what? I appreciate Muses that. Told me. The art comes first. You're not a producer or anything, are you? You're more of a creative. Yeah. I'm not one of those suits. Gross. I'm trying to tell you artists what to do. Ever? Yeah, have you want to see it? No, because that would mean I'm not creative. Ugh. Well, uh, you know, we should probably just go ahead and start getting into this 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 wacky uh, bonus EFAP. I can see already people are like, "What is happening here?" And it's like, "Yeah, bet you didn't expect to see EFAP on us on a, on a Wednesday." That's where we are, right? Uh, it's hump day. It's gonna be crazy, man. Wednesday EFAP, so you never know what's gonna happen if ever they pop up. Um, it probably means that something happened, something weird and wacky, and that we wanted to cover it. And you know what? That kind of does cover it. We do, and we'll definitely be talking about something wild and wacky with a guest set that will change probably as we talk about it. But um, if you're in the world of film, you likely would have heard about something that happened recently, a rumbling. And that rumbling comes in the form of Jay Longbone upsetting everybody. What's wrong with you? Oh, Jay, I can't believe Rude. you've done this. I there's, can't believe you've done this. There's opinions you're allowed to have, and then there's what you say. And that's just too much. And, you know, when I saw... God, he's, such a, he's so annoying on Twitter, I was like, someone needs to send him messages that involve threatening <laughs> their life, you know? Like that, that needs to happen. What's funny is that'll be in here as well, and that'll just go to show anybody who's curious. Like, yeah, we get death threats a lot from saying people are annoying. It happens. That's the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, other people can sort of use that to their advantage. Do you remember when fucking Patrick Willems tweeted out someone talking about wanting to kill him, I think, and they ended it with, uh, they were from the Molar Army. <laughs> oh, like, what the fuck? My... Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was almost certain. Is that like Dumbledore's Army? I was just like, have I ever called you guys Dumbledore's the Molar Army? Army? <laughs> like, what the hell? Molar Army, assemble. Yeah, that was one of those ones where it's like, uh, "Hello, fellow Molar Arbites. Ar Here I am to fight the fight the war." Yeah, that's what we do. Oh, Molar Army rise up, indeed. But um, yeah, what we're doing here today is we're checking out the origin of this gigantic war and uh, all the players involved, all the opinions you could possibly have. We'll share in some of our own. You'd never guess it starts with a Chris Stuckman video. Isn't that fucking crazy? Wang. No, nothing's crazy. crazy. Yeah. This is all just so. Uh... Yeah. Oh, all right, jeez. I was, I was gonna say, like, I, I feel <laughs> like it's a, uh, it's a bit of a crazy thing to have happen because just nothing usually comes of what he says. Uh, as... That's a good point, actually. You're right. You're yep. right because <clears throat> usually the videos are so dull that there's nothing to fight about. I don't even see his stuff getting shared, ever. Like, not in the sense of, oh, you gotta check out the new Stuckman video, but just in the sense of, oh yeah, uh, Chris like highlighted this about this. Or there's a, a clip where someone goes, wow, this is really a good point of view about blah blah blah. It's like, nope, never ever it's ever see him. It's a little strange, isn't it? It is a little strange, because you figure that it will happen occasionally, by virtue of saying interesting things By accident, even. <laughs> even someone. by accident, yeah. Um, That's... That's the internet, though. Our good friend you know, Ryan pr praised the Batman and got, you know, got a lot of criticism for saying there were too many black people in it. But uh, but he was still praising the movie. Uh, but to be fair to Stuckman, I mean, he still delivered it. It was still really dull. It was just the reaction. 
Well, I sometimes I wonder if he even realizes what he says is controversial, because I don't think he aims to, ever. I think he wants to stay under the radar at all times. Um, we've got we've got a little segment in here as well that we'll talk about where he did, he does not do well when he thinks he's being made fun of. And I think now that, that reflects... Uh -huh. um, oh. Oh, I know what you're showing there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so funnily enough, there's a clip I I don't have in here, but one that um, uh, Chris Gore had sent me, who's uh, who's also here, I think. He's just muted. There he is on the end. Hello. Uh, I was going to say that the 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 clip was he says when I become a writer, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like deal with sort of the 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 comments and criticisms that often get doled out to them or something. It's something like that. It's very indicative of like oh. You, you like people don't like being made fun of, I guess. Um, but it is one of the if there were ten rules of starting up like a public facing uh, job, be it YouTube or whatever have you, uh, expect that and take it for what it is, which can often be fun. You know, it's not something everyone gets taught, and so a lot of people come away from it very, very uh, upset and abrasive. If ever you're like, "Wow, that's silly," because um, one of the things we often get, or at least we used to, uh, not anymore. We used to get the whole like, "Why are you?" Why are you covering Chris Stuckman? He's harmless. It's like, well, I mean, he has opinions. <laughs> and I disagree with him. Oh, yes. just, you know. But, well, he's, he's caused harm now. He's a harm, oh. harmful... He's got harmful opinions. How about that? What? By the way, on, on YouTube, when I, um, when I refresh the page, generally it, it pops right up with, you know, EFAP streaming. And sometimes the thumbnail doesn't update, so we get a little... <laughs> So it's got the Madam Web thumbnail. You get the Madam Web Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice. <laughs> That's what I got too. And then, with, and then with the name, it's just like Chris. What are you doing? Put down the Madam Web Cranberry <laughs> Juice, please. It really it doesn't is. Doesn't hurt anybody. This is absolutely a sequel to the Madam Web episode, though. Like, uh, oh yeah, you're right. That is true. By the way, I, I've checked everything. That really, that really shouldn't be the thumbnail. I don't know why it is, but um, I don't. I can't fix that. I wasn't it, the thumbnail it, when I uh, when I clicked on it. Okay, well, yeah. It's having a goof. It's having a it bit of a goof. It might just be like an update thing, yeah. Um, so yes, what, what, uh, the way I've constructed this, this compilation is that we have all the context in it. So I don't really need to do anything other than saying it's Chris Stuckman related, and uh, he's got some opinions that have, that have caused just a ripple effect, and we're going to go through it all. We're going to ask each other what maybe we think about all the different things that get brought up, but uh, it has sparked conversation that, broadly speaking, could be identified as, please, never criticize writers or directors for the state of film because they are trying, damn it. It's Which, hard. Uh, yeah, it's not, hard. Hmm, not a statement, you know, hmm, but uh, maybe... You maybe know, with... they, put on, they, they put on their helmets and they get their lunch pails and they go down in the make-believe mines. I've got your tweet in here, by the way. <laughs> I've got that in you. <laughs> the ideas factory. I'll say a prayer for them all. I do have Slave some memes away. in here as well because it's fun. Down in the mines. I was making <laughs> movies in the film mines for fourteen hours today. <laughs> now, is everybody in the watch together who wishes to be? I mm -hmm. am there, and I do wish to be there. One door. Unmute right yourself. Uh, I also. I, I don't know if Chris is. Uh, Gore is supposed to be. Uh, does he? I assume he knows how to use Discord. It's just he's muted. I don't know if he knows. That's all. I'm just highlighting. Yeah, Chris. You, there's, if yeah. you're speaking, we yeah. can't hear you. Chris, yeah. you you are muted. There is a red icon. You need to. You got to take charge. You got to be the master of your own destiny, like Christopher Stuckman. Um. Anyway. Yes. All right. Well, we're gonna get started. Uh, get ready, chat. Yeah, let's do it. For a Chris ready. Stuckman video. Uh, ready for a Stuckmanizing a classic. Oh, oh strap on. That's strap, in. Time. strap in, everyone. Let's go. There he is. Um, he wait, is. is that the right window? Chris, Hi, is Chris. that a... Are you, is that your Minecraft character? Uh, yeah, that's my Funko Pop version of me. Oh. It's it looks beautiful. just like... Let's get, stuck. <laughs> let's get no, stuck looks... manized. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go. Stuck manized. Yeah, oh. get right. stuck manized. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, so exciting. It's that terrible um it's that terrible middle ground between uh, quaint and old school, like his old one is, and really well produced. So it just comes across as like a really it just comes across as cheap and uninspired. 
I'm I just the noted I, 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 really I appreciate the old intro. The old All one right. was neat, and so he was like attached to it. There's charm to the old one in that it's like, here's my YouTube review of a movie, giant explosion. You're like, uh, yeah, that's kind of fun. This one feels a little bit more try-hard in that it's like, this is cinema. And the crazy thing is that it's kind of setting you up for like, ooh, cinema. here we go. And then he's like, oh, wow. Well. Hello, everyone. My name <laughs> is Chris. Stop hey. Playing. Today, I am reviewing Lay's potato chips. No flavor, of course, other than potato. we got to start with the no flavor ones so that when you talk about the flavor ones, you have the contrast. That's no, no, no. That's too exciting. That's way too exciting. <laughs> Whoa, we're not doing the flavored ones. Let's not go crazy. So I just saw Madam Web. There... I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm not. I hope Web. you have fun. No, yeah, I, I, it, Madam Web brought us joy. I have seen some people it's say really they kind sad of, right here. uh, he does, yeah. <laughs> I've seen some people say they're kind of glad Madam Web came along in terms of just, it's nice to get that kind of a bad movie every once in a while, the one that doesn't piss you off, the one that doesn't, you know, slaughter kind beloved of? characters yeah. and that is made so incompetently, it's kind of funny. Yeah, they made their own stuff to poop all over. They didn't take someone else's toys well, and ruin those. Madam Web isn't there. Well, you know what I mean? Did. Like, I, mean, that, you know, all I guess the that's true. Were yeah. By other people. That but is technically true. You're right. At least, it yeah. It feels so self contained and compartmentalized. It is a, technically, as they promote it in the marketing, a, a new continuity. This is not a, or at least uh, that's what Dakota Johnson said. It's not a part of any other spider. That's, what they, that's what they said as yeah. part of the marketing, yes. There was no And now it is part of a standalone continuity in the sense that it will be alone forever. There will be no more films. <laughs> it's a standalone film. Alone forever. <laughs> so I just saw Madam Web. There was no screening for it in my area. There were no late night showings before the day, so I had to go don't see it care. on Valentine's don't Day. Care. No, no, this is really important. Why, why is this this is really important. I, I get I, I had get to see it with the plebs. <laughs> yeah, like I get to go to press screenings typically. I get to go see the film early, but this time I didn't get to, so I just had to go believe? to the theater like everybody else. They made me stand in line. No, there wasn't a line from Adam Webb. They made me no. go to the theater <laughs> and purchase. They made me purchase a ticket and my own popcorn. Mm. <sighs> Next, you'll tell me you're a producer or something. If, the, if, if listen, if there had been other people in that theater, they would have been normies. They would have been suppose, the, the public. I suppose what I find interesting is that it's kind of like moved past a conversation that could be had, which is that the review embargo for this film, I think, was a day before it came out, less than a day, oh. which is fascinating. Hmm. Um, it's always interesting, you know, when that embargo is. Not because it necessarily tells you what the quality of the film or the game is going to be, but there is a general sort of trend of the earlier the reviews drop, the more confident the studio or the publisher probably is in the thing that they're releasing. Like, Sony will often do their review embargoes for their big cinematic games, like, you know, two or three weeks early. Meanwhile, a lot of, uh... I remember it was uh it was Assassin's Creed Unity, I think, had its review embargo was after the game was out. Like it was nine or ten hours after the game released. <laughs> um and if anybody remembers, Assassin's Creed Unity did not work. No. Uh, it uh, did yeah, not at work. Launch, the, the yeah, creatures at with the, awful. the eyeballs, right? That's yes, Unity. That's yes, right. that was one yeah. of the it was one of the kind of the OG uh crazy yeah. glitch controversy well, games. Well yeah, that was at the beginning of the eighth generation, which saw more and more and more and more of these bad launches. Um, and then, of course, the other example that always struck By me... By the way, I'd re I would recommend Assassin's Creed Unity to people. I hear it's in, a lot... In modern I hear times. it's actually pretty good at this I've point. Played it, when it's I've fixed. played it a bit. It's one of my games I need to go back and finish, but I was very impressed with how well it ran, considering I've, I've never seen that many NPCs in a game hmm. before. Like, everyone just moving around and walking around. So it was very impressive. So I, I would recommend Assassin's Creed Unity. Just for the people play. walking around. Oh, just, actually, just for the I'm, just for all the Frenchmen walking around with their hats actually, and their a, shoes. A recent and relevant one is that Dune 2's reviews have been released now, and that film doesn't come out for another couple weeks, right? March first. It, it think, comes right? out March first or February right, 29th. Okay. I've seen it. I've I've seen it by the way. So Ooh, what do you think? There you go. Uh I really like it a lot, and I have problems, and I, I think a lot of the problems stem from the fact that I love the book. So there's departure from the book and in particular final shot of the movie really bugs me because I think it's setting up a third one or a conflict that wasn't in the book for a third one. So oh. no, um, 
I'm mixed. I'm mixed about it. But all this hype of it's the greatest war movie since Two Towers, incorrect. <laughs> Two Towers still is the go. I've heard that so, so many times. There's so many movies. The... That's because mm -hmm. uh, what happens with a lot of critics is they have uh, this sort of... Uh, sort of they're of one mind like the Borg. So when they have an opinion about something, you'll see like a very similar opinion or even similar things echoed like that comparison to Two Towers, which is is inaccurate in, in my opinion. So it's very good. There's a lot to love there, and there's a lot to nitpick. And I'm going to talk about it on Film Threat later, but uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I think I think it's being a little overhyped. It's a, uh, being a little overhyped. And Ooh. so you'll, you'll see for yourself. You'll see for yourself. And this is so. what movie? Sorry. Dune, Dune Part Dune Two. Dune Part Two. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, it's, you can actually see it on the 25th of February. There are if sort there's of tickets fan available. Screenings. Yeah. 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 I think Gary, you have tickets for that, right? I do. I do. I'm going That's Sunday. Awesome. So we'll have a discussion. We'll have a discussion. Oh, yes, someone, we will. Someone in chat said the greatest war movie since Two Towers is obviously Return of the King. <laughs> Return of the King. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was going to say. Ah. <laughs> uh, hey. Well played. And I thought to myself, probably not going to do a video for this one based off of what I've heard, since I do try to keep it mostly about film celebration on this channel. Having seen... Oh, what does that what mean? A, what, what a do, statement. Wait, wait. I'm going to celebrate. Did you know that you could say a lot of things by the things you do not say? It is a very <laughs> interesting is... quirk of the human condition that I've discovered do you love in that, my that... years on this planet. That is absolutely the thing we need to set as the foundation for this whole stream is... How much can be said by not saying certain things? Uh, it's just I've been trying to I've been trying to keep the vibe at the Stuckman household positive uh, and <laughs> non-alcoholic. So Tiffany will not be joining us for New Year's. Um, <laughs> just, just wanted to say uh, I'm not saying anything about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this uh, we will we will get to the the portion with Twitter eventually, but we're gonna watch the video first, and that's what this is. And so, yes, uh, when when someone says to you. I'm not going to talk about Madam Web because of from what I've heard and because this is about film celebration. You're like, wow, how yeah. bad was it? Jesus. What, what, are, you, like, what, are, you what? what are you implying? Man? The funny thing is, it's like, even in a parody sense, I feel like I could come up with a five minute video, maybe maybe even ten minutes uh, praising Madam Web. Uh, you could do it. You could give it a try. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you could throw you some stuff in. And we'll do that. I could talk yes, about Sydney exactly. Sweetie's tits for ten minutes. Good God! I can't wait to see Cinema Wins try to make use of Madam Web. That that we'll have to wait a while for that we one. He'll avoid that one. He won't do it. Yeah, that was a difficult Did one. Did he do <laughs> Did he do one for Morbius? That's a good question. I shall discover the truth. Because if he didn't on do that. one for Morbius, my guess would be that he would not do one for Madam Web. I mean, he's been known to target films, even the ones that are really bad, right? Sometimes. Mm. Did he um, make a Morbius Morb video? Sorry. What? E <laughs> <laughs> we we of course have everything wrong with, because uh, of course, but I can't see in everything. Uh, all the wins one, you know, I, I don't see it. Damn, I guess Cinema Wins did not do Morbius. See, that's cowardly. Come on. You gotta get that in That is there. cowardly. I would you love coward. to make that. That would be funny as fuck. You'd be like... M <laughs> you could do all the memes, too. But, uh, whatever. Anyway, the, um... Oh, well. When you're about film celebration, you're familiar, me. because, of course, Chris is, with almost every aspect of film creation. There's gotta be things in Madam Web you notice that you can say, you know what, they did that pretty well. They did this pretty well. They did this. They did this. They did this. You could actually, I mean, you know, what's crazy yeah. is you could check out like quotes from the producers, even or the the, the director what? or the writers. You could see what they said about what they did with the movie. Well, hell, you know, if you're struggling to fill up the runtime, you can do what Chris typically does, which is just name the writers and directors for no particular reason at all. Like that's with like no a freebie two it. minutes right there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No, but he, um, did, he, did he not with this one? At least in the place he usually does, right? Because right at the beginning he usually says, well, this film was written by, directed by, <laughs> rah, 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 at the beginning, well, but he didn't do that with this review. one. This isn't a review, so right. it's not it's that which, format. But if he did, he which, could. Which doesn't uh, at all... The thing is, go ahead. Yeah? No, 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 go for it. I was going to say, which doesn't at all put the idea in someone's head of, why aren't you naming the people that were responsible for this? <laughs> well... Stay their who names. Say their for, names. No, who, who is responsible for Madam Web? Who could know? It's not it's like it's in the film, at the end of the film, it doesn't say who is responsible for what given task. 
No, it's a mystery. It's it elusive. Is. Group justice. Yeah, off to a good start. In the film, I'm going to tell you that this is not a movie review of Madam Web. I am not about bashing filmmakers, artists. Uh, I know how. Uh, what are you implying? <laughs> So this is where um, I feel like a lot of people are not even listening to not only his video, but that the clip that uh, Lauren provided on Twitter. He just, he was pretty, he's either a very bad speaker, or he just said something that's uh, pretty blatant. I will not review the film, because I am not into bashing filmmakers or creatives. That's uh -huh. just bashing it. That's just it with more words. Yeah, you're just saying if I if I did a review, it, it would be full uh, of all the terrible negative things that, that I would say. It's, yeah, it's on top of that. It's the implication that movie criticism, as a practice in general, is film bashing. Exactly, review equals bashing, which is interesting because if I was to rewrite his script for him, knowing what I know about him, I would have said, "What you should say is." I know a lot of you might have expected some kind of hilariosity review, but um, as you know, uh, for several years I've retired those, and I'm more about trying to find the films in the world that sort of inspire, and that uh, Madam Web didn't inspire me in any particular way. So instead of talking about the film, I wanted to talk about something that's happening in like the industry. That's what you could have said, but no, you said, I'm not going to review it because I don't want to bash it. And also, but I think he's is... saying... Yeah. What, what, I, what I think he's saying without saying it is, I'm better than you. <laughs> better than you. No, I'm serious. It's like, the temptation. I'm better than you because I'm yeah. not going to fall because into what you, I, you know, the lesser people would want to do. Yes. Those Edenists. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's being, in my opinion, kind of an elitist prick. But uh, like also, like, it, it's, it stirred a whole, I, and, and Mahler, I think I sent you a link to a story which I thought was awful about can movie critics be filmmakers right. there are a lot of uh, critics who have filmmakers I i'm one of them john campia made a movie about a documentary about movie trailers uh, the you know stuckman's made a movie i think there's clips in one of the videos i sent you like oh, but what he's saying is, is like i'm better than you I i'm better than you because i'm not going to do this also i might end up working for a studio so i don't want to say these things which is yep. sort of uh I, I don't know i think he's making his his intentions pretty pretty plain it makes me also, feel like he's uh yeah it's just i i'm good and i'm better than you in a way that we would consider i've him matured less than you know i've matured i've grown, grown. i was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna temper oh, my yeah. opinions and decide what i am and am not going to cover because of my aspirations and who might be upset by that in terms of who i want to work for which is like we all know it like that's what what the game right. is yeah, you know well, we all know is, is that that's, he's going no i'm good because it of it it, it, it's like no it's not I'm, it's not the it's not the kind of person i want to be and it's like no it's just you don't want to step on the wrong you know you don't want to step on anybody's toes basically yeah if the wizard sure visited can. him and told him the well no one in, if you made a video on madam web giving your honest opinions uh it will not affect any career aspirations that you have and if he knew that and believed it then he might do it it might just be well, about you, I don't you know, the reason he wouldn't there is because he's got to keep it consistent right I probably, yeah, that's probably the only reason why not. Um, so yeah, the, that is the assumed motivation for many people. And by the way, before anyone assumes like, oh, you're just taking the worst route ever, this is the overwhelming majority of the opinion from his audience, is that he's trying to be careful so he can ingratiate himself into the industry of film related mainly to Hollywood. And, and that, in a sense, he's, he's failed because it's pretty obvious he thinks the film sucks. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could um, just not yeah. talk about it. <laughs> if I if I'm watching a film reviewer and it becomes clear that they are tempering their opinions and uh, being selective with what they cover because of that, I'm like, oh, you're already like you've like like you're a traitor, but you're not even getting any, getting anything <laughs> from it yet. You know, oh, well, like guess, you're you're I preemptively be, betraying us. I guess I just find it funny that you get the cred for being hyper positive when you've made it very apparent that you think the film sucks. By saying, um, like, well, I watched Madam Web, but I'm not going to cover it. It's like, yeah, what do because you think? there's nothing to celebrate. Exactly, because I'm about film celebration. What do you think you've said? <laughs> but you but just... just because you haven't said the word <laughs> Madam Web bad, it doesn't register that what's being said is Madam Web bad. Which it's is exactly what's been said, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some, <laughs> some of the chat phrased it well, he's kissing the ring for an in. And that's yes. kind of, uh, yeah, that's basically it. He's already sense. sort of surrendered himself to something before he's even getting, not, not even before a guarantee, before anything, right? He's just like hoping if I act like this, then 
you know, then they'll love me up there. When it just, it's not, I mean, I saw his Melanie movie, it sucked, so, <laughs> I don't know. There's also the angle that if, say for example, there's an act, a behavior that everyone here is doing that I refuse to do, and I say I don't do it because I know better. Anyway, moving on. Like, excuse me. <laughs> Hang on. Like, what do you mean? Like, that makes us all feel a little, uh, little uncomfortable. And it's like, oh, don't worry, like, you wouldn't you know. You wouldn't know. Like, I didn't say the negative <laughs> words. I only implied the negative words. And this is so, this so is good. the a very common theme: is that nobody's detecting his negativity because he's couched it in positivity, uh, right? The and and what's yeah. he, what's he in fear of, Mahler? I mean, like even the the stars of this film knew it was a piece of shit. Yeah, like, the, and the, some of them might actually come out and publicly state it very soon. Uh, Dakota uh, Johnson hasn't even seen it. Probably won't. Probably won't. This, you know, um, this so, so if you're afraid to like <laughs> criticize something that's universally loathed and mocked, uh, yeah, you, oh, they're not going to so respect many, you in the industry anyway. There's so many of the films like that. There's so many films that we we know at the time they're bad, and then like years later, or whatever, some of the actors are like, "God, that was a piece of shit, wasn't it?" <laughs> you're like, yeah. It's the yeah. fact that once they know that he's willing to say these things openly and publicly, and then couple that with the you know, the reviews that he's done in his in his past on YouTube, and it's like, oh, yeah, we can't... I don't know if we can trust this guy to keep his opinions to to himself. Even if he's saying it out loud, the thing we're all thinking, he's saying it out loud. And who knows when he'll open his mouth again. And that's the thing. I, th I feel like he'd be a much more well-rounded and uh, easy to interpret as honest and full of integrity person if he just said... Oof, Madam Web, uh, that is a fi You could even do this in a nice way, like, the his fucking patented, I'm totally not shitting on this thing way of, like, yeah, Madam Web has some severe issues with pacing, with uh, performances being very much uh, inconsistent. You know, that's the nice way of saying the acting was bad. What's, what's yeah, a nice way or, of saying the story made no sense? It's like, the story was difficult to follow. Or he could just do the compliment sandwich, start with a the praise, then just shit on the film, and then start and then end with a little and praise. You don't, and then it will be like you don't even you need to praise the film. You could be like Dakota Johnson is a very experienced actress. I've seen her in, and then names a whole fucking IMDb list, and then is like she's <laughs> she's fantastic. And uh, I feel like in this well, film, you know, a lot of a lot of what she's capable of wasn't quite captured. You know, like, yeah, oh, maybe the direction go. wasn't clear, or we had competing visions for you know this well. character. Creative differences. Like, oh, the cinematography was actually pretty but, interesting when it, it is it, obviously in this film's case it was like, oh, it didn't look very good. But but you get like how, how, had had they he said that different. instead of I can't say anything about this film, like <laughs> damn. <laughs> Well, part of his problem is that he keep again. He has to signal to everybody that he is doing the noble thing of not shitting on anything. Where <laughs> yeah. he could just like he could just not say it and then just do this and and not talk about Madam Web or not talk about whatever films he's watched that he thinks are bad. He could just like not do it and not tell anybody. You could just talk about studio interference. You could just go right into that. You don't even yeah. need to be well, specific then... about a movie. Yeah, or sure. this one. Well, so this was big yeah. too. Um, which yeah. I don't. Uh, yeah. Like being like Ma Madam Web, here we go, and then at the beginning it's like I'm not going to talk about that. Like, oh. Well, it, it's not bait then because he put right at the beginning that it's not what he he kind of signaled it was going to be. Well, when you put um, what was this video originally called? Like we need to we talk have to or something talk about. Them. We need to talk, I think, something like that. Yeah, and then Madam Web is in the thumbnail, or is it? I can't remember. Yeah, it is. It's it's like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he's he knows what he's up to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's she's got the fucking meme of her just staring blankly, and then him like doing a thing, you know? It's like, oh, you're gonna give us the nuanced perspective on Madame Web. Um, yeah. There's another thing I've seen a lot of people say is like, oh, you can't handle one video that's not negative about Madame Web. It's like this is negative about Madame Web. What do you mean? Yes, mm -hmm. there's a negative video you... about Adam Web. We're 34 seconds in, and already he's made that abundantly clear. It seems that what he really wants to do is acknowledge that it's bad, but then lay all the blame on other people because it, it, it's it's almost like it's a, a weird sort of self-interest where it's like, I don't want people to make fun of my movies because movies are so hard to make. So like, I need to create this culture where we assume if a movie is bad that it was the studio's fault. But that's not going to apply to his film, right? Because it was Kickstarter. 
no yeah. like well, crowdfunding of some kind, right? Yeah, so you had a hell of a lot more control than most people do at a lot of uh, higher studio level sort of filming. Um, but then, of course, you have the angle of uh, why can't you handle, why can't all of them handle being made fun of? Why? Is, 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 is gonna happen? It's, just, it's just like it's seen as like some horrible thing. It's like, I don't know, why can't you just see this funny? Like yeah, you... not the best industry to get into if you're thin skinned. Just saying. No. I mean, no. no public. I mean, not even as being a YouTuber. Yeah. No. Yeah. So. I was going to say in the beginning is the YouTube. You, like, if is there, if there was a things to be prepared for going in, it's like be prepared to be fucking slaughtered semi regularly uh, for your character. Don't be surprised when someone says you're the worst human being on the planet because you said a Star Wars movie was bad. You're like, yep. oh hard it is to make a movie i do not know how hard it is to make a movie under the studio system i was able to make an indie film without a giant corporation breathing down my neck which is true and even that sucked so we haven't it's seen not, it it's not we can we can, we can blame kickstarter inter film? we can blame kickstarter interference on that one. Oh, yeah, he's okay. got a kickstarter backer interference, interference. Oh, yeah. he's got a feature. Well, so I th seen this feature is kind film. of the nature of like I don't um, I don't really get the angle because it's like Chris, do you think you're gonna work for Sony ever? No, <laughs> because of this video. Do you think that's all? And it'll be like, well, yeah, I don't want to work for Sony. It's like, okay, sure, but I'm just well, saying, yeah. you know, that's that's like a bridge that's incinerated at this point. Because yeah, I mean, I don't know. This... Does he think you just you just get to pick who your producers are? Um, like I did. What do you mean? And also, isn't this uh, the when he said um, he can't imagine what it's like to do that, you know, inside of the studio system. Um, but isn't that what he's wanting to do? I'm sure he wants that, here? yeah, uh, uh, eventually. So that, that would be, a, I guess, because he almost implies that that's a bridge to be crossed when you come to it. But the, because he can't know the pressures of it, he would never want to bash someone underneath something like that. In the same vein that someone makes you a shitty house, but then you find out they didn't have any limbs. You're like... Oh wow, that's that's horrible. The equivalent being that they didn't get any choices under the studio they were part of. So how can you truly make fun of them? But we'll get to the those studio arguments. System, of course. Yeah, the, the the studio system that made Madam Web terrible, which is what he's saying without saying it, is part of the system that I'm trying to get into. Oh uh, yeah, there I mean I'm... somewhat. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, 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 hence so why like, I find okay. it so strange. Like I don't really see what the goal is. You know, like. I'm not going to bash filmmakers, but I'm going to bash the people who are responsible for financing the films. <laughs> I, just, I, don't know and I hope they finance my films idea, in the future. But, good luck with know. that, Chris. Also, still people saying wrong thumbnail. It's the right one. Nothing I can do. I'm it's sorry. a YouTube thing. <laughs> I've got, it's the YouTube's fucking with me. I can't do anything. You just get to look at Cranberry Juice Madam Web for a little bit longer and enjoy that. Yeah. YouTube's been acting funny the last couple of days. So. Enjoy its sugary tart perfection. Yes, it still works, kind of. I I'm not calling Man of Web tart perfection, just to be clear. That's not the way that you Even think. though you should. Yes. It's not the privilege that S.J. Clarkson had when she directed Madam Web. Did you catch that um, he says he has no idea what she would have gone through, but then he does say definitively she did not have the experience of like having full control like I did? Well, and it's, it's weird. Really? It's like, That's so interesting. You're telling me that she didn't say anything about... Uh, working on the film, anything about her experience well, so, working on the film or the decisions that she made while making it. If you're yeah, going to do a video like clear. this, where you're opening up insight and discussion with your knowledge of the film industry, however limited or expanded it is, then maybe it's worthwhile just looking into what she's said. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Give it a little shot. Give it a little look. -see. Maybe you should also acknowledge that she's an executive producer on the film. <gasps> <gasps> what? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And, well, and then... a co-screenwriter. Not mm -hmm. even being executive producer gets you anything these days. Oh my goodness! Well, and, uh, not being Did she interfere not, not, with herself. Not <laughs> signing the contract and agreeing to be a part of this for money uh, gives you any kind of responsibility now as well. It seems that we were all just ignoring that. Like that. That feels weird. Like you sign on, you put your name to the paper and to the credits, but that doesn't mean that you should have any responsibility as to the uh, quality of it. It's like I feel like already that's kind of the point of the contract, isn't it? You are selling your talent. <clears throat> and if you're like, yeah, but what if they don't use it? It's like, okay, but you're still a part of the project at that point, and you still got paid for it. And I'm sure so if the film were great, you would be claiming it's your talent that helped create it, you know? It's just, it's just interesting how that works. Breathing down my neck, 
which is not the privilege you that S.J. Clarkson had when she directed. Like, he has no idea if they breathed out her neck or if they were like, you know how to make movies, right, Clarkson? Yeah, go ahead. You do you. Do you. He has no idea. He even said he has no idea. This could be the movie she wanted yeah. to make. It happens all the time. All the time. That's all the... the time people make the movies they want to make, and they're just terrible. That's the funny time, I think, where if there was a studio filled with suits and none of them came to set throughout the whole thing, they just trusted the director, and then at the end, everyone's like, wow, the studio ruined it. The studio's just like, what the fuck? We know it's happened with games. We know it's happened with games. I guess it's funny because wasn't what they said with the Marvels was that there wasn't enough oversight on that film? Yeah. Like, because the <laughs> producers were stressed too thin that there so wasn't funny. enough oversight. That is really funny. I mean, that was the I issue love... with Bioware and Anthem. Is they just like uh, showed up? Yeah, yeah. they That's was like, right. "Oh, it's been all of these like... years and millions of dollars. What the <laughs> fuck is this? What have you been doing this whole time?" <laughs> that was like JJ when like... they gave him all that money. They're like, "What have you made?" It's like nothing yet. <laughs> like, you know, give me time. But I'm working. Oh, I'm boy, working it's coming. Every day. I love how backhanded of a comment it is. Like this movie's so bad, I'm just going to assume. That you had no say in it. <laughs> Executive producer, writer, this is director. What I mean. You're so fucking right. If she was here with him in this like call or whatever, and, and, and he's like, man, that movie had none of your your input, huh? And she's like, what the? Yes, well, of course I'm the it did. Executive you producer, you fuck. My name is on the credits <laughs> and everything. Well. That's the thing, it's going to come or up later. But... Interesting if, she, if she just asked, oh, uh, so you've seen my work. Uh, it. Yeah. Uh, look, right. I'm I'm a very busy man. <laughs> I'm, I got a lot of I got a lot of under my belt. I got a lot of work. Like, yeah, I love to do. love your work in uh, in film and TV. And she's like, um, which episodes? And you're like, oh fuck. Yeah. Come on. God damn <laughs> like, it. Leave me alone. How'd you get in here? How'd you get in my house? And then you just start hearing typing. It's like, what are you doing? Like, this, hold on, this hold is on. this is my blue <laughs> cred room. How did you get in here? Hell yeah. Madam Web under Sony, which I can only imagine was monumentally difficult. This is not- What if she said it was great? Well, yeah, you have no idea. And you know, in the, in the lack of information, you could say, I don't know, and you can actually act like you mean that you Well, don't imagine know. she said oh, something just, like, mm -hmm. we set out to make a great film and that uh, they feel that they, their voices were heard sort of thing. Like imagine she said something like that. Wow, that'd be weird. It would be weird. And you know, it, it was the kind of thing that makes you think like, oh shit. Maybe films can just be bad because of the people making them out very good. <laughs> that could I mean, be. if we are oh. going to accept the idea that not everyone can be a good filmmaker and making films is difficult, it only logically follows that yeah, a lot of films are going to be bad. What if that discourages them from continuing, Ranks? Well, you know, maybe some people should, maybe some people should be discouraged from certain behavior. Wow, look at Fletcher maybe, over here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm not committing to anything. Oh, I, I, I figured Rag was I maybe going to no take the Fletcher line. I thought he was going to say. I thought he was building you know, to it, yeah. It wouldn't be just oh, Fletch. Ooh, what, what Fletcher line? It, it, was, it, was, uh, it, was the, um, it was the conversation about, like, you know, whether or not Fletcher's methods, like, that they would discourage somebody. And he said, you know, someone like Charlie Parker would never be discouraged. That was his logic is that the person who would become the greatest of the great could never be discouraged from doing yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I meant. Which yeah. obviously, there's plenty to talk about there, but yeah. it's just an interesting line. It makes you think. That's Not going right. to be a video about Madam Dude, Web. Dude, Whiplash is such a, like, oh, I love great Whiplash. film. Oh, it's one of my favorite films. Good boy. Really difficult. This is not going to be a video about Madam Web and telling you whether or not you should see Madam Web. There are plenty of people on this platform. You just said you can't even bring yourself to review it. Why would you have recommended it? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, do you think that's a mystery? Pat padding Chris? time. No, well, you're not wrong about that. Form as well as a website dedicated to aggregating reviews and giving it a number that's going to inform you of that, and you can choose to listen to. The Chris, when you. Have of, thank you for explaining aggregates yeah, I know. to us, Chris. <laughs> he 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 would tell you his channel's all about trying to highlight and recommend films. When you say you're not gonna do that for Madam Web because people can decide from all the other stuff that's out there, it's like you mean you're not recommending it. That, that's just yeah. a no, Chris. And and because you don't think it's good, that's why. Absolutely nuts that like he can try and convince you even for a second that he's like, Hey, maybe I recommend it, maybe I don't. But I can't review this because it's just that bad. <laughs> like, is it, but, but, but I might recommend it. The funny thing is, I had like a partial recommendation on the idea of just uh, don't don't pay for it, but have fun with it. But uh, even then, that's not really a recommendation. You know what I mean? It's just kind of 
I don't think I don't think SJ Clarkson would appreciate me saying it's funny. What? That it's a good meme. <laughs> yeah, what, the film is a good meme. The meme. <laughs> <laughs> Those voices, if you want, the information the way, is out there. Um, Chris Stockman is a uh, he is a tomato tomato meter approved critic on Rotten Tomatoes. I do remember. So that is... I think he even made a video, or at least it was a part of one of his videos, saying he was ecstatic the day that he got approved for Rotten Tomatoes. He oh saw it as, He saw it as major uh, <laughs> affirmation that he was a critic. Yeah, wasn't officially. there? There was that, and then there was, like, getting to go to the Critics... What was it? The Critics' Choice Awards? Like, he got to go to that <sighs> as well? Yeah. Chris well, gets to go to that, too. If you're in Chris good company it. with Movie Bob. Ooh. Wait, is Movie Bob? Oh, right. Movie Bob is a tomato. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there. What I am compelled to make a video about is something that I heard pretty much every writer, some directors, and mm. most actors bashing last year, and that is movie studios. But before we go any further, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, chat. You've heard us make fun of Better Help several times. <laughs> I've decided in the edit for this to put in oh. context so that you can see. Uh, you may be aware of the context from, what is it, like a fucking decade ago now? The controversy that BetterHelp I mean, got into? It was, I feel like it was one of those early, um, early controversies regarding um, Couldn't have been that like sponsorships. Oh, well, my, like my timeline in my head's all fucked ago, up. Something like that. It feels like it, it was, was eight years like, ago, yeah. 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 Eight, eight, eight years ago, I think. In any oh, case, oh, yeah, that, that's a while ago. That controversy alone means that the company itself has been built on lies before. If they've corrected them, fine, but it's still something I'd be like, yeah, I'm not supporting you, as in I'm not taking sponsorships from you. Um, he has, and you'd be like, okay, maybe the company is pure and clean, um, but I was uh, I was streaming a, uh, I think it was funny enough, it was Suicide Squad or something like that. It might have been Arkham game. Um, and someone in the Discord had linked a controversy they got into just a year ago. And uh, I decided, fuck it, instead of having the ad play, we'll play that over it instead. We got a little robot to help us, uh, to, to read out, what, give you guys context of what BetterHelp got up to about a year ago. I do want to give a special thank you to the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. The past few years have been so life-changing for me, becoming a father, dealing Better with the Hollywood Better help shared customer baby. data while promising it was private, <laughs> says oh, FTC. No. <laughs> Online counseling company BetterHelp has agreed to pay $7.8 million to settle charges from the Federal Trade Commission that it improperly shared customers' <laughs> sensitive data with companies like Facebook and Snapchat, even after promising to keep it private. The proposed order, mm. announced by the FTC on Thursday, oh, would goodness. ban the same behavior in the future and require BetterHelp to make some changes to how it handles customer data. According to the regulator, the sign-up process for the company's service promised consumers that it would not use or disclose their personal health data except for limited purposes. However, the FTC alleges that the company instead used and revealed consumers' email addresses, IP addresses, and health questionnaire information to Facebook, Oof. Snapchat, Criteo, oh. and Pinterest for advertising purposes. The FTC also says that the company gave customer service agents false scripts to try and reassure users that it wasn't sharing personally identifiable or personal health information <laughs> after a February 2nd 020 report from J The robot oh read 2020 as everyone... 2nd 020 report. <laughs> oh my god, everyone you know what? The, 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 They're coming for the a job. <laughs> wait, the robot voice had more personality than Chris. So. <laughs> First off, it's true. Yeah, thank god. Thank god we have something less monotonous. Right. But uh, I was thinking, you... You log into BetterHelp thinking that you're going to get a therapist, but instead you don't even know you're getting stuck in the ice. Oof. Uh, um, there are so many sponsorships you can take. Don't take BetterHelp. Find someone else. You can just Google. You can just well, Google them and be yeah, like, this, this BetterHelp is, this is reviews. This is a very Better short Help. Wikipedia article, like, the, the briefly discussing this as yeah. a topic. You could read it in like ten minutes and then decide, I guess, whether or not you want to. I don't know, man. It's ten just, minutes. I, wait, wait, Fringy. Just... Ten minutes. That's like two and a half Hill House reviews. Oh. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> yeah. But rags, that's like a whole season know, TV. It's that's just... effective and efficient. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's con I love him because he's so concise. Mm -hmm. This is bad, by the way. Yeah, this they e bad. they emailed me too. They're like, hey, you want a sponsor? It's like, well, yeah, because that's how they fucking increase their <laughs> user base. They use the credibility of creators. That's how it works. And 
I would want to move past controversies like this. It's like, oh, we did a little data sharing. That's all. <laughs> like, a yeah, bit. no, just you know, cool. we kind of lied to people and sold their data to people. Kind of told our um, like, yeah. representatives to tell people that was not the case. Yeah, you know, just a little we bit of that. We Jezebel. told Facebook about your relationship with your dad. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Us. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll expose what, what, some of its practices. For hot the commission's <laughs> complaint <laughs> accuses the company of misleading customers by putting a HIPAA seal on its website, despite the fact that no government agency or other third party reviewed BetterHelp's information practices for compliance with HIPAA, let alone determined that the practices met the requirements of HIPAA. BetterHelp that's really fucking bad. H I P A A. Uh, that is HIPAA. the uh, HIPAA. All right. Yeah. It enforces federal civil rights laws that protect the rights of individuals and entities from unlawful discrimination on the basis of yeah, race, according color, to this, nationality. And... They put the yeah, seal. Yeah. Only, only the government's allowed to do that, guys. Okay. They put, they put you know. the seal on their website, even though they had not met the requirements or determined that they meet the practices. Like. Jeez, that's pretty fucked up. That's pretty bold, I would say. That's like, a damn, that is man. bold. That's like wearing a that, that's like that's like impersonating a police officer. Betrayed consumers' most personal health information for profit, said Samuel Levine, FTC Bureau of Consumer Protection Director, according to the agency's press release. The commission says that used consumers' email addresses and the fact that they had previously been in therapy to instruct Facebook to identify similar consumers and target them with advertisement, helping it bring in tens of thousands of new paying users and millions of dollars in revenue. So, if anyone's unclear, the, they would gather data, send it to Facebook, and using that, we can then figure out from other profiles who's best to target ads at to get them to sign up to BetterHelp. Allegedly, they, what was it, the $7.8 million? Yeah. yeah, so for the record, the FTC uh, uh, investigated them for this, and they said, okay, fine, here's $8 million, leave us alone. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, jeez. Yeah. Uh, we, totally we totally won't do it again. Yeah. Trust me, if bro. If the FTC's it, yeah. order ends up going through, the $7.8 million would go to customers who signed up for the service between August 1st, 2017 and December 31st, 2020. Stopping. Clicking on that link helps support this channel, but it also gives you 10% off your first month. <laughs> oh my month. goodness. Ooh, good timing there. Ooh, that's good at it. It's, Ooh, yeah, it's just, like it's it. just like a bit it. awkward, <laughs> isn't it? And, uh, I, I don't know. Just get audible. Audible.com, they're good. Uh, what about Manscaped? They're neat. Or, yeah, or oh, I can personally or... vouch for Manscaped. Manscaped, mm -hmm. I got a Manscaped. Meta, laser, Meta PC. That thing, that thing works fucking good above and below. I'll fucking guarantee you. Look, it's just, <laughs> even at the best of times, just doing, like, broad blanket recommendations for a mental health service, even in the best of times, seems like... Oh, uh, careful. I feel like I'm not like, personally qualified you know, but, to recommend therapists to people. I, ju I just, I don't know. There's just something about it where yeah. it's just like, oh, all right, come on. Like, careful now. It seems um, like YouTubers just pick it up so they can look more empathetic. Yes. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's marketing for them, too. I, I think it's just for a lot of people, especially, I mean, Chris should know better because he's been in the game a long time. But if you're not, he was around YouTuber, when they had their first. Tracked. He was around with the yeah. original one. Yeah, you're right. But a lot of the times, these companies, Raid Shadow Legends and all that other shit, they say, "Hey, for like thirty seconds of effort, we will give you this, yeah, this amount of money." And if you have no scruples, or is it scruples? Scruples, is it scruples, scruples or yeah. scruples? Scruples. If you have no scruples, then like, yeah. 30 seconds for like hundreds and hundreds or thousands of dollars? I mean, I would be a fool to say no to that. It's such easy money. All it costs is my reputation. I don't even have to care. I can't imagine ever saying, hey, sign up for therapy. It's a great way to support my channel. Like, that's, um... <laughs> yeah. but, I, but I need therapy because I watch Chris Stuckman. Well, and it's a vicious loop. Maybe it's a little on brand for him, maybe. And there's the meme, too, of like, I actually use this one and it's good. Like, why do, you, why do you say it like that? Like, I needed help because I'm a, a father and a filmmaker and I've had therapy on there that's real good. I recommend it. It's just like, ah. Oh, Can it's, you it's... tell by my sad eyes that I have <laughs> yeah. gone through therapy? I really love fatherhood. Yeah, great. <laughs> With the therapist and see if it helps you. Once again, that link is betterhelp.com slash Chris Stuckman. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. 
Yeah, lol, I hope you don't commit suicide because yeah. BetterHelp gave you a bad therapist. Lol, anyway, Madam Web, which we're not talking about. <laughs> yes, back to not talking about Madam <laughs> Web. In the case of Madam <laughs> Web, this movie was put out by Sony in association with oh. Marvel. Probably not to the level of association that Tom Holland's three Spider-Man movies were. What gave that away? Yeah. Why did why did he say three Spider-Man at the same time it showed the three random lady chicks that were their own? It is interesting. Rags, he's right. just put on the trailer. Okay. Oh. Why that, Chris? <laughs> oh my God. It he shall, Mormon, he shall right. return. Uh, 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 Weak-ass Spider-Man outfit and bolted. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. We will be gaining someone else very soon. In any moment from now, it'll be very exciting. This video is inspired by essentially every live action film that Sony has had some involvement in since Spider-Man 3 in the Spider-Man verse. That being Spider-Man 3, The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, Venom. Sorry, can I, what, what do you just say? Like the... He's talking, he's saying that this is inspired by all of those movies. This video is inspired by all Why those movies. In the Spider-Verse. But why didn't he start with Spider-Man 1 and 2? And he also, because he said Spider-Man-verse, which feels, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man-verse. Well, it's, also, safe to it's shit something on Spider -Man that is, 3. is worth adding as well. Columbia Pictures are, like, primarily responsible for the MCU Spider-Man films. It's like a joint production, but they pay most of the bills and they make most of the money. So, like, you mm. know what I mean? It's it's like, it, it has to count as part of that package as well. It's different, sure, but they are primarily responsible for those films. Also, he's just, um, he's... Go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, he's tailoring it for his argument, right? He's only picking the bad ones, because Correct. if he includes the good movies that Sony has made in that time period, then that kind of... Well, uh, are we meant to assume that there was just no studio interference yeah, with yeah, any yeah, of yeah. the other movies they made? I was about to say, you're almost there. It's going to be that um, Spider-Man 1 and 2 are so good that we know the studio didn't ruin those. But all the other ones, being Spider-Man oh, 3, Amazing Spider-Man 1, Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I guess Madam Web, uh, and Morbius, and probably Craven. Well, if they're so terrible, why did they ruin those? Well, but isn't that funny again, though? Like, 1 and 2 weren't ruined by the studio. The others, though... By the way, I'm not bashing not films. Also, <laughs> no, also, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. Let that there one's be safe. Pioneers oh, yeah, cleared the, the mines films for Spider-Man yeah. three. Yeah, of course. We're good. <laughs> three in the Spider-Man verse. That being Spider-Man three, the Amazing Spider-Man one and two, Venom. Venom. Let Sorry, just describing that collection of films as the Spider-Man verse is funny to me. It's just like what a strange, what a strange way collection to... of yeah. movies. Yeah, it is, and it's not correct. No, I guess we, they're spider related. I guess, yeah, sort of. Yeah. I mean, they're related movie wise, but not within the universe at all. Yeah, and then you can't I, I, you can't select them and not and and keep out Spider Man one and two. Like I'll include yeah. three because I didn't like it as much as one and two, so it must have been oh, the studio. Oh. Do you think? Because I I because we you've paused here in the middle. Is he going to say the uh, the uh, uh, Spider Verse films? Oh, he's gonna he's gonna mention them. Oh, but okay, yeah. Let us welcome. The critical drinker. Hello. Hello. I, uh, I think I'm mentally and physically prepared to get stuckmanized this evening. Yeah. You're all, never all mentally missed... and physically prepared to get stuckmanized. All you've really missed is him <laughs> saying, I will not bash Madam Web because it's too awful to do that to. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> We're at that point, are we? And, and, and better help promotion, which we don't need to go over that again. But uh, yeah, there's a watch together link. If you need therapy link. after seeing Madam Web. Yeah, uh, I've got help. it, yeah. So I think I'm at the same point as you guys. 412? That's the one. We're, we're, we're getting stuck into his opinion on the Spider-Man verse, as he described it. Stuck, stuck in to his opinion? Oh. Oh. Stuckman in. <laughs> three. Right, in the Spider-Man verse, that being Spider-Man 3, The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, Venom, Venom Let There Be Carnage. If someone selected all of those movies and said, what would you group them as? And if someone said bad movies, I'd be like, yeah, I guess you say that. And if someone else said the Spider-Man verse. Spider <laughs> like, what are you talking I just about? Spider movies. You, you know when he, when, he said, when he began with that, I just thought, he's going to list every single movie, isn't he? He is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yep, he did. He's bashing them all. Stop him. Morbius and Madam Web. Since it got pushed. Is Morbius did, did you a Spider-Man movie? Like... 
Well, well yeah. it's in, yeah, technically it's in the, there's even Spider-Man references in Morbius, but uh, the way that oh, he said okay, that, though, okay. and Madam Web, it's just like, yeah, we, we have to what be, we have to wonder whether or not you'd recommend Madam Web, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, so he is not saying the Spider-Verse movies, okay. Well, it's just funny because they are, again, they're Sony films. They're like the awkward ones that make it really difficult for people to just say that they all suck and that they yeah. that Sony should sell the rights back, which they're never going to do. Why would they do that? So, but well, so like, is he to going... be clear, he's he's created a category that doesn't exist in order to make his point. Pretty much, yep. yeah. Because the actual category is all of them, or you split them up into their respective series. Yeah, or you go by director, you go by like current, like whoever produced it individually. Like you could go by company, but I get like. Again, it doesn't fit the point he's making. Like, there's nothing he can do and, to fit the point he's making. Nope. And, and for the record, Disney Marvel hates all these movies, but there's nothing they can do about it, right? So they, they, I guess, because Sony owns the right, the rights outright, and they and Disney Marvel needs Sony more than Sony needs them right now. They need Spider Man, so they just have to put up with this shit. But they freaking hate it. Problem they, is, they, they must so regret that 1980s deal that they made. <laughs> Absolutely. And the, the only problem is now Disney Marvel doesn't have a leg to stand on because the the lines have blurred between Disney Marvel and Sony Marvel movies. At least Sony Marvel movies are funny, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's no difference between the Marvels and Madam Web with quality. None at all. Oh yeah, I mean Madam Web like brought joy to my face. I laughed out loud. Yeah. the Marvels was just Your like, dear God, let it be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but they're both <laughs> written with about as much care. It didn't like, give me an erection. Yeah, yeah. They're, both, they're both terrible. Like the idea that Madam Web is distinctly worse than all of these other superhero films that are coming out. No, it's just that Sony Marvel movies actually get rated accurately, but Marvel Marvel movies Marvel slop they, passes yeah, by they somehow. Get rated well. It's a weird image. This. Strikes last year. None of us got to see what Sony did with Craven the Hunter, but we will this year. So I can't. Can you see how he kind of wants to include it? Because he just he knows as well as we do. Craven's probably going to be terrible. Unfortunately, that's just kind of what the winds are saying. It, not what the director does with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's directing Craven, but still, say again. Really comment on whether or not Sony treated that property with respect. And of course, I know that when he says treated that oh, property with respect. That? Is he talking about the source material? Is he talking about the process of making a film? I was about to say right. that's a, that seems like a strange thing for him to say because, like, oh, now we care about respecting source material or the characters. Has that been a thing that he actually ever has I don't, given I don't feel a shit like I've about? Ever heard him talk about that outside of I think Dragon Ball Z, like the 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 what's that film called? I've never seen it, but it's like known as one of the worst films of all time. Evolution, oh, Dragon that's Ball Evolution, one, yeah. yeah. And so I think he cared about the the source there, but like I just I've never known him to say like whether or not these films are good based on his familiarity with the source material. But it sounded like that's what he was saying. So I can't really comment on whether or not Sony treated that property with. Respect. So he's got a Spider Man <laughs> shirt on, but he can't comment that it's disrespecting Craven by not having fucking Spider Man in I don't, the movie. <laughs> I genuinely don't believe that's what he's referring that's to. Per, I, well, I mean, it, it's no, fine. It, but like, it's he can't, I guess he's just, he, he can't pass judgment on the film before he's even seen it. So yeah, like, fine. of course, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty obvious point from Chris. But, it's, okay. it, yes, he's very obvious. Of course, I'm I gonna, know. I, I, Madam Web is a film directed by a director named S. J. Clarkson, who was also an executive producer. That's that's his fucking reviews. I, yeah. But we get it's way more this time, Gary. We get we, oh, we got clips yeah. of Spider Man. Look at him go. That Tobey Maguire's Woo! Spider Man films don't necessarily relate to the Sony Spider Man universe that they're trying to set up right now. Nor do Andrew oh, Garfield's thanks. movies. But neither does Spider Man Three. But you mentioned that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. It but this does. is not about that. Also, what is also this? that's distinctly <laughs> worst footage. Yeah, um, where'd you get this yeah. from? It <laughs> looks like, it lo that looks like the color. The color grading. That is not the color grading. That is something no. is wrong. By it the is, way, these are. Like, uh, by the way, weird, self self proclaimed filmmaker. Film just yeah. saying. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm surprised I don't see the word slot lights done yet. <laughs> 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 right now. Hey, hey, some of us blur those out, okay, Rex? Yeah. Hey, hey, nothing against, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying. You gotta take what you can get. That's right. Uh, so is he telling, wait, is he telling, did I just, maybe I misunderstood this. Is he telling us something else this video is not about? So is that um, what, just said? What, what I think is happening here is he wants to talk about okay. how the studio has ruined many films in the Spider-Man universe. 
Obviously, it okay. didn't ruin one and two because everyone says one and two are really good. It ruined three. It ruined Amazing Spider-Man one and two. It ruined Morbius. It ruined Venom one and two. Some people like the oh. Tazm movies. I, I, you know, have we gotten? I, obviously, I'm coming into this a bit late. Have you guys already discussed the the sort of faulty premise at work here that like anytime something bad happens or anytime a movie turns out to be garbage, it's clearly because the studio had to meddle in it and not because like the filmmakers are just bad. It definitely has well, that that's, flavor sort of coming yeah, the video. That's, uh, it's gonna, that's gonna be the consistent the theme. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if you'd discuss that yet or if you're gonna wait until he gets further into his video or what. We're, we've we sort of I think we may have it. mentioned it, but yeah, we'll we'll uh yeah. we're tackling it as he goes. Relate to the Sony. Yeah, okay. yeah, like does when he watches the Spider Verse movies, does he say, you know, and maybe he did, I don't know, because I don't fucking watch Chris Tuckman, but would he say, you know, Sony animation studios or whatever they really knocked it out of the park with this movie well he would have way that to he's... because they're the production company he, he does he does to. mention it in a sec have to, so. yeah any spider-man universe that they're... well because yeah and, and by the way this is not criticism he is trying to create a narrative and it's like okay yes. so that's fine does the does the information match the narrative and i think already it's falling apart uh, I mean, cause... the information doesn't much match the narrative in that you really can't talk about the Raimi Spider-Man films as being part of this, like, broader plan of cinematic universes because they predate that. We're talking about yeah. films that came out 20 years ago. They just don't fit into the equation. There's different conversations to be had about those films. Obviously, you know, Venom, Spider-Man 3, that's like the main well, one. Well, that's what he meant, though, but... was just spider-related films from Sony that are yeah. connected to this IP broadly, but are different continuities, though technically they're not now because mm -hmm. the MCU fucking dragged them all together. But I was just going to say that, like, his point of view is talking about the studios ruining stuff, but he's, you know, he just has to conveniently leave out examples that would obviously yeah. ruin the narrative is what I want to get at. They're trying to set up right and besides none of us i don't think here agree that it's entirely sony's fault that morbius venom venom 2 uh madam web spider-man 3 amazing spider-man amazing spider-man 2 all of them varying degrees of quality that it's all the studio's fault it's like no well no. It's, it just doesn't it doesn't follow it just doesn't make any sense like Okay, so Sony said you gotta have Venom. Did they tell him to do the dance scene? Was that did, did like Sony tell him he had to do that? Well, or was um, that his idea? I've seen it. Discussed. I think you summed it up more on on Twitter, where you basically said his narrative seems to be like if a, if a movie turns out well, then the the filmmakers are fantastic, and if it turns out bad, then it's the studio's fault. Mm, and yeah. so there there's this like. Um, defaulting of win. blame where like the the creatives can't do anything wrong essentially which is just such a faulty premise to go on there's plenty of creatives out there who've not who've not had any studio interference who turned out absolute garbage movies i mean like look at taika waititi with love and thunder he had very little studio oversight on exactly. that one exactly and he got to do anything he wanted and indulges every whim and look at the movie we got what well, just the studios are at fault for not you know Keeping stopping him, him. Check, really so, yeah so it's <laughs> really it, it still is there you know i, I could i could even i would even posit the idea that sometimes studio interference might actually be to the benefit of a film or at least like <gasps> salvage a Crazy. film like gosh trank was fan that. stick that that man was an absolute disaster with that movie and clearly was completely out of his depth and so the studio stepped in like sometimes it has to be done like not every creative is up to the task that's been handed to them it's genuinely well, so something right. that people and just don't like one. to talk about. It's like a narrative that's too awkward, even though we know it's theoretically possible, and it must have happened. We just don't have many concrete examples. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, certainly not sitting here defending, like, studio executives and saying, yes, they clearly have loads of great ideas on improving movies, because most of the time they don't. I just don't think it's an absolute thing where you can just say, yeah, any studio interference must be bad, and creatives, like, are always good at what they do, and if you just leave them alone, they'll turn out pure gold every time. Mm. The yeah. chat has pointed out an example that is pretty recent. Wonder Woman 1984. That was uh that was massive creative freedom. From yes. Jenkins. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and Bob, well, Bob Iger himself said Nia DaCosta didn't have enough supervision. She had total creative freedom over the Marvels, even though she so, left. Didn't Zack mentioned... Snyder have a lot of creative freedom when he did Army of the Dead yeah. and uh, Rebel, Rebel, Rebel Moon? Moon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Rebel, yeah. Rebel, Rebel <laughs> Moon. Oh my yeah. goodness. Ooh, dear. Uh, and I well, think someone in chat also mentioned Ghostbusters 2016. Yes. True. Uh, that was a different regime, but yes, that's Sony, and there regime. was total... Cr well, yeah. yeah it's... Uh, guy, I always forget her name. What's her name? Was the CEO. Tom Rothman's the CEO now. Uh, the woman is... Oh, uh, Pascal, was it? Amy, yeah, Amy Pascal. Amy Pascal, yeah. Yeah.
Uh, and yeah, I was going to say that the way I think they were trying to account for that, if they were posited that point of view, is that the films would have become worse had the studios have been involved anyway. Or that they they were involved in such a way that, that maybe it's lies, or maybe that the creatives were under a lot of pressure, you know? Like, there's just going to be, like, trying to find excuses because we really shouldn't be critical of the directors and writers. That's that's mean. And, well, uh, and it's like it's like principally we I, shouldn't, I, but I would rather I, them I drag lot, us to I like a. a I'd like to I'd have a lot to like to say about that, but I guess we should wait until the. Well, yeah, we're gonna get there. Yeah, I'm yeah, also I was, gonna. Yeah. I was. I was gonna stir the pot just a little bit, and mention the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, <laughs> creative freedom. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm right there with you, Rags. Well, that's the thing. Isn't it? When you have uh, someone, everyone says like this is a very common narrative that George was too free, and it's like, oh yeah, but he would have had other creatives pulling him back. And it's like, what if some of those creatives were producers? What if? The, yeah. What if? They why were is it impossible? That's why they were in the room. Why is it impossible for Mister Producer Man to just walk in and be like, no, no, on Jar Jar, no. <laughs> someone should have someone who was writing it really checks should've. said it should have said i will Gary literally Kurtz rip this now. check in half if that orange monstrosity takes another step <laughs> why does he go... sound like that george <laughs> why do you make him sound like that i would probably even go as far as saying that it's a necessary part of making a good movie that the push and pull between like the money concerns and the artistic concerns is a necessary component for making a good movie mm -hmm. like you, it's certainly like going to be necessary yeah. for it to keep an industry afloat in any sort of way that we have I well mean, did you like hear the, when we yeah sorry did you hear the bad news about joker 2 wait what's the that budgets the, the budget's 200 million dollars Damn. Oh no! How do you yeah. get two hundred million dollar movie? Like, I assume there's not going to be a huge amount of it's like, a musical VFX violins aren't that pricey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know if that's oh, going to work that's out a for bad them. Sign. Yeah, yeah. That's a really that's, bad sign. Yeah, yeah. What was the the, the original? Was like well south of a hundred. Fifty million. million. Fifty yeah. million. Yeah, it's just fifty. Oh Jesus! Just Christ. fifty. Huge See, increase. they they've conditioned us to be saying just. just 50. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. With a lean crew and stuff, imagine what you could make with fifty million dollars. Uh, cries in Godzilla. <laughs> Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man films don't necessarily relate to the Sony Spider-Man universe that they're trying to set up right they now. They don't. The Thank they you they for that, Chris. That. Well, thanks, Chris. <laughs> this, is, this is what I mean. This information is like you wouldn't say this information is old. This information's not information. We're like, no, he he makes like, videos yeah. like. I, the, the first person watching this is completely new to the world. You know, it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like an ostrich. You know, they they have the the the, the cinemas are large buildings where people twenty seconds in front of yes, a big screen exactly. to watch a film. A <laughs> hospital? What is it? A building movie. full of patients, but that's not important right now. <laughs> movie reviewers, developers cool, toolkit. What was it? Movie reviewers tool, toolkit is what this would be. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Andrew Garfield's movies, but this is not about that. This is about how Sony treats their characters and their properties, and more importantly, how they treat their oh. filmmakers, and what exactly is going on, because mm. I have so many questions. When you look at the films I mentioned that Sony has made, there's, of course, division from people about whether or not... I find this example interesting, because a guy who directed Venom decided, you know what, I'm going to work with Sony again for Uncharted, so I guess he felt that he wanted, he was fine enough with the way that it worked to make another movie with them. So I guess that doesn't matter, though. Well, what what are his Zombieland, comments about the Zombieland, production uh, of Venom? Zombieland, I wonder. That's a, is that a Sony film as well? Because that's a guy who did it. I can't remember, but like, yeah. And has he said anything about his experience making these films and whether he got to make any choices at all? Hmm. What's um, or... What's really interesting is someone in chat is asking, um, why is Chris's head so square? And you thought, and I, and I thought that they meant Chris Gore because he has a Funko Pop head. And then I was like, oh no, this is a this is a very deep piece of commentary. He goes, oh my goodness, Chris, both Chris's. All right, are good, and <laughs> some people like more than others. There's plenty of people who like the first Venom movie, but I think there are more people who are a little disappointed by it, and especially the. Oh my god, he verged on criticism. Yeah, whoa, so, but, but oh do you get be a little disappointed? Calm down. People are saying, <laughs> do you get how they're this not narrative even disappointed, is fucking... but they might be falling apart because he's like i'm including venom even though plenty of people liked it so hmm 
Mm. You know, he, he already knows, like, this is awkward. But anyway. Sequel. But plenty of people enjoy Spider-Man 3 well enough. I'm one of them. There's a lot of things in Spider-Man 3 that I have fun with, although it's clearly not as good as 1 or 2. And there are people who enjoy the amazing Wait, Spider-Man what? How 1. Can you say what? That? That How like could you worse? say that? Did you just bash it's that movie? Worse? Did you just bash it? How could you say such a thing? It's wow. the inferior of the three. It's worse than its predecessors. Chris, I thought you were about right. celebrating film. I think, it doesn't sound yeah, very I think you celebratory yeah. there, Chris. You might yeah. have hurt Sam Raimi's feelings. Eh? Drag the mood of the room down, Chris. Oh, Jesus crazy. Christ, <laughs> we're trying to have fun. We're trying, to have, trying to have a good time here. One and two, quite a bit. But I think that if you were to look at a consensus, the consensus is that the live action. Sony based Spider Man. Yeah, see, live action, you have you, to make that caveat because this, it means that you can ignore yeah. the other Sony films yeah. people like. The category is getting more and more hilarious the more he adds, like, <laughs> yeah, reality to it. <laughs> it's like, it's very also, obvious we, that this, are... this, 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 this is the problem. Uh, of the Sony films that had a six day opening weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suppose um, something that is a little bit more complicated because the situation out. Can someone. Are the are the Sony Spider Man games are they the product of a license that they have like that they have with Marvel or does that have anything to do with them and the film stuff that they've got like that they can make those games? Does anybody know? Because <laughs> I don't I actually don't know. But if you were to throw that into the equation, the you know people really liked uh, Spider Man PS4. People don't feel quite the same way about the new one, but like that's mm. part of the, is that part of the equation as well? Cause that's Sony. It is Sony. Sure. It's, you know, PlayStation, but it's still Sony. And also now he's appealing to this, this consensus that's out there. He is dragging yeah. off any responsibility that might go to him. Chris Duckman, speaker of the words and onto, mm -hmm. well, this is what the consensus is. I don't have to approve of it or anything. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just the messenger telling you what the consensus would say about these movies. Well, what's I make nuts no claims is that one could, I'm not, I'm not saying you should do this. Like this is a lot of effort. But one could Google the names of the people and the films and then look at articles where they've talked about making the films and then see which ones talk about how you know, they had a vision and it was destroyed, or that they had a vision and it was realized. That could be something you could do. That might help you mm. find out which ones the studios kind of messed with or didn't. Instead of what he is obviously admitted to doing, which is, I have ten films, seven of them are seen as bad, three of them are seen as good. Seven of them have been messed with the studio. Yeah. It's like, how did, how did, you, how did you do that? What? How did you know that? What, what the hell? And then people are like, what about the animated ones? He's like, oh, wait, I'm talking about live action, okay? I don't know. Maybe he's got some killer evidence that he's going to present to us. That'll yeah, looking forward to it. Killer evidence, evidence like water. aggregate that's reviews, scores. High charts, <laughs> bullet points. Yeah. That's part that's of it. what That's what being stuckmanized is all about, you know? I want to see his conspiracy board. I yeah. want to be numberized. <laughs> is that the live action, Sony-based Spider-Man universe movies have not exactly all been home runs i haven't mentioned the <laughs> what a fucking not exactly all what all a statement yeah. <laughs> I know. Right. What a that is but i cool. thought it i was is. a harsh reviewer but this guy's <laughs> fucking brutal why, why yeah. can't you just say that they, they down, mostly Chris. suck they're mostly bad movies no they haven't all necessarily been home it's runs about celebration for you please oh uh, yes this but is now a celebration he has to of address the elephant in the room which is what about the spider-verse movies well, yeah, just for anybody who's not understanding, what, if I was to tell you I'm going to be criticizing these seven films or however many he's listed, uh, and I say they're not exactly home runs, like, do you, are you saying they're bad? <laughs> like, so they're, they're like, they're triples? They're really, really good? Is that what us, you mean? Yeah. Like, no, tell us yeah. what you mean. No, no, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> the the euphemism I hear him use uh, quite a bit is, well, it's not a perfect movie. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not a perfect movie. It's okay. like, could you name one, Chris? The perfect movie. Oh, he'd say Blade Runner. He'd say, uh, I knew, uh, yes, I knew it was perfect it from the moment times. I watched it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, after five times. <laughs> after six times. Uh, <laughs> I think it was five times. And then he five times. Him. I think so. Or four. Something and like he that. Finally, he finally was able to take everyone's opinions and uh, <laughs> <laughs> absorb he, them. You know, the thing is, uh. I he might be lying and he still doesn't get it or anything he's just finally said you know what uh, yeah yeah i get it he gave well, up after the fifth try he was like the, fuck this well, i'm out no country for old men I, that he felt the same way it's like oh damn 
Really? I think you, you can make a good argument that Chris Duckman is a replicant, like in its beta phase, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, the motions. He's a Nexus 3. <laughs> gonna, I'm like going to find him and be like, there's a turtle in front of you that's turned on his back. <laughs> it's baking in the hot sun. Uh, yeah. You're not, you're not helping god. it, Chris. It was slowly zooms Why aren't you already sweating? Like, oh god. <laughs> Films, both of them being terrific. The way I view the two Spider-Verse movies is kind of the same way I view The Invisible Man and Split and Get Out and other films that Blumhouse oh, I wish has I produced. Could, because Blumhouse has produced a lot of other movies as well. That's but right, those Chris, three have. really do <laughs> seem like, damn, where'd those come from? You get what, what are you saying? implying? You get what he's you're, saying? You're babbling. You so the up? other ones... So the other ones, they you would not say, "Damn, where did those come from?" It's that surprise. thing again. Oh, you, you have this a certain kind of huge library of films. Three of them. Wow, they're great. The others, well, you know, they're anyway. not exactly come around. Right. <laughs> what what yeah, others? What others? And also, again, it is just an interesting way of squaring it away because now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Abby Arad and uh, Amy Pascal, they're both producers on uh on the Spider Verse films, right? Oh, so yeah, totally bad. Uh, no, Amy, Amy Pascal, when she was taken, uh, she used to be CEO of Sony. Then there's the Sony hack. But on her way out the door, as she's being replaced, she put herself in charge of Spider-Man and her yeah, production she's, company. Okay, yeah. and so she is, yeah. So there's that. And also, With aren't Phil Ward and right. Christopher Miller, aren't they producers on, the, on them as well? They were the directors of the first movie. They didn't direct the second one, but they're producers, right? Yes, they so, are. Of the, they are. How does that yeah. get squared away in the world of Chris Stockman? Those fucking producers, man. Not creatives at all. Well, I, I'm, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Some studios have really good instincts, Ooh. and they can pick filmmakers and stories across the board that, for the most part, are going to be at least decent. I look yeah, at a studio what, like A24. Which meaning that there are films that Ooh. are bad and studios that more consistently choose worse filmmakers to make bad films. And <laughs> the creators that are at least decent, they'll pick. Yeah, what it's do you like... mean at, at least decent? It's like, so there are creators who are not decent. Yeah. Uh, go oh. Chris. And That's Chris, is there a, Chris, Chris, is there a way to set, to identify a non-great, a non-decent creative? Can we do that? Is it well, possible? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 instinct. Instinct. Chris with instincts, we've already covered this. Gotta so instinctually, we can discover whether or not someone is shit at their job. No, instincts. Moving on. Oh. Also, A24 Pretty has much. quite a few stinkers. Oh, they All got right. some real shit films. Yeah, they do. Well, they, I mean, they have to them, so they wrong. Like, it's, isn't it? it's like, you know, okay, inevitably, some of it's going to be shit. It's just that's their, that's their MO. That's how they do things. Yeah, they take like more chances. It. Yeah. yeah. A24. Sure. Pretty much most of their movies, if you see a trailer for an A24 film, you can probably bet gods that it's not going to be terrible. That it's at least going to uh, be... I don't know about that. I don't honestly. even I don't know. But I, there's so many questions to ask on. him. What a, like, because he went with consensus before, but now we're on to like his own sort of rating system, and then it's like, so... How are you determining this? And then like, trailers... What? what can you be, be more specific? Give me examples. Why are you just saying this so broadly? And it's because he doesn't want to step on any toes. Be decent. And maybe even really good. And I don't feel that way with every single studio. It's like a flip of a coin. You could get one of their best efforts, or you could get another one. You say that as though wow. that only applies to <laughs> studios or producers as opposed to also applying another to one. directors and writers. Which to an extent yeah, like it is. You can see, well, I mean, you could be like, oh, Christopher Nolan, Interstellar is going to be great. <laughs> and then you watch it. You know, oh, ten it. And, then, uh, and, then, and then you can watch Oppenheimer and be like, oh, yay, cool. <laughs> you know, also, like it's, it's that's fucking, how it works with individual The creators. same guy with very likely hyper creative freedom made Prometheus. Uh, <laughs> Ridley <laughs> Scott, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. I like, in my head for a second. I was like, yeah, that one bad alien film. And I was like, oh, that's two of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, oh, Mama, you second. sweet summer child, you. Oh, because... hey, it, we were reminded today uh, of Dark Fate for some reason, and mm. uh, James Cameron <laughs> wrote the story for that. Co wrote the story That's for true. that. Yeah. Oh, well, it was I mean, because. I mean, um, again, James Cameron Linda Hamilton James said she's not going to yeah, come yeah. back. What happened to you, James? What happened? Why do you want to make Avatar films? Because Why? it's a fetish. It's literally that's it. <laughs> oh yeah, he wanted to see a pregnant You're woman going to war. Scientifically, genetically engineered to be sexualized. God damn! Look at the eyes. Like Look at the nose. 
And you don't like boobs. Don't, who who was like, oh, you can't say that. It was obviously the studio that made Prometheus and Alien Covenant the way that they are. And it's like, are yeah. you saying Avatar's a big? Are you saying Avatar's a big furry movie, Rags? They're furry adjacent. I mean, it's on a six adjacent, two okay. one, but it's not technically. Oh, I'm not disagree. I'm not disagreeing with spirit, you at all. Yeah, in spirit, yeah. Avatar. I, as a matter of fact, I completely Ridley agree with you. Uh, Ridley Scott, because Napoleon just came out. I mean, it seems yeah. like he had he could do whatever the hell he wanted with that film. Yep. That's the impression I get from that film. He treated he treated historians like he treated the producers. <laughs> the guy. <laughs> Didn't didn't when he when he was confronted and told that French people hate the the Napoleon movie? Didn't he say like French people fucking hate themselves? <laughs> like yeah, why should I? Fucking Chad Ridley. I know. Wow. Well, I mean, what what the the what was the other one though? Where like I don't know if he actually shot at the pyramids, but it communicated that he took Egypt. Oof. You weren't even there. How do you know what he did? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That was the one. You, can't, you can't criticize him. No, the that was the studio that made him do that shot, you see. Have you ever <laughs> attacked Egypt before? You can't criticize it, okay? I'm pretty sure there were Transformers there, too. That, that edit was accurate. Dude, that edit yeah. was so good. <laughs> oh, did you guys know that um, I forget who was responsible, but you can get a 3D tour of the inside of the pyramid? Using like one of those, like someone took a camera on the inside, so you can oh, go cool. and check out all the places and stuff for the pyramid from the inside. It's all like a like a virtual tour. Can you see it's like really the cool. sort of indents and stuff from the cannonballs in there as well? No, you you just see all the the scrape marks from the haunted mummies and all the, well, the skeletons there, of the gray robbers who got well, cursed. The no, it, is, it, is, it there any, is there any power station in there? No, it was is a power it, station for the transformers. Okay. Oh yeah, right. right, right. The, the Egyptians, knows that. they truly were ahead of their time. They were. And I do think it comes down to the filmmaker they're working with and whether or not they back off and give that filmmaker the freedom they need to tell a to cohesive, a coherent story. What if no, they can't tell a coherent yeah, this is, this is cohesive story? Their creative vision isn't coherent or you, you, cohesive. You, you, you know what his, his fundamental problem is? He sees all creatives through the lens of how he views himself. Yes, and presumably I he, am creative. He, yeah, I'm and presumably... Creative. He, he views himself in high regard, and so he takes his experience of making his own film and assumes that it's always like that. Everyone has a great creative vision that they're going to bring to life, and it's awesome, and the only thing that can ever get in the way is a studio meddling in it. That's his fundamental I mean, we, problem. He, it's, he, it's very he idealistic. Everyone... I mean, we it, see how that plays out. You know, A24 very gave $30 naive. million dollars to Ari Aster, and we got Bo is Afraid. That movie's a fucking mess. There's nothing coherent and cohesive about that movie. The movie's a giant pile of spaghetti on the floor. That's well, what happens. Just, when you, it's, a, it's, a wonderfully, it's a wonderfully naive and, and idealistic view of how films get made. That, uh, that anyone creative is just this beautiful shining light and uh, the studio is like this gigantic... Producers. Yeah, the uh, producers are like this horrible back. dark cloud that just descends on their anybody. their claws <laughs> into everything. One... Can we just like you know, almost reset a bit with how he's like? How does this work? You go well. There's a guy who has a little camera and he's like, "Woo, look at me go! I can make things that entertain people." And there's another guy who's like, "I kind of like the I, I like the cut of your jib. I've got money. I can get you technology and people, and and you can make a movie for me that'll make me money and you money, and we'll create something pretty neat. How's that?" And they shake hands, and then the guy starts filming, and then the guy with the money says, "Ooh." I don't want, uh, I don't, I don't want dinosaurs in this. And then, and the guy's like, "But I love dinosaurs." And it's like, mm, "We're gonna have to sort this out because I'm paying, yeah. and you're the guy who thinks he can tell the story best. We're gonna have to settle this." And it can go both ways, and it can be a good thing and a bad thing. That's what I mean. Like in theory, like I said, it was an idealistic point of view. It actually, in a sense, isn't because in his worldview, studios just can't add anything worthwhile, nor can producers. It's just, it's Which not is, a thing. I, I, it's just bizarre. Like, there's never a point where a producer could look at a film and go, hmm, maybe, like, the character should say this instead. And it's, and it's like, it must necessarily make the film... I, I mean, you know, like, to, to, to get more to, like, I guess a more fundamental thing, there are some producers who like movies. Yeah, <laughs> like, there are. There yeah. are some of them who like movies and I mean, they enjoy all... storytelling. Yeah, they 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 all don't want to take your spirit cooking and have your children play Twister at Tom Hanks' house. No, sorry, did that get too dark? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Always with the Tom Hanks, Gary. <laughs> well, 
on uh, that. Somebody said it's like an episode of iCarly in the chat. By the way, are you talking about behind the scenes or the actual Ooh, show? Yeah, that's, that a, that's a whole different. Um, yeah, the because the, that's the is it Dan Schneider, right? That's the one, the, the feet guy, or is that somebody else? <laughs> I, I think that wait, that, think that's, that's the, Dan Schneider, the, the yeah. iCarly guy, right? Right. Yeah, yeah I, I read the autobiography of the the girl who was in that, and ooh, yeah, I made from some pretty interesting reading oh that was uh well that was the order but the 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 one about the mum right the yeah the yeah yeah it's, it's titled like i'm glad my mum's dead or something and Damn. uh yeah well you kind of get why she got to that point but yeah mm -hmm. there were some interesting revelations about what went on behind the scenes there but yeah you know uh um, anyway. when when the filming scenes and we get all those stories of like an actor being like i i think this line would work and a director might say oh my god that's an amazing line or they'll like one of the latest ones i remember is the because the the arnie documentary was he was like i will be back would be the better line more robotic and then james cameron says i'm the fucking writer which is <laughs> <laughs> an audience since admitted like yep that was probably the best decision considering it's one of if not the most iconic line in cinema it's like it's in the top 10 at least you know uh i'll be back and he said like i never would have thought that's what that line would become it's like yeah fuck yeah but in the same vein arnie's produced plenty of movies right but what if he was on he set as and a producer he's, and he's also talked very highly of producers i listened to his uh audio mm. book where he's talking about on twins and he spoke highly. I can't remember the producer's name, but I, I, I recall he was speaking. You know, and and yeah, he's produced stuff. A lot of creative. You know, Steven Spielberg produces lots of stuff. He executive produced Animaniacs. Do you think that because of that, like, and because he didn't direct any of the episodes, that every single perspective he ever could have offered on that show was detrimental to that show? You don't believe that because yeah, that's cause stupid. Because because Chris Douglas would be like, well, no, he's Spielberg. You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait till you see Clone Wars smaller. Oh, if you ever Diane. see Clone Wars, George Lucas signed off on everything, according to uh, many, for that show. I mean that every writer is going to be great. Two of the writers of Madam Web worked on another film in the Sony universe that has been heavily criticized, called Morbius. How did you, has did been you catch how? <laughs> that's the yeah. harshest you'll ever speaking. catch him by him saying, yeah. "I'm not saying every writer is great. People, Someone made Morbius." <laughs> well, but then it, it's, it's not like I thought Morbius was shit. Yeah. It's like some Everybody other criticized people it. criticized it. <laughs> exactly. He's so. Why can't you just own a position? Why can't you just say you think that they wrote a bad film? Yeah, he just in case anyone thought that it's such a weird way of speaking because like I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, he did just criticize the the Morbin movie, but at the same time, he's he's already said he won't be bashing movies, but he also criticized it in a way that was more so everyone else did. You know, like so, if it's an aggregately in a sense, oh. like if it's aggregate bad, does that mean that the film is bad? Or are you having your own opinion no, he, here? He, he, no, he just, he just has to bow to reality at certain points and say, like, yeah. yeah. Um, other people thought that this was bad. The general consensus seems to be that this was a terrible movie, but I'm not saying anything about it. Yeah, He's having know. his cake and eating it too in the <laughs> yes. sense of, I will because present I'm a reality. Celebrator. I will present reality, but I will not implicate myself in the negativity. And then you, uh, you shake though, him, you know, and you're like, Chris, say something yeah. bad about Morbius. And he goes, well, it wasn't a home run. Yeah, I honestly uh, like if if filmmaking doesn't work out for him, I think there's a great career in politics ahead for him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I. I mean, maybe honestly, because like this shit seems to work. It it's uh I remember is a. It's, it it really is like kind of the black pill where you realize that you can say something incredibly mean, but if you say it in a nice, polite tone of voice, you can get away with it. Like you can just slip away. You can get away with saying something harsh. Meanwhile, if you speak in a harsh way, but you're saying something that's pretty tame or even positive, just because of the tone of voice, it can be read in a certain way. Yeah, the British have been getting away with it for years. <laughs> Centuries. <laughs> Story. It doesn't mean that every... Oh, and so, yeah, the way I've edited it now is he said that, the, you know, you don't always have great writers, but he will not be bashing Madam Webb because it's the studio that fucked him up. But he's just admitted that Morbius, you know, probably had some bad writers. And you're like, hmm. Mm. D does he know mm. who wrote does he Morbius? Know? Does he know? Wow, because this seems this seems like one of the few cases where people have actually looked into who wrote Madam Web. Like, yeah, because a lot of the time people just don't know who write films. Um, but with this one, it feels like a lot of people are really aware of uh, uh of that. If he, it's knows. really important. It's really really important. 
uh, th- there's that news of uh, Marvel retooling, and if it's a very long article in the Hollywood Reporter, but they tell you who's writing, uh, who's rewriting Fantastic Four, and it's people who wrote Black Widow. Oh. Yes. Uh, well, because the guy who's directing Fantastic Four was one of the directors on uh, <clears throat> One Division. Yes. Um, it's <clears throat> it, it it is a little it's it's a little crazy when you start to see it's like oh and you what did you have before this that you wrote oh one episode of television or like one short film here you go you're writing a feature film for Marvel <laughs> that's going to cost two hundred million dollars to produce <laughs> and then once you do that it's like oh you can get your own TV show you can get your own you know you get to direct the next Avengers film I don't get it. I don't understand how it that is the way that it works. Like it seems to me that the normal way is you have to direct a bunch of films before they're confident enough to give you that much money to make a film for them or confident in, you know, that you're going to deliver something that either people are going to find uh like super well, entertaining or I, it's going to be critically acclaimed. I don't know if they bring these people in on like multi-project contracts. So they say, like, we're going to start you on this one, but you've got, like, three more things scheduled in, and it'll be something. It'll either be TV episodes, or it'll be a movie, whatever. Um, I think there's there's a few overall deals for some of these guys. Most of it's, like, they're casting directors now. That's all they're doing. You know, it's something they can virtue signal about. And it's their approach, because it's it's a producer-driven market now. And that's not what film used to be. Producers had a big part in it, but the director still was in the driver's seat much less so for television for television it was the producer had writer writer's room director just kind of did what uh, the head writers told him to do that's what's happening in film now so that's why you know uh, in the beginning of the mcu they had some pretty decent directors kenneth brown you know but then they got away from them joss whedon because they were becoming a pain in the ass because they wanted to be creatively in charge yeah that's uh, another thing right like, um, famous case. remember how he said that the mcu he didn't include the mcu and he said it was sony based which was really weird when We've yeah. got many examples of creative people leaving the MCU because they can't stand how it works. And we've not just not just in yeah. phase five or phase four. It's like we're going all the way back to fucking phase two, man. Like, yeah, yeah, like all the way back to the age of Ultron, Ant-Man, uh, and then, you know, Scott Derrickson. But nobody cared because he got replaced by Sam Raimi. So who cares about what he wanted to make for Doctor <laughs> Strange 2? Yeah, that one the... I'll never get over. Like, that's crazy to me. That was a guy who left because he felt like his creative vision couldn't be realized and nobody gave a fuck. <laughs> like nobody cared it's because people like Sam Raimi more than him that's why that's, yeah. yeah simple as um yeah because that's that's where I mean this this process that he's highlighting is so inept in terms of the actual information we have fucking Edgar Wright that's like one of the most famous ones yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. well it's just weird it's like oh yeah this is a problem with Sony it's like yeah it's not a problem with Disney though huh like <laughs> no I know on. right it's a problem everywhere and it's how you work with it uh you know, James Gunn's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Some people here didn't like it. Some people That's did. Right. But uh, it did okay. <laughs> then he effed off, you know? It, it was his movie. I wouldn't deny that. That's the thing. I wouldn't have expected yeah. anyone would. He would probably say, no, a studio didn't get to touch that one. He'd be like, because, because people liked uh, it? Is that how we, you know? Like, how do we figure this out? And um, How do we reason, work this? I think the reason he said the Sony-based one is to imply the uh, Homecoming Far From Home and No Way Home don't have Even this same Sony films. this is what they're i'm saying like he's he's he, but why because in terms of aggregate scores those do well like people on the whole like score them high it so is. he can't yeah, include that right with now, morbius can he right no. now it's safe to shit on sony everybody's yeah. up for shit yep. on sony yep. um meanwhile ignoring first of all that they make other films but also that also that there are the films that you that some of these you know, some of the liked films, the generally liked films, the MCU Spider-Man films are Sony. They are like joint Marvel studio, sure, but Columbia Pictures distributes them. They pay most of the bills and they make most of the money. That's why they don't want to give up Spider-Man because I want to keep making money from Spider-Man films. Yep. But like, you have to take those as part of the equation. If you liked Homecoming or Far From Home or No Way Home, or you liked the Spider-Verse films, like Sony financed those films. There's no getting around it. They finance those movies. And so, this section is just, if only there were a way we could discover the, let's say, aptitude of the writers that are attached to Madam Web. If only there were interviews maybe available, or mm. comments from them that could tell us their insights and their points uh. of view. Mm. Maybe if you just type, this is what I mean, I'm, I'm like beaming, but it's like, it is so easy, man. You just type their name in, and you've got it. You just do a little Google search. Uh, do, do a little research before you make a video. Sounds 
strange. I know. The writer is going to remember. He's the one with the insight. He's the filmmaker. We're just the plebes that make mm. fun of everything, get mad yep. at everything all the time. That'd be great. Two of the writers of Madam Web worked on like I legit don't know that he knows that the people who've worked on Mobius had any connection to Madam Web I don't know if he he knows that for sure not what he's saying right there Um, no I mean like um yeah in the sense of how the studio is entwined with them as in so he's saying right that they that they're not responsible but the the writer for Mobius is proof that not all writers are great do you you see what I mean yeah It's, it's funny it's like again having and and also i don't know if he knows but the writers for morbius have written shit for of course. that they've only written garbage only gods God. of egypt Black <laughs> Old. They, goddamn they studios every time movies. they write shit movies that fail which is why well, i don't they, understand how they have a job they just have <laughs> a lot of bad luck they, they just have Really bad luck with the studios meddling with all their ah, films. yes, every single time. Yeah, with Dracula Untold and Gods of Egypt and the story. Yeah, some Power of you guys Rangers. are laughing, but it's real. It's a it's a great tragedy of creativity. Yeah, Who this knows man. We would have this man has written of Morbius if I had creative freedom. This man has written flop after flop, and you're laughing. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> <laughs> Another film in the Sony universe. Yeah, so what you're about to see is the two of the writers of Madam Web having an interview. That has been heavily criticized, called Morbius. How excited are you to have people finally see the movie? I'm um, pretty excited. I mean, it's been years that we've been working on this thing, and the time has finally come to reveal it to the public. So, yeah. so, so, uh, okay. So, I'm a diehard Spider-Man fan. I've been reading the comics Screen since rant. I was six. You know, I think it was Amazing Spider-Man. It's a two sixteen. Yes. Okay, two sixteen. So I'm like, how no. are you gonna? You know, I've seen. <laughs> no. I was curious about that because like... two ten. The film, how are they going to like get around the whole Spider Man of it all, having Madam Web and not Spider Man? And you figured it out. How did you crack that? Well, I always wanted to tell a story about a woman who was seeing the future, thought she was seeing the future. Oh, yeah. So I put on the the question was, how are you going to get around the Spider Man of it all? And this is his answer. This is his answer. (laughs) If you thought you were seeing the future, if you saw visions of the future, you would probably thought that, probably think that you were losing your mind. And so telling that story and then finding the character within the Spider-Verse that we could told that story and in searching through everybody, Madam Web has no backstory. And Get so the that fuck really out of here. What, 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 what answer is like this? Yeah. <laughs> you see, the uh, at all. Is Great. he saying like there is no Madam Web in this universe? So we so she does she basically doesn't exist, so she doesn't have a backstory That's established how they treat in this universe. Most of the souls it's like, so we can do whatever we want to do with it? It's like she's, they think she's a blank canvas that they can do whatever they want with. That's what it Pretty seems much. to me. Not Which is how they the treat character. all the characters anyway. Mm-hmm. Yep. But also just, and I, that doesn't answer the question at all. No. no, it doesn't. It doesn't. But I mean, of course. I mean, they, they really he's respected the lore. No, he's, no, not, he's not done. Oh, it <laughs> gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. The character within the Spider-Verse, that we told that story, and in searching through everybody, Madam Web, has no backstory. And so that really gave us a lot of freedom and all the, I mean, all the, SJ, everybody, the freedom to like tell the story that they felt would be, you know, right now, but still set in 2003 so that you could have the song. What the fuck does that even mean? Right now, but also 20 years ago. (laughs) It's so just really. nonsense. He doesn't call it even make it in 2013. It, it is you know, nonsense. That was just a word salad. It's yeah, pretty yeah. much like he had that stock answer for any question. It's like final. Just and yet it was it, still like, very it. poorly rehearsed. Yeah. Well, it, it makes me wonder, don't you guys do rehearsals? Don't you? You're writers. Like, do you think about what am I You're going to ask? This is what, what am I going to be asked? This is your film. How is this the best you could muster? I feel like we could make it's up like better reasons. It's like you had to learn me. about... It's like he's taking a test on somebody else's story. Yeah. Not that he is the source of all knowledge that the story is from, you know? It is making a lot of sense to me, uh, the dialogue quality. In yes. The web. <laughs> yes. This is exactly what I'm getting at. Like, you go look into the people who created it, you're like, wait a minute. How the fuck are you guys creating this? Who gave you this? Like, what, what's going on? <laughs> and you check their histories, you're like, oh my god. That they felt would be, you know, right now. But I still love that cut. In 2003, so that you could have the song. <laughs> Toxic. Nothing he I said made like any fucking um... sense. <laughs> 
I feel like this is one of the stories where you have someone who's sneaking into an, an event, like an assassin or something, and they're trying to steal like diamonds off a, a lady or something. And, so and he they, gets cornered like, on the he, red carpet. Yeah, he's he, he gets cornered, and he's not actually the writer. He just has to come up with bullshit on the fly so his cover isn't blown, so he could go through with the mission and steal the diamonds. <laughs> or this guy, like an alternate reality version of the, the guy on the, the Game Awards, the Bill Clinton kid, got <laughs> on yeah. stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretending like he belongs there. The man had a plan, alright? Say what you will, but he had a plan. And to be absolutely clear, he was asked, how did you get around the fact that, you know, Spider-Man, you gotta get around that, and he says, uh, yeah, wanted to tell a story of a woman who could have premonitions, and uh, Madam Web's perfect because she doesn't have a backstory. Yeah, so they had this, they had the story before Madam Web. Like, you didn't even so mention Spider-Man, but okay. Like, yeah. Spider-Verse. Yeah. I feel like an easy answer to that would be, why would I have to work around the Spider-Man of it all? This is Madam Web. Yeah, it, yeah. You, you say it was easy. Yeah, we just focused story. on a different yeah. character story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, my, my take on, well, first of all, I agree with, 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 with Karam. Uh, just so you know, Karam started the entire process, Krem. and then... So he's, he he's in on... The He's in on the robbery, by the way. So <laughs> yeah. the, they're both in oh, on yeah. the robbery, and they're being caught. I'm uh, totally in with Krem. That's I'm going to make up his name. Uh, yeah, like Krem's a name. Krem. Krem. Yeah, Krem, Krem. 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 That's the name. Call him Krem. I love Krem. Looking over Krem. his shoulder, uh -huh. like, can I get a production person yeah, here to like pull me away? Oh, He's dude, it's, out it's, an exit so he could run away. Uh, Trigger's honestly yeah, funnier than that. It, listen to who he was looking for that he couldn't find. With, with, yes. With Krem. Uh, just so you know, Krem started the entire process, and then... He's my, he's my pitch man. Oh, my, my writing partner vanished. <laughs> my writing partner vanished. <laughs> Smart lad. It's so funny, he was, he was looking that. for a lifeline, and he couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. I love that bottom line, the Spider-Man of it all. That's a that's a good title for a video someday. Yeah. The Spider-Man of it all. Uh, and then the thing, one of the things that we added to it was the the three spider women who we meet them in a place where they haven't become yet. So really we meet them in a place they where they haven't become, become yet. Ironically, <laughs> we, we leave them in a place where they still haven't become them yet. Yeah, nope. uh, yes. The, but maybe we figured they, they, we'd introduce them came. to the story, traumatize them deeply, and then the film ends. So we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons we said it back in time is so that, first of all, Dakota Johnson could be in the movie. Yeah. What, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> we said it back in time so that Dakota Johnson could be in it. <laughs> Nothing can, about that statement makes know, any sense. Dakota Johnson can the, only exist in 2003. Yeah, in a film that was set in 2003. We even said all the interviews to be in 2003 as well. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> She's what actually is, 50 years old. Did anybody? There is no Dakota Johnson. She died in a car crash three years ago. In the Amazon while she was researching. In the Amazon spiders. while she was researching spiders. <laughs> uh, but most importantly, uh, to see three young women who, um, you know, are destined, maybe, hopefully, if things go right, to become great <laughs> heroes. Don't it, buddy. You know, he, as long he, as Ben dies, yeah. He was almost about to say to see three women become heroes. He's like, oh, right, that didn't happen in the movie. Uh, <laughs> 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 Whoops. Oh, this is a woman to set up three other that. women to become yeah. heroes maybe one day, perhaps absolutely not that where we start uh, which is the essence of the spider-man character that's, I think. Essence of spider that's the yeah, essence spider of the spider-man character is, it? <laughs> is becoming a hero man yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man is three young women who haven't become heroes yet, okay? Don't question it. That's Spider-Man. They haven't become yet. Spider-Man is, I mean, I think the reason why people love Spider-Man, or I do, is that he just seemed the closest to, you, to me. I don't believe right. you. I don't believe He seems you. the closest to you, so that's why you no, love just, him? I, it's just, oh, I love Spider-Man, do you? I don't, <laughs> I don't, know about I don't even, I don't love Spider-Man. I think he's really cool and he's neat, but I wouldn't say, like, no, I don't love Spider-Man. There's not I, a long yeah. list of... Well, the, no, I'm just asking if they do. No, like, really. No, say, no, no, no. Spider Man, do you really? Really? Who do you think you're convincing? Like, no, you don't. They just want to be, they just want to leave. They, they, they're in fight or flight mode right now, and they just want to go elsewhere. They, they just want to skirt through this answer night. Any questions about their own movie? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. Spider Man character, right? I think it's Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man is, I mean, I think the reason why people love Spider Man, or I do, is that. He just seemed the closest to to me, yeah. right? Yeah. It was grounded. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm very grounded. Are you a 16-year-old? Kind of I'm a Hollywood writer. I'm very grounded. I just... 
He's got it's nothing. He actually has nothing to say. Thing. He's got nothing to say. They can't say anything about their own movie that they got well, paid a lot of money to write. Well, think about all the people out there who would kill to be in a position where they're wearing a nice tux, they're on the black carpet, and they're being <laughs> interviewed by somebody about the film that they wrote and the characters that they made. People would kill to be to have this kind of opportunity, to have that be their job. And he's just I, like, I, I don't know. Can we I all love Spider-Man. For, for his neck and rags, I thought you were going to say people would kill to write Madam Web, and I just thought, <laughs> nah, not really. <laughs> Probably there's someone out there me. who would have been there's like, someone, I would have fucking done there's it. There's someone out there who's really disappointed with it as an adaptation of the Madam Web story yeah. and character. Yeah, they might have said, uh, I would kill just to make sure it never happened. I would get in a time machine, and Hitler gets a pass, <laughs> but I gotta make sure that Madame Webb does not get made. <laughs> you could do it like in Futurama, where uh, they keep going back in time to sort things out, and then they keep stop they want to stop at Hitler to kill him, but eventually they're doing it so fast that Fosbitt's like, I'll just shoot him out the window as we travel. <laughs> the little sniper. Stuff like, he was grounded, and... Uh... So then in telling another Spider-Man story, or in the Spider-Verse, we'll say, it was like, we wanted to just take a, a woman who didn't have any special powers and didn't know what was in store didn't for her. Didn't have any special well, powers. You know, what do you mean? Madam Webb is clairvoyant. Excuse me? Or does he mean, no, he, he, means, he means before. But, but if ahead of, uh, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but Peter Parker didn't have any well, powers. Well, yeah, but that's everyone almost. Either. There's hardly any Actually, of the yeah, heroes overall. Madam Webb's a, a mutant, so she did have the power. Ah, yes, that's right. But not in this interpretation. Not in this. No. Know that because they probably didn't pick up a single well, comic book. Well, to be fair, Frank, she had no backstory, so. That's true. She had no backstory. You know, it's like side. Madame Web never, ever, ever been written about before ever. It's a totally original new idea. You know, the movie opens this weekend. Big box office, big success. And Sony says, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that you chose to cut in on his face there. Yeah, that, guy, that expression. That thinking, man, he knows. I'm so glad I didn't choose royalties <laughs> yeah, over <this> salary. <laughs> He this, fucking yeah, knows. This, this dude, he doesn't need to be Madame Web to know where this movie was gonna go box office wise. <laughs> also, cameraman, yeah. what the fuck? What the fuck are we doing, yeah. cameraman? What's yeah. this? <laughs> I don't want to look at the back of Screen Rant <laughs> Man's balding head. I think, it's, I think it's the interviewer's fault. He's moved around and the camera's static. You think so, yeah. Movie opens this weekend. Big box office, big success. <laughs> Sony says, look Let's more do a <laughs> I've thought about where the story will go. I mean, I've got plenty of ideas, <laughs> and uh, after the movie, Why I'm going to track down the executive in charge of this and tell them, tell them all of them. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, sure, we have <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure you will. Oh, oh. I got so many ideas, man. <laughs> the ideas they're just pouring out of me. So many ideas. I just, so many. Yeah, I just oh. can't even say a single one. <laughs> it's like... oh. I'm telling you, maybe five percent of them are approaching quality. Well, one of the wonderful things about this movie is that not only Miss Madame Web, you know, becoming a hero, but you have uh, these three uh, incredible women who also are on their own journeys, both together and apart. So, um, sure, there definitely. there are a lot of possibilities. A lot of yeah, they I mean, they become real heroes by the end. The guy also yeah. like, where does Madame Web go behind there? in the future? The first answer was, I got ideas. The second answer was, lots of possibilities. Yeah. So I mean, she's she's blind and paralyzed, so I don't think she's going to go too that, many places. I, to be fair, well, that that can't be undersold. That the origin story of this movie is she loses her ability to walk and see. That's it. She those has are, the those powers. Are the power the she gains. Yes, and she takes three women on various journeys that are basically porn scenarios, and we don't get the money shots. Well, and she yeah. should probably end up in several jails. Like by the end, in terms of all the shit that she goes through the well, entire movie, and what they tell us. She was, uh, she blew, she blew up the explosive factory, women. remember? Yes, yeah, she got to work explosives. Yeah. I do love that, by Did the way. It's like, oh no, they're heading women. to the explosive factory. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's a fucking Michael Bay movie. It, it's supposed <laughs> to say Acme, it should have said Acme on the side, and yeah. it would have made more sense. Guys, it's abandoned as well. It's like an abandoned fireworks factory that still has all the fireworks in it. Yeah, just yeah. open and accessible in New York. Just say hey, free fireworks. Come on down. <laughs> it, yeah, it was open. open and accessible. It was there was literally a hole in the wall that had not been patched over, that hadn't been like boarded up or anything. Mm -hmm. Just on the streets no of New York. Just yeah, just free fireworks, everybody. Come Listen, on. Listen, two thousand two thousand three <laughs> New York was a very high trust society. All right. <laughs> One of the producers told the writers, we need to have an explosive finale. And so they said, all right, I got you. I get I can you. do it. 
And, Dude. and so that was the studio's fault because I said it needs to be explosive, and the writer mm-hmm. said, "How about it? <laughs> like yes. with, just filled with explosives, literal <laughs> explosives." Yeah, good enough. Okay. This yeah. interview really is like two aliens, yeah, who have been a little bit yeah. transported <laughs> onto Earth, and they don't know they they just don't know what to do, and they're trying to seem human. Yeah, That's so weird. Who's a villain who maybe won't be quite so villainous at some point in the future? We'll see. But sometimes. What I've and learned, dead. and what I've experienced he's myself, dead. Yeah, he's dead. Hey, 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 no one's ever really gone on the multiverse, so yeah. Okay, ah, okay. true. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. dying to see more of Ezekiel Sims. Sims well, yeah. he was really good. <laughs> I, I honestly am. I loved every line he said. He was. I like the funny. beginning <laughs> where he shot that pregnant woman to death. That was really. <laughs> that my was favorite really part. Endearing. Was, my favorite part was when his lines didn't match what he was saying on the screen. Yeah. Ooh, the ADR yeah. was brutal. It was bad. Yeah, everyone, it was everyone has noticed the ADR on that. It seems it yeah. is. Uh, oh yeah, it's terrible. Not um, great. You had the actor. Right. Uh, anyway, the fact that he's like, you know, got this position of be, don't be bashing the creatives. It's like, what if they're dumb as fuck and they say insane things and they talk? They, their justifications for making this horrible shit is like almost to the point we can't even understand what they're saying. It's what about nonsense. that? What they just said was nonsense through and through. I do like the idea of maybe the Screen Rant interviewer guy asked them a legitimately tough or critical question, and Stuckman shows up in like a superhero outfit, and he stands between, yeah. between him and he says, Get away from those artists, fiend. Go and interview someone else. Did the studio send you? He's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure this might be something that you guys have discussed as well before I got here, but fundamentally, like... Y- criticism isn't about being mean like you don't have to be a nasty person to criticize something if it's constructive well-meaning criticism like if you really care that much about being polite and not hurting the feelings of the creatives you can provide constructive criticism of where their movie went wrong and suggestions for how they might have done it better that's not a bad thing but that would involve you having to actually like put some effort in and you'd have to make more than a five minute long video uh, listing all the production information about the film. Furthermore, yeah. you, you don't even need to attribute the bad writing to anyone. You can just no. leave it open. You can just say, the writing is bad because it is. You yeah. don't even need to and, say the writers are stupid. And I, again, like, okay, if you want to say the writing's bad, fine. Like, uh, do that, but then give us examples of why it's bad. Like, things that don't yeah. make sense within the story and make some suggestions for how you could have fixed that problem. Like, that that's if, the essence of what your critique could be. It's solving problems. For yeah, the, you the have people this, who made it. You have a platform to, while you are criticizing movies and praising them, you, you also are in a position where you can show your chops and how good you are at making stories. See, here's what, here's what I would have done if I was a, a writer for, a, a creator, a director for one of these movies. Not saying that I, I, I ever will be, of course. But, but if I was, I would do this and this and that and here are the issues. Yeah, and it's not about tearing them down it's about showing them a different way that they might have done things and they might have approached it and it's giving them feedback that will probably stand them in good stead going forward you know it, it's like criticism is a vital tool for a creative to get better at what they do because if you just tell them that everything that they make is amazing when it's absolute dog shit they're never going to have any incentive to improve like, it's a vital tool for any- life uh, yeah, that's sure. just art yeah. you know it's we all have to deal with it in our own way it's not negative, we, that's the point. Yeah. yeah. Imagine you're, okay, imagine you're the writer of this movie, and let's say the studio... Oh, no. Completely, I, just no, completely. I won't. No, I All refuse. Right. Well, everyone but Rags. Everyone but Rags, imagine you're the writer for this movie. Imagine you wrote something that was actually pretty good, and the studio made you make it stupid. All right, let's just say Chris Stuckman's theory actually happened. If you get, if you see a critic saying, oh, the writing kind of sucked, this is what I would have done instead, and it actually looks a lot more like what you originally wrote, wouldn't that be kind of affirming, in a way, yeah. that other people yeah. recognize that? That it wasn't good? Mm-hmm. I think so. Well, yeah, this is not taking advantage of his incredible right? platform and opportunity. That affirms to Sam Raimi, like, ah, okay, I don't need to feel so bad because they all think it sucks, like me. Or I don't. Does he think it sucks, or does he just think it's like worse than the other ones? Spider Man Three. Ah, oh. uh, yeah. Does Sam Raimi said like he hates that movie, or does he just not think it's as good? Like, has he ever really talked mm-hmm. about it? Uh, yeah, he's he's apologized for it. Uh, ah, and he's okay. and he's yeah, and he's yeah, talked yeah. about the the actual the the venom being forced in. No, yeah, that yeah. wasn't originally yeah. what he wanted to do. 
but he decided oh, yeah. to be a team I, player. Yeah. I guess I'm just saying that, yeah, that could be another instance where you just be like, yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it, like, if it's not yours, then why would you feel bad about people shitting on it? If it's basically yeah. like not your creation. I, uh, you know, David Ayer is out there talking about, I think that's a pretty good case of studio interference with the movie, whether, you know, yeah. Suicide Squad was great or not. We'll never know, but he, yeah. he hasn't been quiet about it. No, he hasn't. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, I'd love more of that. It's fun. I would like, too. They fucked my yeah. movie. But obviously, you've got to be careful because then you won't. And by the way, this is reasonable. If I pay someone to make a movie, I think they did a bad job and I re-edit it, and then they say, fuck you, I'd be like, we're not working together in future, bud. <laughs> yeah. 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 You fucked me first. I'm, I'm fucking you back. One of my not favorite like... examples of a, of a filmmaker speaking openly about this sort of thing is uh, David Fincher talking about Alien 3, yeah. comparing it to being ritually sodomized. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's well, I mean, what he his just, experience he was up, like. Yeah, he yeah. straight up disowned that movie, didn't he? Yeah. For a long time. Sure did. And then Imagine Scott it'd be more, like, huh? Ritually sodomize the alien. <laughs> mm, interesting. <laughs> on my film, but on scripts that I've optioned to some studios, <gasps> and it went nowhere. Is that when people have power over <laughs> you I'm as shocked. a creative, when they're paying your bills and they're paying you well, they can tell you to do anything. No, they tell you. you can, they can tell you to do anything because that's what you signed. The, the, these the are contract. these are very yeah like the contracts to these must be insanely Insane, thorough. Yeah. When when they pay you, they're like Love so. This money is what for what's in this series of papers, and you go oh, what's in these papers, and it says I get final say on basically everything, and you're like, hmm, you want to sign? You get the money, but you also don't get to be 100 percent free to do whatever you want. Mm. Some people would say that's kind of normal. Yeah, I mean, would you <laughs> like, would you take a job well, getting a whole bunch of money to be able to make a big Hollywood movie that everyone will know about if you know going in that this movie is going to be 80% my vision? When I see it from the, the studio's point as well, it's like, okay, we're going to invest $100 million of our cash into this movie, and we're hiring you, we're paying you a good old whack of money as well, and the stipulation is that we have to have final say over what you make, because, you know... It's our you pay money. Hundred million. It, I yeah. think that's something that needs to be, you know, it's it's like people need to be reminded. It's it is it's their money. Um, they're the ones who are incurring the big financial risk potentially on a film. Now, does that mean that they should be able to, you know, like what's the point of hiring a director if, you, if you're just going to make every single decision and they don't get to say anything at all? Like, why would you pick any given director unless you thought that their ideas would be? more worthwhile, more interesting, or in a more cynical sense, more likely to make money. But, mm -hmm. I mean, they're probably going to have an opinion on what's happening in the film, given that they're the ones who are financing it. And, and it, again, this is the annoying thing, like, because it puts us in this uncomfortable position of having to defend these giant studios who often fuck things up, but, like, at the same yeah. time, the reality of the, the world that they live in and the, the way that they finance these movies, you can't just ignore it and say, oh, it's so unfair, this is how it's done, and it's done because they're the ones who pay for it ultimately. It's which very sucks, easy. But that's... If if you if you don't go in with a mindset of realizing that, um, it's very e I guess it's very easy to be critical of other people's money, but imagine that was your money that you were spending on a movie, and you're mm -hmm. taking out a huge. I mean, again, a hundred million dollars is is not possible to conceive of. Really, it's just a number. Yeah, and we have to come up with. Money. We we have to come up with these like abstract ways to try and understand how much money that actually is because our ape slash dog brains just cannot fathom a number that. Well, I mean, I guess one high. way to put it into perspective: a hundred million dollars that'll buy you what thirty houses in San Francisco, like thirty houses. That'd be about as how much it is. So you know, you can put it into perspective a little bit. It's a lot of look. It's a lot of houses. It is an a insane of amount of money. Yeah, and when somebody else is putting all this money forwards. In a in, in a world where the real the reality is companies can die, companies can go bankrupt, companies can end, and that that is a that's a real thing, especially when you're dealing in these big chunks of change. So and that used to happen in old Hollywood a lot. Like one single flop would destroy a studio. So, yeah. and we just don't know the to the extent at which um, studios save films. There's just no records of it yeah. really. Well, it's because it's not, it's not the story that people like of no. the producer maybe said, hmm, don't do that, and then it turns out that that was the right decision. 
And, you know, it could be that the rationale behind the producers, you know, making that decision, it could be a really stupid one. It could be something stupid and cynical, but it, it could have ended up being the right decision anyway, creatively. That's possible. Or it could just be that the direct, the producer actually had a creative thought there that was mm -hmm. more in line with what the film needed to be. That's possible. It's possible. That would be the thing that would have to be conceded. It is at least possible. It is feasible. Not if you're Chris Stockman. No, no, no. Not in his world. To state the obvious, as we cover a, an entire video of a guy just stating the obvious, what it lacks is nuance, right? So, yeah. like, these, these are all nuanced discussions, something that, uh, again, uh, I think we need to give this guy a Voight Kampf test. I'm not sure he understands. <laughs> On that note, I think um, the nature of the fact that people can move in and out of producer roles or studio roles or start their own studios makes this point from him just useless because if he was to yep. release Shelby Oaks and it makes $10 trillion, it's the best thing ever and everyone loves, everyone buys 10 copies of it. Um, then he's going to start Stuckmanized, the studio, where he's going to supply <laughs> plenty of money to all kinds of creative people. And he's just Stuck there and he's enjoying it. And he grabs up this, this plucky new auteur who makes this incredible film on set, but at the end they're like, and then the hero slips on his own piss and cracks his head on the floor and dies. And Chris is there in the on set and he's like, mm. can we, okay, can we shoot another scene where that doesn't happen and then we'll have a look in the editing and see which one works better for the story and they just go, Chris, what are you doing, man? He's like, what? You're encroaching you on my creative art. vision. I want the piss, Chris. Let me have the I piss. Mean, yeah. <laughs> Listen, you you give me the piss. You said creative should have complete freedom. You said you watch, I am a creative. Did, you are the producer, and I want him to slip on piss and die. Did you see the <laughs> Borderlands trailer? Oh, I because just saw piss. what's in yeah. there. I um I, I saw I didn't see the trailer. There's, I saw the image piss for in it, that. and I yeah. I mistakenly is... called it Suicide Squad multiple times to different people. Yeah, yeah. So that's some bizarre weird. casting. If that poster's anything to go by, Damn, I've seen man. the trailer. Uh, P is uh is prevalent in it. So, um. I, I think that the, the um, I, I guess the, the theme of this video we're watching is that either you yes. die a YouTuber or you live long enough to become a producer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to do it, no matter what. It's like that scene in Vampire's Kiss where Nicolas Cage is threatening to fire his secretary and he says, You're the lowest on the totem pole. Oh, he here, plays Albert. the entire you scene as well. I've, I've chopped it, don't worry. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. You do that face. So <laughs> well, but in essence, though, it's so funny to be like, this is so unfair. The fact that the people who gave you the money to sign a contract in which you had to perform certain actions in the work that they have offered you can actually make it so that you have to do certain things. Imagine you're an if, employee. They're paying for it. You're, I mean, they're you your boss. What if you paid someone, like, what if you paid someone to put carpet in your house and then they were like, you know what? I'm thinking pink carpet, pink and green. Pink and green stripes with purple spots, and that's my creative decision for the carpet in this house. You would go, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm paying you to install beige carpet. What are you doing? I'm like, no. Listen, you can't infringe on my creative freedom here, right? I'm the carpenter, right? Well, people, and, people don't act this way to things that aren't movies. It seems and we're verging on what you're supposed to do in that scenario. If you don't want your creative vision destroyed, there's an option right there. You can take it if you want. The, the, you didn't All sign it requires to begin with. is you to put one foot in front of the other foot and then do that over and over again in a specific direction. So the door it's says exit. Walking. Yeah, you could yeah. lose your job, quit the you projects, can cancel out. There's, uh, there's so many. What do you even call it when someone says, Woe is me, I've been given millions to not complete the story the way I want it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, man, that sucks. I mean, and if and if your attitude is, but I need other people's money to make my vision a reality. It's like, well, <laughs> tough shit. Welcome to liter. That's us. That's me. I my I require millions of other people's dollars to make my creative visions yeah. come true on the big screen. That's everyone, Chris. Welcome to the club. The That's regret, life. Um, funnily enough, is not even at least the way I understood it this whole time was not that the studio has present prevented the creative from making the creative decision. The, the tragedy is usually they ruined what was sounded like a better story. 
that's not necessary yeah. like that doesn't mean that that happens every time a studio encroaches on a creative that's not how that works that is just when we have all the detail and we know that oh wow that was there that seemed out of place and you know yeah it turns out the studio pushed that and you're like oh i wish they hadn't vice versa well uh iron man getting pushed into uh civil war right the third captain america film in retrospect that seems like it was a good choice because they managed to bring in like a huge cast to make the film feel much more like it lives in the MCU uh, actively, as opposed to if it was just a Cap film where he's a rogue Avenger and that what Tony just doesn't show up. Like, okay, that'd have been strange. And so if we are going to say that that was a studio decision, like, oh, I mean, you know, I guess they made it work, right? And that's kind of a symb symbiosis that doesn't get commented on when the studios say, "I want you to do thing," don't know how you're going to do it, but do it, and then the creative actually manages to make something from it. They're like, damn, I didn't want to have to do this. But if I do have to, I think we could do this, 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 this. And then it's like, oh, wow, look at you both go. There is. Yeah. I mean, that's why I mean, we've talked about it before on EFAP. It's just being able to communicate and compromise with people. They're giving something. You want something. You got to meet in the middle. This is this is it's just, just a part of life. It's just it's, life. Um... That's reality. It's it's a quote that I remember from one of the Bungie Vidocs for Halo 3 where they were talking about the the fight, the battle between art and design. Um, and to, to paraphrase, the concluding statement was along the lines of, if either art is really happy or design is really happy, then something's wrong. But if we're both kind of unhappy, then it means we've probably got the right balance. That, that there's that push and pull, that tug between what the artists want and what the designers want. And that the push and pull and the fighting and occasionally giving up and occasionally fighting for the thing that you want kind of synthesizes into the right balance. Yeah. Um, that that the idea that you're not going to ever compromise ever. It's like, well, that's I mean, that is just not conducive to working in a team. If you're yeah. working in a team, there's going to be compromises. Also, a big part of being a director, being a good director means being able to convince people of your ideas. Like, if you can't yep. convince the, the studio exec who has a stupid idea, let's say, let's just agree his idea is stupid, and you're like, no, I really think it ought to be this way. If you can't convince him, then then you failed a little bit, too. I mean, maybe they're just the worst. Maybe they're a little tyrant who just wants whatever they want, and they don't care about you at all. But a big part of being a director is being like, no, this is why I want it to be this way. It's important. All these pieces fit together. This is why. Like, that's well, what your why... job is. Why have we made the director the person who's at the very top of the totem pole in terms of who has their creative vision, you know, sacrosanct over everyone else? You have costume designers, you have visual effects artists, you have the, the you know, the script writers, you have all of these oh, people. Well, the reason why would be, do... I guess, the conclusion is that the director is the head of creative, basically. Yeah, but but in terms of, like, why, like, for, if you were to ask Chris Stuckman, would Chris Stuckman say... No, 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 no. It's okay if the director tells the person who does the costumes that it needs to be done this way, not oh, the I way see. that you yeah. want it to be done. Or, no, no, this set needs to be this way. This props need to be this way, not the way you want it done. And that's okay for me to do. Um, yeah, but when it, ultimately, what you're doing is you're telling them to do something when they're not being paid by you. Well, right, you're being the formula, paid by the producers just like the director is. The formula is so clear because of the Scott Derrickson versus Sam Raimi thing. It's when two creatives clash, everyone sides with the one we think is better. So when a director, like a Peter Jackson, has conflict with, you know, Jimbo Bajuba, who's sorting out the chain mail, and Peter says, nah, that's not good enough, you need to make it like this. We're not going to be like, trust Jimbo Bajumba, he knows what he's doing. We're going to be like, uh, yeah, go, go with Peter. Peter's got like the... You know, he's 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 got he's, he knows what he's doing, and we got the, that sort of thing. It's like, yeah, and to an extent, that is probably the way you would need to do it because we can't settle every single disagreement at every level of filmmaking with the budget and time we have. We just can't. So we we opt to go with well, the director's going to get the final say probably, but ultimately, the final 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 say is follow the money. Like who, who's who's fucking spending on this shit? And uh, yeah, you'll get different people saying go nuts or not. That is a simple reality. But the thing is, with how much money is bleeding out these days, I'm surprised studios aren't taking even more control. Because, like, do you think Phase 4 and 5 in the MCU is, is a result of the studios getting the films they wanted? I think it's a result um, of Kevin Feige getting the, the films that he wanted. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, like, I would say he's he's got to be on the hook for that. Like, he has he's to be. He's got to be. 
mm-hmm. responsible. And if the man is going to soak and, up and, the no, fame. But, of, uh, I think if know, he gets to call him a Kevin Feige production. Promo uh, was out. That was him, basically. Oh, also, by the way, I've just yeah, been made aware. Right. I, I had no idea this was happening. Um, he's lost ten thousand subs. First document from this because of this video. Wow. Really? Yeah. What? Really? What? what? And that's that's an Why? at least. Because it's uh, Social Blade, which is all rounded now, but yeah. Oh no. I guess because uh, we will get there, but his comment section is angry. Has he has he responded to any of this? Not yet. No, I don't think so. Anyway. I. Wait, were you gonna were you gonna say something? No. I, I'm just surprised that there been a there would be any pushback to this. I would assume that is a little over. surprising. Yeah, I yeah. would agree. I agree as well. I wouldn't have thought that people would be that mad, but they were. Also, my watch together is. Hang on, I need to reload it. Let me fix this as well. Oh, sure, all our faces are cut off right now. I'm sure people at home are terrified. No. I'm scary. terrified. Uh, my beautiful the... face. The internet cutting out problem has been solved, chat. Also, I saw some people still complaining about the ad placement. It is on the lowest setting now. But I don't know what the fuck's going on with uh, YouTube's back end if it's still not, um, like, fixed or whatever. Uh-oh, my watch together is uh, just, just dead. Nothing's happening for me. What do you mean? I can't do anything. It's just, like, it's black screen with zeros. Oh, uh, oh. maybe... Did mm. that do anything? No. It's, it's funny enough, right, I can see right. that you're doing something, but it's just... Uh, well, it's at 10.30. You want to refresh? And it's at 10.30. Well, that's the thing. I, uh, I fully reloaded it, which you'd think would do something. Uh, maybe try, like, in a different browser. Yeah. Chrome sucks. It really does. Not that yeah, you're using Mark, Chrome. Microsoft Chrome is edge. garbage. Yeah. Oh, I am using Chrome, but I still agree. Yeah. Yeah. I've been using Firefox. <laughs> it's not much better, but it's better than Chrome. I wonder if, I wonder if Incognito will fix it. That's what I think I did last time, actually. Oh, I think it might be fixed. Exactly what it feels like when you're beautiful. I'm yep. Is that working? Awesome. Yay! There you go. That makes it. Well, that Chris, makes complete sense. Yay! <laughs> For a second there, we were we were cut off from yes. Chris. Or creative Chris, dealing with a larger entity that has control over your creation or at least your script or your story or your characters. When they can tell you what to do and you got to do it, it doesn't matter if you think it's you insane. Have you have to, to find it. a way to make it work. You don't you can have always, to. There's always a choice. You can always You don't leave. have to. Well, yep. it's this is not what happened with the, um, the Jurassic World movie that just came out. Like They lost a director because of creative differences. He, he left. Yeah. He, he left. left. You he can't... walked. He turned well, around. I mean, and he left. even even beyond the scope of you can leave, which is obviously the the like that's the 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 big the big old choice. You can just like you can fight with producers. You can get into arguments with them about what you think is right. And sometimes you might win and convince them, and sometimes you might lose. That's also part of the equation of making anything when there's like a yeah. producer involved. It's not yeah, like they can't be money. convinced yeah. out of a perspective that they have. You can yeah. fight for your film. It's this crazy world where you have to collaborate with lots of different people in order to get a big project like this done. Yeah, and every, everyone's beholden to everybody all over the place. There's there's a huge chain of command, essentially, right? Like, he's saying, you just have to do what the studio says. And it's like, yeah, and the director gets to decide what the actors do, and the actors have to get to decide what their mm -hmm. personal assistants do. Oh, and also, and, like, you know, entities decide whether or not your film is rated PG-13 or if it's R-rated, depending on what parameters your film, like, whatever your criteria your film satisfies. Yeah. And, and you that'll gotta change work with how them. many people can watch it. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go to them and say, what do we need to change? There's a reason that mm -hmm. blood doesn't squirt out alerts uh, once his arm and head get plopped off. I mean, there, you got to make some, uh, you got to make some changes. You got to play in the system. Do some sacrifice. Because it's, yep. And you know, we hear about the. Uh, I think some of the famous examples would be Chevy Chase and Dan Harmon on Community. Huge breakdown yeah. of communication between an actor and a director because of creative differences. Uh, Sean Connery, and I forget the name of the director of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but the, that was a famous one as well. 
Like um, Wesley Snipes on Blade Three, he refused to fucking come out of his trailer. He wouldn't even talk yep. to the director. He had to do it via written notes. Oh, and that was the rumors for World War Z as well that Brad Pitt stopped talking to the director because he was so mad about all the reshoots. Yeah. So this happens all the time, and you can you can push and pull with the power that you have. You can quit. You can try to compromise. You can try to explain. What he's talking about is one tiny aspect of a very narrow operation that happens throughout all of filmmaking and all of industry, basically. But he's it's making it so sound like... It's so bizarre that he would say this as well, though he's I mean, got he's, any position of authority. If anything, he's, uh, he's damaging the conversation because he's making it seem like studios and producers are just fucking people that ruin everything. Yeah. Like, and, he hasn't so even mentioned the, the fact that they're the ones the paying for the movie. Well, it, again, it, it's, it's like, if you want to make a film that's like a $200 million blockbuster, unless you have $200 million just laying around that you can invest in that project, like, what, do you, do you believe that because you have the idea, you have an idea in your head for a $200 million blockbuster that you're, like, entitled to have the means to create that, and that once that's you true, get it, yeah. nobody can say anything to you? Never mind just producers, but what about the actors? What if they disagree with you on your creative I vision? I am the king. And I then it's like, it well, I, yeah, I'm in charge. I mean, I'm if, the you captain now. The bills, mm -hmm. if you're paying all the bills, maybe you will be the one in charge. Well, yeah, not, okay, so like, he's highlighted the nature of the money and the creative like power. When they were making notes for Melanie, don't you think you had insane money and power levels over your actors? Mm -hmm. Yep. And they knew they couldn't push back too much. They want to have the job. Because that's how it works at all levels. I don't know why we're that's highlighting this. Unless you're, unless again, you're like a Martin Scorsese who's built up enough of a, a reputation that you get to basically say, "I want to do whatever I want," and you're allowed to. And in because the same, you have the reputation. In the same vein, the rapport that he has with someone like Robert De Niro, there's probably nothing they don't understand from each other at this point in terms of like. Yep, exactly. You know, I think the character should do this. Why this reason? Yeah, that could work. Okay, yep. you know, like or whatever. Him like or the, Leonardo DiCaprio, or you know, yeah. but if it was someone new, he might not give as much of a fuck about what they have to say. Or if, for example, a Gal Gadot says, I think Wonder Woman should do this, you might just say, shut the fuck up, I'm the writer. <laughs> 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 now, I'm not saying that's what happened on Madam Web and Morbius and all these movies, but I would not be saying that because no you have no idea, because you didn't look into it at all. He did assume it earlier, though, so he is saying that. He did assume it earlier, that's correct. Prize. Because when I look at Sony's involvement with the Spider-Verse films, I see Lord and Miller Completely that have had film. massive success on the big screen in the past that have made... Have you looked into what they've said? What if they said, uh, it's a bit grueling because a lot of your choices get slapped down by the studio, but ultimately you still get to make something that people are inspired by? Like, what if they said something like that? Mm. Uh-oh. I, I wonder what his opinion is on the uh, reported crunch on Across the Spider-Verse, good old Chris Stockman. I wonder if he has an opinion on it. Hmm. And it whether or not they uh, have any amount of responsibility for uh, anything that would have been brought up uh, relating to that. A lot of money for a lot of people and have proven themselves to be very smart at what they do. And I can totally see a company like Sony saying, why don't you guys give us your best shot and then we'll give you some notes. Now, for a filmmaker like S.J. Clarkson, who made Madam Web, she's had a long and respectable career directing television, but she's directing her first movie, and it's a Sony superhero movie. When I saw Madam Web earlier today, there wasn't a single part of me that thought, wow, this is just a terrible filmmaker. I could not really? help. They're really, <laughs> really, <laughs> really. Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. Oh, I, you, gotta, you gotta see how he finishes yeah. the sentence for that to make sense. Okay. Okay. A terrible filmmaker. I could not help but see the myriad of evidence that has been laid at all of our feet that this is a studio that is yeah. simply retaining the rights to their characters that cool. does not care about the quality of this experience they're giving us. Sure, okay. So there's nothing she could have done. Pre present nothing with, she could have done. Pre present us with this myriad of evidence that's been laid Please, at our feet. Also, yes. Yeah, so help us to see what you see, Chris. Yes. Help us. Because also, they didn't set out to make a shit movie. Nope. So when he obviously wanted this movie to make a billion dollars, they wanted obviously. it to be good. So they clearly did care about providing a good experience for the, the end's user, the audience, they just weren't able to deliver it. Whose fault is, is um, that? Is it theirs? Uh, or is it the, the creatives? Or is it both? Or Why it would either? they have meddled so much if they didn't care? 
They promoted the hell out of it. Yeah, as we well, learned. Well, I, see, I see something fading in. I see something fading in here. What is that? Uh, no context for that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk more about what he said. So this yeah. this assertion that he saw the film, and by the way, this is another bashing the film. He said, like, I'm not going to call them terrible yeah. filmmakers. You're like, wait, wait so, why would you say that in the first place? It's like, oh, because it's bad. Right, okay. Um, but he's saying, no, there's not evidence of that. There's evidence that the studio didn't care. What if he was faced with a studio member right now, a producer who said, I worked my fucking ass off for this. I care about Madam Web. I tried to make it work. The fucking director was an inept idiot. And, like, she fucked everything up. But no, I don't care, according to you, because I'm not creative, but she is, right? Because she's got a history in TV, which automatically means I should just let her do anything she wants. Which I did, by the way. Like, if he said all this to him, I wonder if Chris would be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, uh, well, yeah, I, uh, like not, to, not to mention her priors. You know, she did the Blood Moon prequel for Game of Thrones. They spent $30 million on that, and it, it will so never bad, see the light of the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never going to see it. Oh, someone, but someone um, leak it to it. Find a way. He's trying. He's, he's like his whole I thing know, is trying I to protect to directors and writers from the torrent of hate that they can often get from people who don't understand that studios ruin things by expelling a torrent of hate at all the people in the studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, how does this? How does this make sense? I love the idea of like a studio executives watching Chris Stockman's video and being like, oh. But do, also, in the process as well. Why is he so mean to me? Stripping the director <laughs> of any of her autonomy or capacity yep. to make any choices whatsoever. Yeah, you're saying there's nothing she could have done. Nothing that she right, she was just a, she a slave to the producer. She was well, rags. It wasn't was they hired her. He said there was a myriad Remember, of evidence that that's the, the case. Yeah, this is okay. a golden tablet situation. He's not going to share this divine knowledge with the rest of us. We're just going to have to. No, he's not. Take it on. F he's just. We're just going to have to take it on faith from Chris. Of all of these things, that would be a neat thing to point out, but I guess you don't want to be mean. Um, uh, two things so much really for being quick. a reviewer. Uh, worth remembering that she is also an executive producer. The other thing <gasps> is that didn't he, yes. he, just, he just got finished saying, no, I don't know that this happened. And now he's like, there's a myriad of evidence that this definitely yeah. happened. What's well, the evidence? He, he's come away with a really... He's done something really stupid. He's he's like made the apt observation that Sony is making these films so that they can retain the rights to Spider-Man, which is true. But then he's like run away with it to this weird world where it's like, oh, well, they don't, you know, if they make a piece of shit that doesn't make any money, eh, who cares? You know, they don't care. It's like, are you, you think they don't care? You think yeah. Sony doesn't care that this film is not going to make its money back and that everybody thinks it sucks? You don't think they, that they only have, have to gain. That? They have more than anyone else to gain. They not only literally get to make more money, they have now created a character and an IP that they can use to hopefully make money into the future. Now is the time, like if you're Sony, if you're not Disney and you're interested in superhero stuff, now is the time to fucking strike as hard as you can and make the best shit that you can because Disney's dominance over superhero stuff, it's basically done. Mm -hmm. Now is when you need to be cashing in all of the chips that you can on making a great movie to pry away that you know that 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 Disney clout, that Disney dominance. They're fading. The king is weak. It's time to strike. When he says he has a there's a myriad of evidence, what he is referring to is when you watch the film, it's evident that the <laughs> studios destroyed it, which is as was just mentioned incredibly condescending because if he, he had the uh, clarkson in the call with him and she said um <laughs> bro that that's my movie that it is the way that i want it to be what the hell i i, I yeah, honestly he imagine he would fucking no, no, crumble no 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 no, no, no. Wait, wait 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 no 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 wait 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 look i'm not i'm not saying look okay i'm just saying i i love i love movies i love movies okay i i love filmmaking you know, it'd just be like, it, it would just completely crumble. I imagine that this position isn't held with that much conviction at all. Yeah, and uh, uh, I guess on no, top of that... No, he's caught himself in a terrible position where he can't admit that, yeah, creatives, uh, creatives and like people who make movies and writers and stuff, <laughs> yeah, they could be shit. They can be bad. It was, they can do bad jobs. It was revealed to be in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's the way he talks about it. Yeah. Well, so this, this is all under the context of him saying uh, he's on his filmmaker's journey and he's done several videos on that. And a lot of people are defending him saying he knows better than all of us because he's a filmmaker now. And I wonder if maybe in 10 years, kind of like we were talking about earlier, if he goes on his producer journey and then gives us the producer's point of view and then a studio journey uh -huh. where he's just got his own studio yeah. and gives us that. And he's like, you know what? I've done some growing. 
I've done some growing and it just, uh, yeah, producers actually have it a lot harder than you'd realize. Because who the fuck has ever advocated for the producer for the studio? Nobody. Because it's just not a thing you do. Yeah. It doesn't no, It doesn't match anyone's fun narratives to say there is that producer who cares about the art and is trying to make things work but also doesn't want to go mm. bankrupt. They just catch all the flack and never get any of the credit. Yeah. Madam Webb, which lands in theaters on Wednesday, February 14th, 2024, <laughs> is set in 2003. It's a time Clarkson felt she knew well and embraces with period props and a soundtrack that includes tracks from the time, including Britney Spears' Toxic, very apt for a spider bite oh movie. God. I remember the noughties, and I remember the nineties. That was my time, so in some ways, it was pure nostalgia, a joy to go back there and a little hilarious, she explained. The young spiders were on set and saying things like, look at that phone, oh my god, we remember that. 2003 doesn't feel like that long ago, but it was 20 years ago. That's considered a period drama now. You don't realize that- By the way, the fact that all of the young actresses on the film were being amazed by the technology of the period accurate props is probably the most interesting thing about Madam Web that exists. <laughs> well, you may or may not have detected why I've put this in here, but uh, obviously I'll explain it by the time uh, I mean, get to the end. If not. Yeah. That when you're thinking the visual effects budget is going on changing cars and LED screens that are flashing, but it was a time that was fun and exciting. It is certainly how I remember it, which was my youth. There was a vibrancy and fun, and the music in Madam Web did so much of that for us as well. There also wasn't the surveillance capitalism that there is today. That was a <laughs> conscious effort on our part to make sure that it was only the villain that had any of this technology and that for everyone else. It was like, well, we know you can track things, and there are cameras around, but not to the extent that it is today. You couldn't tap into it as that option didn't exist. It was quite liberating, because it meant you could tell the story without everybody getting on their smartphones. Getting mad on web. I don't know, man. Like, the newspapers, the, the newspapers back then were pretty fucking on the ball. That's it's like, true. Th she, she goes on the run with these <laughs> girls, and like, within a matter of hours, there's like, front page news about it. <laughs> That people are reading about. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, that's how it was back then. Newspapers yeah. were they were amazing things. We lost a, uh, we we, wa we lost something valuable. Sure. And right after nine eleven, she was able to just get on a plane, go to Peru, like that, in like an back. afternoon. In like an yeah. afternoon. It was weird. It was. It was. I love uh, that. It was. It was kind of like what what like a whiplash moment in the movie where he's like oh oh shit is she going to, is she going to peru to the amazon right now oh oh this is happening in the movie yep. she's in she's in the amazon <laughs> okay fin the web fuck is surveillance capitalism capitalizing on surveillance, surveillance. <laughs> i don't I think, know i think she just had to throw the word capitalism she in there just, yeah she that did the, the, the fucking Soviets. hollywood people will be like oh yeah get that fucking dig in against hey capitalism. look it's better than yeah. surveillance communism okay yeah, yeah, the, right. the communists and Soviets, they would never just, like, spy on you all the time and mm -hmm. encourage you to, you know, you know, rat on your neighbors. No, Yeah, no. they were famous for being so laid back yeah, about it's their very freedom free, you know, in society. Yeah. Yeah. It's very libertarian society, mm -hmm. the uh, communists, yeah. yeah. It was a race against time with the picture only being locked days before the film's theatrical release. Let me be clear, I could have worked on this for longer, but every director will say that the clock was ticking. I'm never ready, but we had exhibitors scrambling for it. It was all to do with visual effects as those were the last things to come in. It's a very grounded film. Most of the visual effects, in terms of the clairvoyance, were done in camera with me and a diopter making a lot of noise and smashing glass against glass and a flashlight. However, we did have a big finale sequence with many visual effects, and that took a bit of time to do. When it comes to the army of people that make me and everybody in the movie look good by bringing the visual effects to life, <laughs> you want to give them as much time as possible. We also had some late additional photography, which was always needed because of the strikes. We had to wait, so we were turning those things around at the last minute. The very last shot was a computer screenshot that I did in a one with nine screens, so that took a long time to complete. That was the shot that I was biting my nails, waiting for to make sure that we could drop it in before midnight to deliver it. It was right up to the wire. There's been too many Man, examples of movies that all feel kind of the same. Like that... a... Well, oh, no, so yeah, interesting. Thoughts, it sounds thoughts. like that's a director explaining her rationale for the creative decisions that she was making in the film. No, I Sounds yeah, like we, it was we, her movie. We don't really agree that what she described had the effect she clearly hoped it and felt it did. Nope. But I mean, that's her film. 
That just sounds like a director talking about their film that was bad, but they were talking about it like that sounds like a thought process was going into some of these decisions. A thought I mean, process we're... that seems divorced from a producer just saying, do it because we own you. <laughs> like, it sounds more like, oh, well, I made these choices because they afforded me these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Were theaters clamoring for this film, though? I, I yeah, question that one a lot. Uh, I was. I was. That's, I mean, that's... in February, I, just, there's not a whole lot going on. Yep. Especially just, on I'm... Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh. Tell me about it. It's just funny that, that Stockman has assumed that she had... That it's like, oh, well, this isn't her film. And then you just have her saying that it is. So is she lying, Chris? Is she, Do I believe is she her or you? Is she making stuff up? Is she covering for the producers? And for the reference, Chris, first Chris article, will never have read this. He will not have bothered no. doing any of that research. That was the first article I found with her talking oh. about the movie. That is <laughs> probably a lot of work, though. Yeah, it took like... 20, no, 13 seconds, I would say, maybe, to find well, it. Well, Chris, Chris doesn't have that kind of time to waste. He's a busy it's, um, man. It's unbelievable to me because of how confidently he believes he knows what's going on because of his insight as a filmmaker when he's admitted he has no idea what it feels like to work under a studio, and then we's just he's just so provably wrong. He doesn't mm -hmm. respect this very strong, independent female filmmaker who is now being crushed under his low yeah. expectations of how she could deal with a studio. As if he has any fucking clue, right? He already established it, but it's true. She's been working in TV for ages. She knows how this works. Yeah, she should know the landscape. Exactly. She knows how the game's played. Like, yeah, sure, it's her first feature, but hasn't she directed dozens and dozens of television episodes? Yes, yes. Yep. It's just, it's just it's like, pretty, I actually feel annoyed on behalf movie. of her, even though I thought her movie was fucking piss. That is like, yeah, let her own it. Let her be like, this is my movie, fuck you. But no, it's like, no, like no, 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 no. And all of the crazy stuff say, yeah, that was our script. Well, it's just <laughs> funny, right? Because if, if Chris was to point out things that are dumb as fuck, and then he's, he's like, God, look at the studios mess with that. And the studio guy is sitting there like, you know that meme with like the, the puppet with the eyes? It's like, uh, that, that, yeah, that was us. Yeah, sure. But then <laughs> the fucking director is like, what didn't you like? about that decision. He's like, well, obviously that it wasn't yours. And she's like, right. Okay. A mishmashed early 2000s superhero movie. They can't seem to get out of that. No Interesting comment, because I completely disagree. I feel like it's been forever since we've been in the early 2000s mishmash of bad superhero movies. I kind of miss that era. I mean, it's been 20 years well, now. Yeah. yeah. We've had a brand new yeah, era the 2020s. of <laughs> abysmal <laughs> films. Yeah, the reality you. is that there are there are people listening to us right now in the audience who did not exist when those things happened. Well, and they're a different breed, man. You go watch uh, like what are, what are considered really bad superhero movies of the two thousand era. It's like Fantastic Four, Rise Spider Man, Man uh, Daredevil, X3, 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 Daredevil, uh, Catwoman, Elektra. Yeah. Like, uh, this is an interesting thing. It's like, how many people in chat, I wonder, is this news to? Ben Affleck played Daredevil in a movie with a pretty high budget, and he had to fight Colin <laughs> Farrell's bullseye. Do you, do you know about this? <laughs> That's it, was that time. it was a wild time. Oh, hey, hey. Contract. And it's got a director's cut that makes the movie actually a little better. Well, that's kind of what my point is. And I'd watch that, that movie. I remember that film being way show. more entertaining than the slob we get these yes. days. Yeah, that so, very going bad. meow is way more entertaining. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, hilarious. it is. It's funny. And then, and then, if you were to actually get a little bit more serious, there were, some of these films are better than these new Marvel films that are coming out in terms of the integrity of their scripts. Like, genuinely, some of these films are better than like Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. I freaking love the Ghost Rider movies. Unapologetically. Yeah, probably better than, uh, than Quantumania. It's probably better than Multiverse of Madness yep. in terms of its script for, its, yeah, and, for as bad as it is. This is what I mean, I mean about his lack of insight. Was... He's arguing to us that we're still in that era. It's like, no, we're not. No, we're you, not. You have have some we're in a worse era. era. The reason why I'm saying that is because that's an observation people have been making about Madam Web. Um, and for some reason, he's broadly <laughs> applied it to all the films when I don't know that anybody was saying this about Venom. That Venom yeah. feels like no one. Yeah. But people were saying that about Madam Web, at least I was, in a more positive sense. I was saying, oh, like, it's yeah. refreshing. It's a, a fun, bad movie. It in a negative sense. Mm -hmm. There were plenty of people saying it in a negative sense. Because these are people who still think that the new Marvel films coming out now, for as bad as they were, 
aren't as bad as like X Men: The Last Stand or uh, or uh. Dead Evil or Catwoman. When just let's be real, again, X Men Three. If you were to look at this, the writing for as bad as it is, it's probably better than Quantumania. It's oh yeah, probably say, yeah. Than- I just oh just, yes, yeah. I just accept that it was. I mean, like mov- movies is a process. The way that they're made, the styles that develop over time, it takes decades for these things to uh, night. When we landed on the moon in 1969, allegedly, it was Apollo 11. 11! Apollo 11, right? It took a lot of tries. A lot of different things had to get done. Gemini and Mercury and all this stuff for us to land mm-hmm. on the moon and actually get there. So if you want to compare that to like the heart or the, the, the peak of Disney or uh, of superhero cinema, which is like the MCU at its peak, a lot of stuff had to crawl out of the mud and evolve and die and try to get to what most people sort of identify with now as the, I guess the apex superhero movie. So to be able to look at Madam Web and be like, oh, this feels like something that's out of time. This feels like something that's just just different. It, it's legitimately a neat feeling to have. And oddly enough, something I kind of wish that we'd go back to in a way. More experimental for sure. Because uh, what's funny is like, that one line from Magneto, where he says, uh, Charles Xavier did more for mutants than you'll ever know. My only regret is that he had to die for our dream to live. That's better than anything in Quantumania. Yeah, exactly. Um, or just Pretty the smart look answer. that he gives him uh, right before he dies. And, and, and then you, it's, it's, it's funny, it feels like back then, for, his, for all of the problems that they had, they still had some general understanding of, oh yeah, the character should probably go on an arc, or <laughs> there should be yeah. dramatic moments of consequence, even the most, even these most basic sort of building blocks of storytelling that are gone now. No matter how many times we've said to this studio, we would prefer it if you went a different way. Well, that's not true. Even- Venom made $800 million, so you told them more Venom. <laughs> Uh, that's what they were told. <laughs> I'm still baffled then, by that, if I'm honest. I'm oh, not Jesus, baffled. How did that it's, make eight hundred million? Dollars? I know uh, it's, it's Venom. It's Venom. People like Venom. That's it. It's, it's that true. Is. You know, you know, like uh, the principal photography for Venom was just over a month. So they no, did, they did the principal. Yes, wait, they really? did the principal in Jesus. San Francisco, um, and uh, they shot it right near my wife's salon at the time uh, when they did that big jump. You know, that jump is right near her uh, old salon. Yeah, the principal oh, photography was just over a month. They oh, turned that thing around so effing fast, man. It was crazy. I, I think uh, it's, it's genuinely one of the most forgettable movies I think I've yes. ever seen. Uh, same with like Venom 2 as well. Like they, they just, I would struggle to tell you a single thing that happened in either of those films. That's kind of funny. I, I actually remember Venom all right. I, I kind of like that movie. It's not good at all, but I, like, I kind of like it. I remember Stupid Sexy Venom, the girl Venom. I remember. She Venom. Um, but that is Venom. Venom I don't remember much else. <laughs> That's about it. Look at that so, I, I, I remember Venom telling Eddie that he was a loser. <laughs> just calling him yes. a loser to his face. And it's one of I Tom Hardy's like worst performances of his career, like, bar none. Like, He's a great yeah. actor. He's terrible in that movie. I like him. <laughs> I don't like him in it. <laughs> oh, okay. I, 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 so like I, said, I, think it's, I think it's the accent. It's just so shit. It's so shit. Yeah, we allow all Uber. opinions. <laughs> yes. And with the excellent examples of their two Spider-Verse films. And I can't help but think, who is this for? Who wins here? Uh, the director. She won. He's very happy with it. And also, film. remember, Chris doesn't know, anyway. as far as we know, Chris doesn't know if those two Spider-Verse films had incredible studio interference. No. Nope. And Lord Miller didn't actually have a lot of what they originally wanted to be in the movie. He doesn't know that. Or at least I've been given no reason to think that. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to know anything hey, else. Sony gets no props for letting them have a lot of freedom. That doesn't, like, go on the scorecard for good no. decisions that they've made. Yeah. It's All just the- neutral. Yeah, they just they can't get a break. They get all the flack and none of the praise, regardless. And um, as for who won, like I do take some level of gratitude that we had this in the sense that I absolutely love seeing someone genuinely try to do something and do it so horribly wrong. Like it's it's just the room would be the go-to example where you're just like, look at that. Yeah, isn't that fucking yeah, hilarious? Neil Breen and is, so much uh, be Neil Breen. Yeah, so much entertainment. Yeah. The comes we all from know it. that name. Yeah, and and so like be like, who won? It's like, well, we got to have some fun. She got to make the movie she wanted to make. Uh, the studio lost, obviously. 
You know, they're the biggest yeah. losers in all of this. <laughs> True. They should have had better instincts. Kinda, yeah. Like, if only the studio had involved themselves further, or gotten the right people to make this movie, or cancelled mm, it before it ever we... fucking got going. Who should we hire to write our movie? Is it the, the audience? The writers, they did a... Get the guy gods of Egypt, guys. Yes. Yeah. It <laughs> seems like it isn't, guys. Is it the creatives? Definitely not. Uh, Definitely not. Definitely not. coming. Now, creatives Jesus. involves director, writers, and actors. Actors are creatives well, too. Is that, si is that Sydney Sweeney? I will not blame wearing... her tits. Reporter she... asks Sydney Sweeney what's the most exciting thing about joining the hashtag MCU with Madam Webb that I can't talk about it. It's so hard because I talk so much. It was amazing. It was incredible. I'm so excited. I'm just really honored to be a part of this. Well, shut up, you lost. Chris Tuckman told I, I me. I love it. Gary, wasn't it you that told me that, uh, like, her and, uh, and Dakota were, like, <laughs> fucking tagging, like, Marvel and we're stuff? Fucking? In the MCU, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I hope that as well, but yeah, that they were tagging... The movie. They, they were, like, hashtagging, like, MCU and stuff uh, when they no, were no, they, talking about on, this. Yeah, so on their Instagram, they tagged Marvel Studios because they yeah, thought they this thought was a Marvel Studios more. production. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, well, look at the picture. Even the Marvel Studios is yeah. in the tweet. Well, yeah. The the thing I'm obviously looking to highlight here is that he's he's just gonna have to call her a liar, and I don't even mean that. In a, we've done that before. We say like they're lying for the sake of whatever. But just, I just want to hear Chris say it. Tell me that Sydney Sweeney's lying. She did not enjoy her time with it. She did not have an incredible, exciting time or anything. It wasn't amazing. Bullshit. I love it was not he... incredible. She was not excited, and she was not really honored to be a part of this. He definitely knows that it was not the creative's fault at all. At nowhere in the process of the, making this movie did a creative ever make a bad decision. No, ever. No. He knows Adam that. Webster, Sydney Sweeney is inconceivable. Cat, Halle Berry's Catwoman. I, uh, we got some extra uh, director quotes now. If people look at your filmography. Oh, the, the the black is the interviewer, and then she's the well bold is interviewer. She's the not. They might yeah. think that it's a big leap to go straight from television to a big budget film like this, but you did direct a massive pilot, Game of Thrones prequel, Blood Moon, a few years ago. Even though it didn't work out, are you glad that you shot something on a large scale before jumping into Madam Web? Every experience I've had to date has led me to this moment. I've done over a hundred <laughs> episodes of television. Seriously, Chris, like, just read up what she has to say. Like, seriously. Like... This is public knowledge. It's in for- the, the, the point of these interviews is to be read by people. Yeah. That's why they're there. And My I've previous held... massive failure led to this massive failure. I'm so proud of it's it. All, oh, it's it's all leads in, you know? Well, out of out of curiosity, why did the Blood Moon prequel not work out? Was it studio decided not... it was not worthwhile, like it wouldn't make it? You know, just as okay, as, the kind of thing that probably happens a hell of a lot more than we'd ever realized. But that it was crazy because it was it, how much did it cost? Gary's it thirty million, thirty million dollars. Insane. I mean, guess you gotta measure a lot. Well, imagine yeah, thinking like you was spend the thirty, really bad. and then you're like, "We ain't wasting more than thirty. Okay, we're cutting it off there." <laughs> like you guys have fucked up too much already. There is as well doing all four, five, and six parts, which in themselves feel like you're making two or three massive features. That's as many as six hours of filmmaking that I was helming, and I would say that everything I've done has led to this moment. Really, it has all given me the foundation from which to leap. So how complicated was it to shoot all these different variations of scenes in order to account for Cassie's visions and then the reality that actually plays out? Yeah, it was a challenge. I was like, we're going to have to shoot these scenes three times, right? We're going to need three times the amount of time. To which I got a no. Laugh. So I had to be quite meticulous in the planning. Most of the clairvoyance was done in camera, in terms of me creating that effect with the diopter. It was often shooting with Dakota and explaining what was happening. She, at times, wasn't seeing what was happening in the direction, so we'd have to do that separately, especially when there was stunt. So it was quite challenging. I've never had call sheets and sides with more notes on them in my entire career. I want to thank you for not including a mid credit scene. In general, I've grown so weary of post credit scenes that often lead to nowhere, at least in recent memory. Was it important to you to just tell a satisfying close-ended story on its own terms? Yeah, it was about telling a great story. My father always used to say, if you have to say something, stand up, speak up, and then shut up. So when I got to the end credits, I felt that we'd said everything we needed to say in the film. It's up to whatever is next to take on the baton. It was about telling a great story, and uh, we'd said everything yeah. we needed to say. 
Yep. But Chris, if she only failed. She, knew. she lost. She if lying? only she knew. If only she knew that she was actually a slave, that she had no input. She had no... She was in in lying. Does oh, how did the producers pull the wool over her eyes? Does he believe that she is a liar? He must do. Because this all sounds like she not only loved making it, but that she had loads of control. And she yep. described in detail that she did everything she wanted to do, and she wanted to tell a great story, and by gum, she got to say what she wanted to say. It sounds like, like the only like... interference she really had from the studio was that she wanted a longer shooting schedule, and they say, now nah, you only yeah. have this much time. Not yeah, what, what you uh... have to shoot, what you have to write. Oh, according yeah, I've to... already noticed in that. According to somebody, Drinker and I know, when it comes to making a movie at Sony, the only time the studio will really interfere, it's not creatively at all. It's just budget. It's yep. just budget. That's it. So you maybe can they try the interfere thing. more in the story. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but the, the maybe. approach is Don't say you're, that. <laughs> you're free to do creatively what you want, but it better be within this amount of money. That's all. Oh, and, and money is for the notion that... It, if he did say she was actually lying, like he had the balls to actually say that, which I don't think he ever would, I would be like, no. don't you think it's a bit of a strange lie? Like, the amount of detail she's putting into these lies. Like, all this stuff mm. about everything Ultimately, she did. Ultimately, for what? To, to Whoa, ingratiate cause... herself to Sony again? Or to say that she's willing to fall on the proverbial sword for a failure of a movie? Like, what? what what's the goal here? Instead of coming out and saying, yeah, I had all of these ideas and all, they were all cut down by Sony. I wasn't given what I was needed. They wouldn't work with me. And that's why Madam Web failed. It's not my movie. I don't take credit for it. Uh, it was all on them to do this, and I, I was stifled. And yeah, he could have found all this out himself. She could have said that. Because I she feel like this, uh, this would change his whole perspective if he read all this. If he... What was it? 12 seconds? 13 seconds. 13, yeah. I was going to say, don't, don't under-exaggerate by saying 12, Gary. Jesus. I'm sorry. 13 second Google search. Yeah, which you know, takes a lot. That's, that's like that's like one sixteenth of a Hill House review. So. I think you might have uh, invented a new word as well. More don't under exaggerate. Don't under exaggerate. <laughs> Double plus good. I could not help but see the myriad of evidence that has been laid at all of our feet that this is a studio that is simply retaining the rights to their characters that does not care. About uh, the quality. Just only... the, yeah, they had they had plans to launch an entire like franchise out of this. This was they were setting up three dinner. superheroes with this movie. But three. They were setting up a trio. This, this was, like big plans. Everyone's claiming that we're doing here. He's a big grown up boy for not being mean to the film because ultimately people are trying hard to work on them. He had no idea that she worked hard on it. He thinks that she barely got to work on it at all and the studio ruined it. Even though the evidence is as clear as fucking day that you can find it. And the fact is, you could make the video on Madam Web saying, look at the diopter that they used to create the special effects with the clairvoyance. This is all done in camera. This is really fucking cool. You could have said that. But oh well. All you're gonna say is that oh she well. had there was evidence there was no way that it was her film. No way. This definitely has the, well, God told me kind of, you know, vibe to it. Where it's just this, just, I'm asserting that this is the case with this movie. No, I've not well, signed right, on he's a filmmaker. Then look for the interviews. Are That's true, he's a filmmaker. I don't think so. Filmmaker. I, I, you know what? I have not made any shitty films, Mahler. It's true. I have not made a single terrible film. Let me guess, you're an article reader. You read articles and then you think you have insight. Fucking idiot. You know, on, a, on occasion, I've been known to peruse interviews and articles to... To, that tells to you see nothing. What's going on. What tells you stuff is making a short film and then just assuming everything. By the way, this is the man who's celebrated for his insight. I hate it. <laughs> like, what the hell? It's not fair. Yeah, he doesn't this research is... shit. Yeah, this is, it isn't fair. This is actually not fair. There is no God. Quality of this experience they're giving us. And I can't help but think who is this for? Who wins here? Is it the creatives? That was a weird Definitely story. not. I love that he says definitely not when she would have described this. You, you saw how she described it. I don't even fucking repeat those clips. Well, yeah. Wait, so are we, did we, like, are you repeating certain clips of his? Yeah, or some of his. Is, like, okay, I understand. Yeah. I, is it she's, the, the director seemed more eager to talk about the movie than both of the writers were. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I just had nothing to say compared to her. <laughs> I just thought that you seem to think you have insight. You all act like your knowledge is somehow superior. It is. He's got none. It We've is. got some. Yes. We are better than Chris Stuckman. Um, in, better than in, in this it. case, Fucking on the topic it. of how much control did the director have of the movie, I have more insight than he does because I read a quote from her. That's more than he's done. Ah, uh, there you go. 
You have more of a myriad of evidence. <laughs> than and does. I also saw the movie. Whoa. Oh. Um, uh, oh, well, uh, the, so did the, I. Well, the thing is, he's he said that's where he's got most of his myriad of evidence from. I still love him to contextualize that. Yeah, are you, suggest are you suggesting coming. that he didn't see the movie? <gasps> I yeah. I think he, I think he did. did. No, he definitely okay. did. It's just okay. that he has nothing to say about it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. one of his reviews, okay? Hey, I mean, making a lot of money because they keep doing this over and over again. Sometimes it makes sense to make a Venom movie. It makes sense to make a Spider-Man movie. Those are characters that are going to generate money no matter what. Morbius and Madam Web... Craven the Hunter remains to be seen. That is not the same level of reward that a studio this might is receive. So this Guardians is so of the Galaxy. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was literally... The year that Guardians of the Galaxy came out is the year that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out. Guardians made more money than The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Made about $100 million more money. And it's a so, damn good movie. This is mm -hmm. just a stupid point. If you make a film that's really, really, really good... Even if it's based on obscure characters, you can end up making more money than the shit film based on the much more popular character. Absolutely. This is just like not true. I mean, no, yeah, not, not even case. to say that, not to say that he was a fictional character, but like Oppenheimer. We have a recent uh, biopic movie that's like 17 hours long and it's really good about a guy that people just never really think about in common parlance. That's basically dredging up a superhero no one's ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then make a billion dollars. Like, I understand where the thinking comes from, but if it was a really, really, really good movie, Madam Web, it probably would be making more money than it is right now. I probably. would guess that it would be made. Not to say that because a film is good that it necessarily will make money. Good films have failed, bad films have succeeded. But it, it can't hurt to make a good film, you know? Surely it can't hurt. Or that it looked good, at least, you know? Well, yeah, how did the... Trailers. How did the creative decision come about for a studio to say, you know what, we need to make a sequel to that Puss in Boots movie um, mm. that was really mid no and no one talks. ever talks about or really probably even really remembers, but we're we're gonna make a sequel to that. How do we make it stick and have cultural impact and get you know make a lot of money and how how can we do this? From producing a Spider Man or a Venom movie, so why are they making them? Is it to retain the rights? Is it to get some kind of financial break? Potentially. And in that case, they probably don't care that much about each and every one of us. You just made an assumption on an assumption on an assumption. You have no idea. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, a, they probably don't care. Why? Because they're probably doing this just to retain rights. Why? It's like, because mm -hmm. they probably wouldn't do it with Madden Web like a Spider Man because she doesn't have as much pull. That's great, man. Well, she does have a lot of pull. Her web connects all. That's right. That's true. <laughs> connects the whole world. Yes. Who forks over our hard-earned money to sit in a theater on Valentine's Day when they could have been doing anything else. He's I so mad. Here. Stop taking her agency away. The director made her movie. It's very right? misogynist of him to... Yes, it is. You should be stopped. Chris misogynism. and <laughs> Cancel Chris. <laughs> Let the woman film the pee scene if they want to, Chris. You're stifling creativity. Give sure. me the pit. Get it doing. So face. much about the filmmaker experience. Wait a minute. Wait, sorry. Wait, rewind that. Rewind what, wait, that. What? Yeah. what was that? She cares. <laughs> what? Oh, it'll make sense. Is it to retain the rights? Is it to get some kind of financial break? Potentially. And in that case, they probably don't care that much about each and every one of us who forks over our hard-earned money to sit in a theater on Valentine's Day when they could have been doing anything else. I care so much about the filmmaker experience. Any man who must say I <laughs> am the filmmaker is no true filmmaker. <laughs> I, <laughs> no. I like it. I like it. Uh, this is, the reason that this is here specifically is because I'm fucking annoyed at this point that he's said so. Like I care so much about the film experience, the filmmaker experience. He hasn't looked into what she said about her own film at all. He's made so many claims about her position in the film. He doesn't care about her. He's a liar. He's a phony. And no. yet, he will say this line over and over and over again. I care about films. I care so much about filmmaking. I care. He just keeps saying it over and it's over like and over again. It's like he's insecure about it. Should it. Be, he has to constantly should, remind us. It should be apparent in the way that you talk about these things that you care. You don't need yeah. to keep telling everybody that you care. I believe Jeremy Johns cares a shit ton about it, and I've never heard him say, boy, I sure do love movies.
<laughs> it's, yeah. Again, it's like Tywin said. <laughs> it's like he yeah. said. Anything else? I care so much about the filmmaker experience. Any man who must say I am the filmmaker is no true filmmaker. I care <laughs> so much about the filmmaker experience, and I am so aware of how crushingly difficult it can be uh -huh. to make a film. Yeah, it was about telling a great story. Oh. I felt that we'd said everything we needed to say in the film. I care so much about the filmmaker experience. Hey, you know who lives in this house? A great big phony! That's right. A phony lives here! A big fat phony! But I also care a lot about I'm real, I'm real happy with that one. Classic, yeah. classic family guy. I'm real guy. happy yeah. with that one. <laughs> That's taking it back before the show was not just... I want to know, this This is a very scuffed set of editing that I did over two days, and uh, I wasn't a call with Friggy where he was like, you know... <laughs> some, some the Justin. funny one. You put should put in the funny. The <laughs> audience, and I want people like myself who go to these movies to have a good time and to feel like they invested some of their. Dude, I had a good time watching Madam Web. I said this. I, I had yeah, a good did. Time. It was funny as fuck. Yes, absolutely funny worth the price of admission. Oh God, yes. <laughs> something that gave something back to them that inspired them in some way or or made them just happy for what were the people that were inspired by Battle web there's probably like one guy out there who's like oh yeah that, no like for some that guy like madam web will be the defining film of his life mm -hmm. and hey, what about i'm the very happy for inspiration him. what about where someone says fucking hell that was so bad i could do better and then they do it you know what this feels like though i feel like he's trying to work himself into a rage about this <laughs> like it's like he's no. trying to get himself psyched up to have a really passionate rant, but I'm not quite feeling it. And he also I he just hurt doesn't want himself to feel. He doesn't have the information <laughs> to be as pointed as he wants to be because well, he, there's so it, many it, assumptions. Well, it reminded me of that that review of the year video that you showed me of his, where it was like, "Wow, what a crazy year it's been, everyone." <laughs> And it's just like I, I don't, I don't, I don't, crazy I don't really feel the craziness coming from you, Chris. My like, God. Yeah. oh God, you know, gee whiz, guys. Do you remember when uh, in Whiplash where he's like Fletcher is getting more and more on board in the finale with uh, like because yeah. he's trying to sabotage him and then he's sort of getting into it. Do you remember that part where he he has his hand and he like lifts it up and he looks so fucking into it, like the passion of like, yeah, let's get this yeah, fucking yeah. drumming going. That is something Chris Tuck, what I don't think has ever experienced. That sense of passion, that like, mm, yeah, let's fucking talk about this. Like, eh, maybe, yeah. maybe before I, this, because I think people would have less of an issue with him if okay, if your premise is I'm not going to criticize movies that I hate, I'm just going to praise the films that I really enjoy. I mean, okay, fine, it's your choice, but like. Okay, do that in a way that actually shows us why you're passionate about these films. If there's films that really moved you and you think are fantastic, really dig down into why they work and well, the show us. Was great. And the story yeah, well, yeah, was exactly. Great. Show us how much you care and, and why why you like them. You claim to be like such a, a fan of the art of cinema. Demonstrate that because if all you're producing is like five minute videos of you in front of a webcam just reeling off production information and then given the most milk toast surface level analysis of the film what are you demonstrating there you don't seem like a person who's passionate about filmmaking yeah he does think sure. this is just the low well look at the effort that goes into the videos this is more effort goes into yes. him getting in his car and driving to the theater and back than goes into making the video because he just sits well, I there it was in that his quote, blue Ray. Room. He, he what was it he said it was something along the lines of you know our task as critics isn't as hard we just have to you know turn on the camera for like 30 minutes or you know like it only takes uh. us 30 minutes it's like it yeah, only takes very revealing about your process it takes yeah you 30, minutes. 30 minutes gives me 30 minutes to just get started well the, the funny thing is nobody knows if he meant 30 minutes spent recording 30 or minutes. 30 minutes spent on the entire thing as in 10 minutes recording 10 minutes editing 10 minutes uploading it's I mean, like, I'd, at damn, this point, dude. I'd guess that he doesn't even he doesn't edit his videos. That'd be my guess at this point. You can see cuts. Oh, but you, you mean like edits as in someone else? I mean, that someone yeah. else does it. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. maybe that's maybe. not the case. Maybe he still does it, but who knows? A couple hours, and Sony and their treatment of these characters seems to be doing the exact opposite. Currently in the industry, 
It's the Wild West when it comes to spec scripts, especially. From what I understand, a lot of spec scripts are not even being read, very rarely in fact, unless you're a very specific kind of movie or a studio is looking for something so particular that you just so happen to be that perfect thing. From what I understand, lower budget horror is still being looked at, especially haunted house things or things that are very marketable, but in you know That's what, the opposite of Wild West. You, yeah, you know what things are being looked at? <laughs> things that are very marketable. Mm. Oh, right. That's, a, damn, that's a new phenomenon right blowing. there. Oh boy. I just, I just want to make sure everyone understands the, the incredible insight of this man who's been inside the industry. The, what stuff they're interested in is in stuff that's marketable. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it like, was more of... Yeah, he just said, it's the Wild West, but nobody's reading spec scripts. What? Haunted houses. Uh, they're in. <laughs> so there, yeah, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure the Wild West metaphor really works. No. Yeah, that, that, I'm a little confused on that one. Because uh, there was a time, like in Artist Alley at Comic-Con around 2011, 2012, where Hollywood producers were optioning just comic books and throwing out, you know, five or $10,000, which is a lot to a you know up-and-coming artist, and, and buying properties left and right. <clears throat> that was the Wild West. That was the one. Yeah, it's slowing yeah, down like a scramble yeah. for for mm -hmm. stuff because yeah. everyone's just excited and they're taking every opportunity that comes their way. Like that uh, South Park joke where it's like, "Hello, the, the, Netflix yeah, the, greenlit." Yeah, this, yeah. this, this, this <laughs> over now. Yeah, this what he's describing feels more like a, a depression or a slowdown where everyone's yeah. waiting to see. Yeah, what the like next the gold rushing over. It's mm -hmm. over. All of the it's, pioneers. Oh, it's are long going over. Back. They're yeah. going back to the cities. They're leaving the frontier because they were looking for gold, and now they they're leaving. In general, the industry has no idea what it's doing right now post-strikes. They have no clue. Movies are selling for almost $20 million at festivals from first-time filmmakers. And other movies that seem like they should be selling really big because of the names that are attached aren't. Nobody knows exactly what's happening right now because every... I could tell that nobody knows exactly what's happening, Chris. I feel mm. like we've gotten a lot of that from you today. But that's, mm -hmm. you know what? There are things you can still find out pretty easily. Just saying. You want to Yep beholden to this algorithm or whatever netflix is telling them oh people okay want to see. Stop, stop, this is stop, what stop, stop uh people do know what's going on it's called contraction uh old hollywood is dying there's talks of warner brothers possibly being sold off again it's merged what a couple three times in the last four years paramount's going under so those are two of the oldest studios yeah, in hollywood yeah, yeah, and they're and they're all going to fall apart, and and Silicon Valley runs Hollywood now. Yes, that algorithm, that Netflix algorithm, rules you now. That that is your boss, that is your daddy, and uh, that people saw this coming a long time ago, and they just couldn't fight it. So they have less money. You have a lot less money. You had an opportunity over the last three years when there was some creative freedom when people were just throwing shit at the wall, and uh, you know what the the writers did? They sucked. Everything sucked. It's been the worst era of Hollywood ever. Worse than the 50s, worse than arguably the early 80s. I like the early 80s, but uh, Quentin Tarantino might argue with me on that. Uh, it's been the worst era of Hollywood ever. Plus, they have competition now. They have real competition, which is you and I uh, and, and themselves. A lot of people can now just have this endless library to go back and watch good shit. Yeah. So they're kind of fucking done. And, and you know, this is an feels... old model that needs to change and didn't. The amount of uh, sort of like you know, old legend directors and industry people that are commenting on how bad things are right now, too. Yeah. The, I mean, it'll, you know, it, it'll change and it'll be around, but there's going to be just yeah. new, new bosses. That's all. And, and fewer studios, fewer studios. And, and keep in mind that the, the three entities that will probably rule Hollywood, two of them don't even care. They're vanity projects. Amazon's a mail-in service. Apple makes phones. And if they get tired of that, they're out. Is so beholden to this algorithm or whatever Netflix is telling them people want to see. This is creating an almost robotic-like dystopian conveyor belt of movies that we are essentially supposed to kneel at the very end of, open our mouth really wide, and just consume. Where have you been? I mean, where have yeah, you been? Yeah, this is fascinating. Uh... uh... You know, guys, I just realized there's been a lot of bad movies lately, and the studios just kind of expect <laughs> us to accept it. I've just noticed this. But I won't make fun of Madam Webb.
I want to celebrate. <laughs> uh, it's ironic because guys like him are partially responsible for this conveyor yep. belt of absolute garbage because yep. they sit there mm -hmm. and blandly praise it. Like, yep. you, sir, are one of the biggest and most, well, maybe not the most influential, but one of the biggest movie critics on YouTube, and you praise movies that are garbage, and you refuse to criticize them, and you contribute to their success, and you contribute to that conveyor belt that you claim to hate so much. And how does the conveyor belt get uh, stopped if you're never going to criticize films? Which, even in right. the case of Madam Web, a film which you obviously believe is part of this conveyor belt, but you won't dare say anything about why it's bad. Well, you see, that'll make things worse? Hmm. Not sure how that works. Nope. And then ask, when do we get the next conveyor belt thing that you have generated for us from your algorithm robotic AI thing, whatever that is. Because that was really funny. Because when why I watch Matt- watch the really, Why not just watch the really good stuff and then praise that? And then if something's bad in the first episode or so, or you hear bad things, you don't have to watch the bad stuff. There's still good stuff being made by creatives. I mean, we watched, what, Silo recently, the first season of that? That's really neat. I'm excited to see the second season. We got yeah. stuff like House of the Dragon coming out. There's yeah. all sorts of things out there that are okay. full of, you know, creative, you know, decisions that are interesting and cool. And if you just want to focus on the bad, yes, yeah, I, I guess if you want to focus on the bad, you can. But there's more good stuff that I could ever possibly watch, even today. And Chris, you could be helping that if you tried a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you celebrated harder. There wasn't a single part of me that thought... And, uh, yeah, and also, like, by not... By, uh, by making decisions to say, I am not going to criticize Madam Web. You're not doing your part to steer people away from the bad content and towards the good stuff on the conveyor belts. So, like, you literally are part of the problem. And this video is part of the, ex uh, the reason why. Your algorithm robotic AI thing whatever that is. Because when I watched Madam Web, there wasn't a single part of me that thought a writer sat down and came up with the idea of the final fight happening underneath a giant neon Pepsi Cola sign. I just don't- That's not why it's bad, just to yeah. be clear. Yeah, that isn't been the really reason good. why it's bad. It could have been well, cool. It could have been. Before we make the point anyway, he's about to uh, undermine his own point. I don't think a writer uh, oh. sat in their apartment in L.A. and thought, that's a good idea. I'm pretty Sony. sure Sony said, we have to incorporate Pepsi in some way and deal with it. And that's it? That's the only limitation they had? That not is that they had to incorporate <laughs> Pepsi in so. Does not like completely undermine ideas. The, at this point, the fault lies with the writer. If they said incorporate Pepsi <laughs> and that's what you came up with, that was your fault. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I make the bad guy drink Pepsi and he has diabetes and explodes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do it. Yes. Inject it into his veins, Madam Web. Do it. Make him explode. Okay. It's just that, had he not said the second bit, we would have said, like, well, I mean, if the studio had said something like involve Pepsi, you didn't have to crush the bad guy with the Pepsi sign. That's... And why the P? Well, I did say yeah, that a lot of creatives are interested oh, in getting so their P. Oh, you can see his head through the little loop. Oh. I guess you could do that. No. Oh, you know what? I thought That's it was why. just P for Peter Parker. I don't know. That's what I was thinking. Oh, I thought but... it was P I... for Piss. <laughs> That, but, no, that's it. No, so you can see his head through the, the, the little hole is probably it, dude. Oh my god, really I didn't is. think about that. Oh no. So the little loop of <laughs> it's just see, so weird that was he... a creative decision to have the pee fall on him oh. so that you could see his little head in the he'd, loop. He'd have killed by the pee pee. <laughs> oh dude, could you it's imagine if he said that in the he's... script? If it said the pee falls on him in the script, but that you can see his head through the little hole in the pee. <laughs> so the little pee hole. <laughs> it's a strange thing for him to fix to fixate on, like because the product placement is like the least of this movie's concerns. At mm -hmm. this point, I don't like if it happens every once in a while. Like, yeah, sometimes people will drink things, and sometimes would... the logos of those drinks will face me. That just happens when it's conspicuous. Is like, eh. I think it, more conspicuous just, would have been funnier at this point with how bad the movie is. Like if she had said, "I know we can't defeat him, but by God, we can have the great taste of Pepsi like along the way." <laughs> <laughs> it's the Damn choice too. of a new generation. Yeah, and you, well, because Madame Webb's blind as well, she can take the Pepsi challenge at the end. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm Madame Webb, and even I can see why kids prefer the taste of cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you guys remember the Skittles from Shazam 2? 
Oh, oh, oh God, God, yes. With the unicorns. Oh, yeah. no. Oof. I do well, remember, remember, the, remember the Pringles from Ghostbusters 2016. Yep. She literally <laughs> says, taste the rainbow. She literally says, she says, it, yes. Sk Skittles she says are, taste the rainbow. The power of Skittles is incredibly plot relevant in Shazam 2. It saves the day. <laughs> it saves the world. <laughs> yeah. Dude, there was so much shit last year. That would have been memorable, oh right? God. That kind of bad would be memorable, and it gets lost in, in yep. last year. God. Oh, man. That's one That's one for the record books. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's like for a lot of these creatives. I just heard a story today about someone who's working with a massive entity studio. I won't say what it is, who has hired that okay. person mm -hmm. to write a story based off of a very interesting hook. He wrote the whole script, came back to them, and they said, you know what? We don't really like that hook anymore, but we still like your story. Can you make it work without the hook? And this poor writer is trying to... This poor writer, he could say no. Poor he writer. He'd be like, nope. He could say no. Yeah. Or he could say, you know what? That's an interesting challenge. You know, I'll see what I can do. That writer has a studio on the hook who wants to, you know, turn his idea into a movie. That's a lot more than most writers get. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and... poor, a poor writer who was chained to a table being paid two <laughs> shekels a day. <laughs> Well, like, what if you said, uh, so my movie is a buddy cop, but with an alien and a demon, and the uh, the alien crashes lands on, like, a world filled with demons, and the, the, they're going to be going on a buddy cop adventure. You write the full script, it's really funny, really engaging, full of great action, and then they go, can we, can we drop the, the alien and the demon thing? Can you, is there a way you can make this work with, like, because the budget for this is going to fucking skyrocket if we go to do the CG and the makeup and the world changes and stuff. And then just go fuck you! You've ruined my whole thing. It's yeah, like just make it a make it a social commentary about like maybe upper class white people and the way that the police engage with minorities in the inner city and <laughs> da 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 da. You know, it's about bright. Make it, you know, <laughs> some no. <laughs> well, in any no, case, I'm my not. point is, if their request <laughs> destroys your whole movie, then yeah, okay, back it out then, I guess. Or yeah, can you actually maintain the spirit and the heart of the whole thing you were making by altering the thing they want you to alter? You don't have to make it so the villain was crushed by the Pepsi sign. You don't have to do that. The writers are wondering why their office, why their cubicle is underneath a big Pepsi sign. <laughs> why, why, why is my office here? It's very distracting. You're like, don't, don't think about it. Don't worry about it. The pee's looking a little loose up there. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't also, be I believe the that in competent hands, the villain getting crushed by a Pepsi sign could actually be good. Mm -hmm. you could yeah, that. he could be yes. the greedy, uh, the greedy CEO of Pepsi Cola, well, who is ultimately <laughs> crushed by his greed. <laughs> yeah, yes. the, the implementation, no, 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 finds no. any idea. So, like, you can have the worst idea ever, but you can implement it with incredible skill and still turn it into something fantastic. It just comes down to the skill of the writer. A lot of people have talked about, like, if they, you know, the they've written a better movie if they made this like Final Destination, where she can see a bunch of deaths. She can't do much about it, and you can make it about free will and put some fun, you know, make it rated R and a bunch of crazy murders and tie it in. Make it a capitalism is bad analogy that Hollywood loves to do with Pepsi falling on. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> but also drink Pepsi. Um, and also drink Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a million different ways you could have probably made it good, like like a fun horror movie, but they just made it a porno movie without all the porn. Maybe the villain could be Doctor Pepper. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Coke. Whoa. Coke would have been the villain. Make for Dr. Sure. Pepper German. I have to take over the world, Mr. Pepper. <laughs> Pepper. 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 <laughs> to figure out how in the world they got hired to write a story based off of an idea and are now told to write the exact same story, but without the idea. Um, that's, I well, write whatever this... story you want, just know it's going to pay you for oh, it. They want it's... they want something specific, so it... either do it or don't. With how you described it, there's so many reasonable ways it could have happened. If your hook was actually, I... like, kind of sounded interesting, but your story was way better than the hook? I, I could I mean? say, yeah, as someone who's written novels and screenplays, yeah, ideas go through all kinds of evolutions over time. Stories change, things get added, things get taken away. This is just the nature of the business. This is yep. how it works. You know what's funny? If someone said, here's my hook, alien crash lands into like a big old jungle yeah, where okay. an operation is happening with a bunch of like army dudes who are going to be uh, saving a <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then someone says like, that does sound interesting. And then you see the completed film and you're like, maybe we should lose the spaceship landing part, even though that was kind of the hook. I, I, I feel like now, because I'm of course describing Predator, a lot of people seem to agree, and I do, that we don't need that part of the beginning. 
even though it's yeah, obviously there to make people go, ooh. Yeah. I mean, I would say that in The Thing, the one thing that I would change about the movie is to not have the opening scene be an alien ship going to Earth. Agreed. Even the, and like I said, you could it. describe both of those scenes as hooks to keep people like, oh man, I remember that alien scene, so when's that going to happen? That's going to come up at some point, right? Even though this movie's been much more normal for the next half an hour. Point being, there are re many reasonable ways this could happen. He's described it as like insane. He's like, wow, how could this possibly have happened? It's like, it, it, I don't know. All kinds Except of Except the fact that the writers said that they had this idea before Madam Web, so <laughs> so much for your hook. And that's exactly the type of situation that so many writers find themselves in. And I would not be surprised if a lot of these Sony Spider-Man universe movies have had very similar conversations bouncing around their meetings. You mean just different people who are deciding different things at different times? Yeah, that'd be crazy if those things happened. Imagine Weird. paying hundreds of millions and then wanting to have some input in the movie. That's just so nuts, man. Fucking hell. It's maddening. And it does maddening. good for no one. So what are my solutions for this? It's the same solution I've said for a couple of years now. Just let creatives do whatever they want. That'll always work. That's the best the industry can be. Sure. Because I've started to make more discussion-based videos about the industry and how we can communicate with them and get better films and start to enjoy the theater By criticizing them, more. Chris. And not yeah, just hope that like, a great film I, I like thought Godzilla according to you, Chris, one. like pretty much every film is great. You're just yeah. about celebrating films. No, there is a point now where just if you're creative, you're fine. There is no like good creators and bad creators, even though he's already said, uh, certainly implied that there are in this video alone. But obviously we know that he thinks that because he's had a whole career talking about that, but only recently has decided he's not allowed to say that anymore. One yeah. comes out also, of Japan. Uh, since, uh, since you mentioned it, I just want to give a big rest in peace to Carl Weathers here, talking about Predator and everything. So yeah, yeah, that's really to you, my good bad man. news. Rest in peace, R.I.P so that we can enjoy that here. And it's the same thing I've always said. They hear us through our wallets. If a movie comes out that is genuinely great. They also hear us through our speech where we shout about how bad they are. Yeah. I don't find yes. it funny. Part they of... hear us through our wallet, a much clunkier version of vote with your wallet. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hear us through our wallet. <laughs> you know how you can influence the bottom line on movies is by telling people not to go see them because they're bad. That's right. Avoiding the bad your, ones is using your exactly, influence. Yeah. Influencer. If if I do not go to see a movie because it's bad, that is similar to going to a good movie and spending money because it is good. Ooh. Right. But how will I know what movies to avoid, Chris Tuckman, popular-ish internet film reviewer man, if you do not tell me which ones to avoid? You should tell me where the mines are in this field so that I do not step upon them. Great, and we happen to see it in a the theater. That's fantastic. But then buy it to own on digital or buy the Blu-ray of it. Let them know. Don't like, own this it on digital. Is, I was about to say, thing. do not. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah, and what if not everyone can afford to buy every movie they think is good on physical? Sorry, that's just a reality. And then a lot of people, yep. are, the, like Chris, you got to ad address why people buy Netflix. Why do they do it? Is it offering something that they can't get other places? Maybe, it, you know, it feels like that's a much more complicated discussion than we can Value. save the industry by buying the films that Value. we like. And what if we like films that are shitty, Chris? What if I like Madam Web? What if I buy it to show my family because I think it's so fucking funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more. What if like I want to break up with my girlfriend and getting her uh, <laughs> a, a sealed <laughs> copy of Madam Web is exactly how I plan on doing that. Well, the room became hyper successful from. I, I, I guarantee you, you wouldn't push back on that. It's like, am I allowed to support that? It's like, yeah, but that wasn't studio interfered. It's like, wait. So, can creatives be criticized? Can they be bad, Chris? Tell me. And that's what we're getting with Oppenheimer. It's what we're getting with Barbie. When you see a movie where it's like, okay, that creator, Greta Gerwig, took an IP, Barbie, what about Oppenheimer? and made a completely original movie out of it. And it became yeah, the studio didn't mess with Bobby at all. Definitely. You know that oh, because... It's oh. all Greta Gerwig. The studio was present in the film as characters, no, just to be uh, clear. I, they were in the movie. I, they, I, it, you, can, you can find it online. She's talked about it in interviews. The studio basically made her like justify every aspect of the movie to them. You know, they're like, uh, do we need Ken singing a song? And she had to like explain why she thought it was necessary. So like, they're there putting the pressure on, like, explain to us why all this is necessary, why all that, why, why we have to spend this extra money on these giant sets for the dance sequence, stuff like that. So they interfered, if you want to call it that. You know, they were there the whole time going like, oh, we need to make sure all of this is necessary and important. Whether they did a good job is another thing. 
but they were involved. They didn't just say, do whatever you want. Here's a blank well, wait. check. Counterpoint. He watched the movie and liked it. So the studio didn't ruin it. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> well, okay. Fair Nailed it. Yeah. Came the highest grossing film served. of the year. And it's nominated for more. Oh, and also it made a lot of money, which is also evidence of, of something. I'm not sure. Multiple Oscars, even and though it was she nominated totally should Oscars. Yeah, that means also that the studio didn't <laughs> touch it. Nominated for director. <laughs> they hear that. They understand. All right, so IP is... They hear that her justifying all those decisions to them is something that's important when filmmaking, and therefore in future they will make sure to do that with other creatives. All right. I mean, he doesn't even know what we're supporting. He has no idea. He's yeah. just like, I like Barbie. Get that movie money. Go on. Okay, Chris. Ish, but original. Got it. And that's okay. Like, there's so many openings for filmmakers to take very original ideas into things. In an ideal, perfect industry, the filmmaker-studio relationship would be more of an understanding, loving relationship. But the problem right this now is... This is a business, that's... man. This is a business where millions, ten, well, hundreds I, I of millions be... of dollars are at stake. His view is that the loving, understanding one is I get to do whatever I want with your money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> here, here, it's it's the trade meme. Like you offer me eighty million dollars, you receive question mark question mark question mark. So many studio executives, people who are making the decisions, did not come from a place of creativity. Look, we saw what the Madam Web writer said. Okay, that was <laughs> it, that was crazy. All right, that was just nonsense. Does he, like, does he think that Lord of the Rings had no studio interference at all? Do you think? It's like, no, that was just mm. Peter Jackson. That's, that's all he did. He didn't well, to... New Line Cinema, <laughs> like what, a, a couple years before that, was responsible for making Dungeons and Dragons, right? So they probably were like, holy shit, we gotta be careful. Well, and you know, how much does studio interference come down to it has to come out at this date? And then the director says, I want more time. And they say, nah. Mm. comes out at this date and of, of course that can vary is the answer to that question of whether that's reasonable or not i mean you wasn't know, it zinemax that time. said that uh wasn't it zinemax who was like uh, you see this with games they said you know skyrim needs to be out november 11th 2011 you know 11 11 11 so you know and then that game had some uh mm. well yeah things, that's the thing things, were, were, you know it's not unreasonable that. It's not unreasonable for a company to say, we would like it done, you know, around about this time, but when it gets to the level of unreasonableness is something like with Modern Warfare 3, where we need a new Call of Duty. Yeah, but this is like DLC. It's not, we can't like, and if you want us to turn it into something that's even close to like a full game, uh, well, that's, that's all well and good, but it's coming out this year. Fucking figure it out. Like at that point, you could start going, hmm, that's probably not great. But I imagine that he wouldn't disagree with the idea that a studio can have a reasonable expectation of when a film is going to come out, or a TV show, or a game. Like, is it studio interference if the studio says, we want to have the new season of television out by September, because that's, you know, when the new season starts? Is that Again, I, I think Chris is extrapolating his experiences as an independent filmmaker, and thinking that's how it should just be for everyone, because he essentially provided the finance for that movie himself through crowdfunding and he didn't have a studio on top of him he was able to take as long as he wanted over it and he had com complete creative freedom presumably and i and wonder so he just sees like he'll see that and think well this is a great way of making movies because i get to do whatever i want i can take as long as i want and nobody's really here to question me because i'm the one that holds the purse strings for it so every movie should be like this it's like, well, in the no, because of... what you're doing isn't a business. It's just, it's not a vanity project, but it is just something that you were able to make happen yourself. That well, might different. be a vanity project, uh, especially if it is, like, if you're, if you're using uh, Chris Stuckman as an example, he sort of is in a way kind of in an unfair handicap where he already has this following of people who are going to, like, whenever a YouTuber releases something, there needs to be part of that person who understands I'm going to have a lot of people who already are very predisposed to liking the things I do and say and create. So I have to take that into account and I can't make that experience that I have as a result of that. You know, I can't project that into other people's experiences like I do with Madam Web or something like that who don't have that advantage. 
They were potentially managers or agents or people outside of the creative space in Hollywood who worked their way into a place where they're now telling creatives what to do. Yeah, they're That's not the creatives themselves, you see. They are mm. distinctly different and outside of that wonderful circle. And, be and besides, he see even if they were in the circle, they would still be like shitty creatives, probably. He seems to think that a loving, understanding relationship means the producers understand that they know absolutely nothing about storytelling and they should just let the, the filmmakers yep. do whatever they want. Mm. That's how that works, especially, you know, if Spielberg mm -hmm. is producing and he's a part of a studio, he automatically now has become the person who doesn't know anything and should leave the creative alone. There's so many producers <clears throat> that were filmmakers. There's yeah. so many of them. Yeah, and there's producers that became filmmakers, right? <laughs> actors yeah. who became directors. And I mean, you guys, covered, uh, and Star Trek, you guys covered Star Trek 4, you know, yes. Leonard Nimoy directed mm -hmm. that. So case for all of them. The case yeah, for William Shatner directed five. <laughs> well, we won't talk about that right now. We won't talk about that. Next month, drinker, next month. Yeah. And they don't have ideas. They just have... They don't have ideas. They don't have ideas. They, they don't have, have ideas. ideas. What? Even though what? somehow they have access to these hundreds of millions of dollars, yet they have no ideas. It's... How did this occur? <laughs> how is this... Even that like, one how is this insight? That one... <laughs> I was just going to say that one infamous producer who kept trying to insert like a giant mechanical spider into every movie and then John finally Peters. Got yeah. do it <laughs> yeah. with Wild Wild West. He had ideas. That man had that, ideas. Very specific That's what idea. killed Superman lives. <laughs> he was he was Barbara Streisand's hairdresser and then became a film producer. Even he John had Peters. ideas, Chris. Even he had ideas. Yeah, you mean a non-creative. Everyone's, everyone's got ideas. Hey, being a hairdresser is creative. No, okay. non-creative. I heard the the only creatives that exist are the ones that make films, all right? What to do? Barbara, That's not the Streisand. case for all of them, but it is the case for many of them. And they don't have oh, they ideas. Don't. They just have like... I just, I don't get the angle. Does he seriously think that he can get any job from like any major studio when he says things like this? Lol, he yes. says it in a nice way, and he's insightful according to everyone else. I mean, he's, he's like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I he, he is funny, a he is all. a tomato meter approved critic on Rotten Tomatoes. That's true. Yeah, he is. Tomato? Tomato. 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 Tomato approved critic on Tomato. Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> he's burning a lot potatoes. of bridges. A lot of bridges with producers being burned here in Him studio. setting anything on fire will be the most exciting thing he's ever done. Well, I guess that's what makes this video stand out, is that it is exciting in the sense of, what are you doing? Like, yeah, why yeah. do you think... What, how is this the winning strategy? This is this is very much biting the hand that feeds. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know it's what he's thinking, big fuck up. but okay. His fans are annoyed. Yeah. The fucking people who he's trying to defend being the creatives feel absolutely condescended to if they have even a remote mm -hmm. sense of dignity. And... Yeah. The producers, it's just you're sitting yeah. on them completely and, in their and, entirety, their chosen profession. And and he thought he, I'm sure he, of course he thought he had the creatives back on this one. I got you yes, back all the way on this did. one. I'm, I'm on your side. You. I'm a creative myself. He says, I'm, your, I'm your white <laughs> Tuckman. Skateboard. How do you do, my fellow creatives? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Shelby? Oaks? Inklings of what the market might want. What's selling big? What's not selling big? Well, we need to go towards this path because that movie sold really big. People are looking for this. Our Netflix algorithm is suggesting that we need to make a movie about kung fu pirates who also cook. Yes. Like, that sounds awesome. You mean One yeah. Piece yeah. that was so extremely yeah. successful? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is Pirate, he doing? What was it? We he watched Pirates it. and I an love, Adventure with Scientists. I, I loved it. That. Yeah, that's right. And they wanted yeah. to do more. They wanted to do more adventures of pirates in an adventure with crazy, bizarre, like, you would never think it. I love how he says this like it's an inherently stupid idea. I love it. It's so... If you, it's so like it's, it's business, just like these, in, businesses providing their customers with things that they want. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't this one of the most old... It's one of the oldest meme templates that we have is taking a film, not telling you what the name is, and describing it in an accurate yet amusing way to where it sounds ridiculous. And then everyone's like, oh shit, he just described Jurassic Park or Lord of the Rings or something like mm -hmm. that. It's one of the oldest yeah, that, memes that we've got. It's mm -hmm. an excellent There's template. That. And then there's just the flip side of um, this. Were, you remember in, his, in that, that notes from Melanie that one of the things that was kind of bizarre <laughs> about it was that like part of the story premise was the idea that this Melanie character was very correct for just dismissing ideas on the basis of the idea itself rather than the execution of the idea. It's a really weird attitude to have when it comes to writing because 
Yeah, like if you you could just do it's funny, right? The the Family Guy joke in South Park of just get the manatees to get a bunch of different ideas yeah. and put it in there. And it's like there's a joke there, but there's also like what happens if you just throw it to a guy, here's one thing, here's one thing, here's another thing, and we're gonna put them together and figure out if you can turn that into something. That's how a lot of ideas come up, is like, well, here's something I like. Uh, but then I can just combine it with this other thing that I also like to create something new. Or, I don't know what the book series is called, someone on chat will definitely know, but it's a book series that is predicated on the premise being a silly idea. Like, that it was a bad idea for a, a book, and that the author took it on as a challenge to write a good book on the basis of an apparently bad idea. Um... Codex Alira is what people are saying. It's just, yeah, like, to, well, I don't know. It's funny that this is One Piece. Like, that this is that character from One Piece. Yeah, it's like, what right, a, it'll uh, be like a bunch of people fucking go traveling across the world to drop a rig into a volcano. It was like, it was insane. Stupid. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> really weird that he chose something that recently did exceptionally well. I just don't really know. Yes. What mm -hmm. Also, I'm afraid Drink is going to have to uh, leave us. For Boo! The Okay. Sorry, uh, I was hoping to get through the whole video, but I just can't go that extra six hours. So well, what's funny is uh, <laughs> you're you almost... abandoned our combination of Stuckman and Madam Web. I know, you're, you're it's at a critical it. Stuckman moment. We've oh. almost gotten through the Stuckman part, we're almost to the drama part, where uh, Ooh. Ooh. explodes. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I'll, I'll be sure to watch the rest of this tomorrow. Yeah. The drama mongress herself is here, so she is. we have to check one it out. Yeah. Fucking ruined everything. It's all her fault. She ruined <laughs> film criticism with one yeah. tweet. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. And I, I, I was about to say, like, you could talk about your channel, but I mean, who in the EFAP audience doesn't know who you are right now? I don't know. Maybe one guy. Talk to that guy. Yeah, I do criticism of movies and stuff. It's on my channel, Critical Drinker. There you go. He mainly anyway, uh, targets the good video today because Thank creatives you. are immune You're to welcome. criticism, okay? Yeah. Nice. But uh, yeah, thank you for having me on for this. It's been a true pleasure, and I will catch up with some of you on Open Bar tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Catch you later, dude. Bye-bye. We will see you later. Bye-bye. Toodaloo. Ah. That he doesn't even know that her web connects. God, thank God he's gone. I know, right? Oh, well, jeez. <laughs> happening, and it sounds like a joke, but I'm, I'm swear to you, it's not. It's not a joke. We know it's not so a joke. We watched that show. It was a big know, deal. I mean, and, and also, it's funny he says like that sounds like a joke. It's like, yeah, it sounds like a pretty old joke. It sounds like Awesomeo from the episode of South Park that came out <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. twenty years ago. Of just, hmm, what about Adam Sandler? <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> You know, you know, with the success of One Piece, you there would be conversations like, do people like pirates? Do people like kung fu shit? Do people yeah. like extravagant, over the top stuff? Like, what is it? Was it the sets, the acting? Was it the writing? Was it the source material? And they're going to have all these conversations because, yeah, they want to make money. They're in the yeah, they want to make money. And like, what is chasing trends really? It's like trying to find what people want so they can give it to them. Like, what's wrong with that exactly? He's like, wow, how ridiculous. Like, mm, okay put in positions of power who want to be creative but aren't creative but they're stop saying that just just, who want just to be creative, creative, but we, we, creative we we should on studios that, more than most but we don't say this that's isn't that a crazy thing to say like surely everybody is creative in some way surely yeah. that would we would have to believe that that's the case that everybody in some way shape or form in some discipline in some way is creative and it's like, oh, well, there are people who want to be creative, but they're not. As as says I, Chris Stuckman, you know? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I'm definitely Ooh, not comfortable with calling a whole class or profession of people uncreative. That seems a little uh, oh, rude. Would I probably... Oh, man, there's got to be some, right? All of them as a whole, you know what I mean? Like, that there isn't a creative person in a whole industry or a whole... Yeah, profession. there's... I mean... Uh... I don't know. None it's just funny mind. that he can ordain that they are not creative. He can just yeah. ordain that they are incapable. Yeah. They do not have the capacity for creativity. Not even that their ideas are just kind of lame or that yeah. they're not very good at realizing their creative vision, but that they don't, that they, they are incapable of one. It's just so funny that you can say that, but you say it like this in a really boring, monotone voice, and then people don't notice that what you said was really mean. Because that's are fucking. Not creative it is. People? That's, that's my incredibly harsh action figure behind me he's very creative i've unplugged yes. the controllers from my nintendo 64 <laughs> i'm afraid of cables put in a position where they now have to tell creatives what to do 
And that's why you're seeing a lot of these things that you're seeing in film lately. Puss and the hopes are that House more... of the Dragon. Oh, he's the, oh, he talks about the bad things. Sorry. I thought he was referring to the bad. Okay. More filmmakers are able to break through with like an indie film. Look at Nolan. He was able to kind of prove himself. He took those steps. You know what I mean? In the case of a lot of these filmmakers who make their first movie as a giant studio film, the studio does not look at that filmmaker as if they are an equal. Hmm. Did, did the Spider-Verse guys did make some indie film first? Or like, how did they... Uh, I did Cloudy with a Chance of Maples. Uh, oh, I like that movie. It's not like an indie like movie, though. Yeah. It was funny. Didn't I do... And then the Lego movie, I like movie, that movie, right? Yes. So now you got, now you got a background. Uh, but I guess it's funny to say this about S.J. Clarkson since, yeah, maybe... Are you talking about Lord of Miller, 21 Jump Street, too? Oh, yeah, that's right. They did that as yeah. well. So they had a, a big... I, I guess what I'm... It's interesting that you're saying this about S.J. Clarkson when she's been directing for a long time. <laughs> like, for television, sure. But that's that's a portfolio. That's a background. That's a resume. Oh. Oh, Phil, the uh, chat saying Phil Lord did Clone High. I loved Clone High. That was great. I've not he seen seemed... Clone High, but I've heard it's really it's a good. Cartoon, bitch. I think, on MTV. Yeah, it was good. Chris Duckman seems to be saying that the only way to get, like, respect is to start indie and then do big, like, studio movies. That like he, he seems to think that if your first movie is a studio film, you can never get the respect. You can't, you can't even earn the respect. Which I With just all the movies think. and stuff, oh, that I, I think out, it's, there's got to be examples to the contrary. There must. I be. think what he's saying is that they pick these people so that they can control them. Um, which maybe there's some amount of truth to the idea of just, oh, you made one indie film, here you go, you're on a Marvel film, you're probably going to listen to the things that we tell you. Mm. Because compared to someone like Steven Spielberg, where you drop him into a Marvel movie, yeah. and they're like, do this, and be like, I'm Steven Spielberg, <laughs> I'm not doing that, well, I'll so do whatever I want. A lot of the time they hire these some of these people, you know, like when Joss Whedon gets brought on for like a uh, Snyder Cut or something, presumably they hire a lot of people because they're like can you fix this you know how things work we don't have to explain to you like how to get uh you know the right people in the right places to complete it on time that's what we want basically a bunch of horrible yeah. things like i want it this length i want it out by now and i want it to be complete go can you do that and then the the it's almost like a contractor they're like oof this house is falling apart paint job needs to be done you know you, you're missing well, all the yeah, plumbing but that, yeah we could probably I imagine get the done. contracts regarding this stuff are love crafty and monstrosities mm -hmm. so like yeah they they, they they almost want we want to go back to that time where you'd hire someone because you think they can complete the job as opposed to you hire someone and just hope for the best mm. and you don't just hope for the best when you are investing tens or hundreds of millions of dollars in something. Or at least that certainly would not be my attitude is to just hope for the best and hope my instincts picked the good ones. They look at them as if they're someone they can boss around and tell them what to do because they're paying the bills and what have you done exactly? And that's a lot. I mean, I, to yeah, be fair, they are boss, your boss. They you are paying the exactly. bills. What have you done? Why does and paying the bills not true. matter at all? I don't understand. I want to have a big you explosion. Need money. I'm going to get all these people to animate it. It's like, how are you going to pay us? It's like, pay you. No, no, you, is... no, producers. You're here to make my vision happen. That's what you're here for. I'm the, I'm the director. That's <laughs> me. I'm in charge. It is this a is risk to take a director who hasn't proven themselves yet, at least in terms of box office success, and just let them do whatever they want. It makes total sense to, like have oversight over them and make sure they're not doing anything stupid and to bot you are their boss you can boss them around that's fine yeah, you literally yeah you li you literally are their boss that's correct yes a lot of what we're seeing now so pay for movies that are good keep paying for movies that are good that's the only way what if we disagree on what makes a good movie good and what if good movies have studio interference that. well that's the big conversation is getting into chris stuckman about what makes a movie good or bad but he's not even mm -hmm. willing to have that discussion now so it's no. almost like well we, ca we can't even engage with this part of the conversation yeah, how am I supposed to fucking support movies that are good if I want to... What if I want to support Madam Web? Seems like you're saying I shouldn't. Yeah, what, what if I say, Madam Web is a really good movie. Prove me wrong, Chris. Well, I'm not going to bash films. Oh, I win. It's a well, good movie. <laughs> Go watch Madam Web. Yes, Go. don't feel like, though, Madam Webs. if you went strictly by his word as opposed to his reasoning, it's like, should I support Madam Web? And he's like, I'm not making a review of that. You're like, oh, so I shouldn't. Right, okay, gotcha. So I shouldn't. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, Chris doesn't like Madam Web. No, <laughs> Wait, no, 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 I do, no, no. I swear. <laughs>
No, I, I look. People have their opinions on Madam Web. I don't. That's that's me. I don't have an opinion on it. I can... feel not strongly one way or the other. Yeah. Turn a lot of the dial. A lot of normal people needs. are only going to see so many movies, so it really does matter that you steer them away from bad ones. I was talking mm -hmm. to some friends, and they're like, "Oh, we haven't been to a movie since maybe before the pandemic. We should go see one." I'm like, "Well, there's nothing good out right now, so maybe just wait a little longer." Yeah. <laughs> Don't we go see forget, Madam Web. Yeah, for a lot of people, for Dune. Movie, movies are a thing that they watch occasionally in between a bunch of other activities that they enjoy doing. Just like yeah. with video games, you know, not everybody is going to watch every movie. Sometimes people can't even afford to see that many movies because going to the theater, especially if you, you know, yeah, like a family going to the theater, that can be not expensive. Cheap. Yep. Yeah. No, that's cheap. a lot of what we're seeing now. So pay for movies that are good. Keep paying for movies that are good. That's the only way that we can turn the dial. Not the only way. To where it well, is. shit, he fixed well, the problem. Gosh, I stopped go, right guys. there. All right, there we go. Boys. There we go. He, he, done. he saved it's cinema. Did it. Uh, Look, at it. Look at his <laughs> smile. Look at his smile. It needs to be guys. summarized. This whole video's point is support good movies, and we'll we'll make it. Dang, okay. this is this is the kind of insight that I expect from an industry veteran like Christopher Stuckman. Oh, Guys, thank man. you so much as always for watching. I really do oh, like it, making okay. these discussion videos. I do think you that yeah, I could have fooled me. So much yeah, discussion. Well, that's the thing, right? Dude, it didn't look like you passionate, wait. and it didn't discuss shit. Okay, I learned nothing other than to support Mahler, good things. Yes, I had not watched this video because I wanted to wait to watch it for this. That was it. He just That's said, it. "Make good movies." That would no oh, support good movies. It's even worse because we don't know what the fuck good support movies are. Good movies. How do I identify them, Chris? You have to tell me what the golden tablets say. Well, it's not Madam Web, Rags. <laughs> we know that. What? I know what it's crazy. Are you saying he implied no, Madam Web no. is bad? No, people. Sub okay, people subscribe tell me to the this. Secrets, Jimmy. Yes, yes. People. Not only people. People have been defending the shit out of him as being an insightful. Like, one of the best YouTube critics that remain, because he's so honest, he has integrity, and now he has insight because he is a film maker. Unlike you lot, who, like, anyone can shit on a film. Not everyone can be a filmmaker with no insight, okay? That, that takes a fucking challenge. Look, I could go, I could go buy an iPhone and shoot a movie that looks pretty damn good. It's just, it's really accessible. I just don't wanna. Yeah, but if you do, that. you can then claim you're a filmmaker, so go, 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 go. Ah, well then I'm a filmmaker. I've made a shitty film. Yeah, Damn let's it. make that. I have I'll, I'll gather up some some boys. And we'll make a, we'll make <laughs> I just a like jackass you, movie. Just pull like cap into my house with my phone. I'm like, just hit record and go. Say you go into the market to buy some cheese, and then you do, and then we walk over there and you like fall <laughs> over, the and then credit. I say the end. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. Produced now. by and produced by A24. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, chat. I'm the same as Stanley Kubrick because I've made a <laughs> shitty film. That's right. <laughs> well, it would just be so funny from that to be like, I have a lot of insight uh, from being a filmmaker, and I I care about the filmmaker's experience. And then you show that as you I'm show like, the film, the man who fell over going for cheese. <laughs> it's a working title, okay? Yeah, I haven't decided yet. What do you mean you're criticizing a president? Have you ever led the free world? <laughs> I, was, I didn't I was think thinking so. Of exactly. Prometheus. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever died in the Amazon while researching spiders? <laughs> I did. Right. Think so. I did. I think so. <laughs> Learn more about the industry. I have a unique position to be able to discuss ways that we can make it better. Oh, oh yeah, you have. I have a filmmaker. <laughs> filmmaker. <laughs> I have unique ways of knowing how to make it better, you see. For I am a I will use my special filmmaker powers. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> and hopefully, in the end, do what we all want, is to see good movies and have fun watching them. And I did have fun watching Madam Web. Your system is broken. I did. It was. It brought me joy, Chris. I laughed out loud, unironically. I laughed out loud. Yes. We were cracking up in the theater. It was echoey because we were the only ones there. But <laughs> yeah, and I had a ton of fun making my review. God, I was, it was a, every second of that was joy. Triumph. Yes. Well, people said play it again. Maybe I will because that meme took slightly longer. Play it than again. Play it again. <laughs> I'll do it.
do it. Thank you so much as always for watching. I really do like making these discussion videos. I do think that as I learn more about the industry, I have a unique position to be able to discuss ways that we can make it better. I am, I am a filmmaker. I am a filmmaker. <laughs> Ways that we can help it, and hopefully, in the end, do what we so funny. It's so funny. It's so funny. The look on his face is just the, the guy was acting his heart out. He really he was. was. Yeah. He was. And then a few man. years later, a few I'm years an... later, it becomes a massive meme for, for who it does. knows how, but it just did. For several years, it just it was just that was it. it. Sat and people there. watched it and probably thought, yeah, that's pretty good. A An bunch untapped of gold like, vine in the mountain. Whoa, vein it's, in the it's mountain. because yes. people under the age of like 35 don't watch network television. That's why nobody had seen it who, who uses the internet. <laughs> oh, just <imagine. laughs> What we all want gold. is to see good movies and have fun watching them. And, and There you go, guys. Support good movies and see them and we have just fun. All, we just want to see good movies and have fun watching them. I mean, who could disagree with that? Yeah. Who, would ever, who would ever be mean to Christopher Stuckman? He's so mm. likable and reasonable. Feel inspired. That's what we all want, right? We want to see good movies. So yeah, okay. thank you, as always, for watching, guys. Look forward to more welcome, videos Chris. very soon. The poignant insight has changed my life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do Feature good. Pre presentation People video coming want out this good. Sunday. I'm very excited Make about it. Good. It's definitely not a fun movie, but it is an excellent movie called Grave of the Fireflies. If you've never seen it, it's a really tough watch but it's an absolutely monumental achievement that I have been wanting to talk about for many years. Guys, thank you so much. As always, look forward to more you videos very soon. You can do it soon. anytime you want. And if you like this, yeah. you can click... You're, you're, your, videos are five, he literally, your videos are 10 minutes and you've just sit in front of a he webcam. He said that. You've done that he any said, time. It takes like half an hour to make his videos. And then he says to us, oh, it's been years that I've wanted to talk about this film. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Just, just talk it. about it. Why'd you say it like that, Chris? Why'd you say that like you're being hampered by some studio? <laughs> Yeah, what have they done it. to you? Are they, are they not letting you have your PC, Chris? Don't let them do that. Click right here and get stuckmanized. Yes! By the way, you, in case you guys wanted to know, Grave of the Fireflies movie review from Chris Stuckman. Ten minutes. Oh! I nailed it! Nailed it with the ten minutes. <laughs> Uh, like I said, oh, probably he took probably him has a some whole... trailer footage in that bad boy too. Yeah, oh, that's a bit much. But, oh uh, yeah, yeah, it probably took him like half an hour to make that video. Maybe, damn. Yeah, from you know it took funny, more though? time for him to watch the movie than but it did Ryan, for him to Ryan Kennel movie. can make three videos in that time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, but I was gonna say uh, without <laughs> anyone, just don't look right. But go from this. His his. I have to talk about this Madam Web video has 615k views. How much does the Grave of the Fireflies video have? Oh, 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 oh. Um, uh, uh, 20. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, give Christopher Stuckmanizer be better than that. Uh, okay. Come 30. on, this is Grave of the Fireflies. We've wanted to talk about this for uh, years. 32. I'm going to go for 100,000. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with 85,000. Okay. Yep. I already saw it, so. Oh, never mind. Well, it is oh. 79k. Ooh, Ooh, right okay. Ooh! That's pretty good. Not bad, not bad. 10 minutes of insight, too. Well, 10 minutes... Well, I mean, well, once you get past the who does the voice acting and who directed it and what studio made it, really, it's basically... We're basically ready to go home. Yeah, well, anyway, this that was the video, right, everyone? So you got all the context now. That went to the internet, and then... And it looks like Jay Blongbo might not be here, so she can't own this, but... um. Oh, I'm she, back. Oh, she is. Oh, thank goodness. She uh, she made a huge mistake by expressing an opinion, <laughs> which we can see right here. He is so annoying. Oh my God, lol. <laughs> well, I'm just 12. like Jay Longbow. Million views. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that one got around. Jesus Christ. Jeez, you're gonna be making some. You're, is it? Does Twitter you're pay gonna, you for that shit? You're, you're gonna get some you're money gonna, for the. Hey, you're gonna, gonna make a hundred dollars. I'm gonna get a good solid five dollars. Yo, so, you can pay for next month's Twitter check mark. Yeah. But I, what I want to highlight is in that video, Chris said way more controversial, stupid, uninsightful, boneheaded, idiotic things that could easily be considered very offensive than he is annoying. Right. But, but he said it in a monotone voice. 
And so that means he yeah, didn't he say anything. Yeah, he said it without any passion. Or and insight. you said lol. That was your big mistake. Yeah. Oh, that was it. You, you and, capitalized and God. And God in all Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah you I'm God. Exactly. You should have said laugh my ass off. That's the nicer one, okay? Or maybe even <laughs> raffle. But uh, lol. <laughs> Next oof. you'll put a smiley face. No, no, she meant, no, that's like the emoji of the guy with his hands up going, Ooh, that's not lol. Oh, yeah, that guy's whooping. He's like, he's so yeah, annoying. Yeah, he's going, woohoo! Woo! Yeah, he's people yay. I hate when people rag on Chris for not <laughs> shitting on something, because he has stepped into the ring and actually made a feature film. He's actually made a movie, knows how movie, hard man. it is, and now no. clowns on the internet have turned, because he isn't just saying, he's movie He's actually bad. made a movie, so. knows how hard it is. I, you know, a lot of people don't have to make films to realize that it's hard. A lot of people don't have to actually do... The thing that they're talking about to know that it's hard. Yeah, um, because we have brains and we can hypothesize and extrapolate. Oh, well, now that I've made it, now I know it's hard. Oh, that's funny. I knew it was hard before. Oh, <laughs> and also, <laughs> also, you could actually do the thing and your experience might not be the typical experience that's, that's associated exactly with that true. thing. Exactly. So it's yeah. not unreasonable that even if you've done the thing, you walk away with a more inaccurate understanding of what the mm -hmm. typical experience is than someone who's imagining it. That's entirely possible. And then the other thing to add on to it is, yes, making movies is hard. Some people manage to make good movies despite how difficult it is. Interesting. This is what we call talent. Mm -hmm. We have seen... <laughs> In both like video form, interview form, just audio, whatever, of uh, stories about how, God, I was writing this script for like 10 years, or I, parts of the script had to be completely moved around on the fly because of how difficult it was to implement some of the ideas, redrafting, all that stuff. And it's like, all right, so you don't know anything beyond that, do you? It's like, well, I also know from just behind the scenes of how difficult like costuming can be, all the materials and the sheer volume and then getting things right and wrong making it so that the person can actually move that it's accurate to a particular request also all the concept art like the fucking reams of concept art the fun thing about like video games a lot of the time is that you would unlock concept art and you'd be like whoa this art's fucking amazing yeah. and it's just concept art imagine the amount of fucking time i've spent on this shit and then you just look at all the the vidox for halo were mentioned earlier but like a lot of games of a certain era would come with i remember god of war you'd unlock all of the behind the scenes stuff once you finished yeah, the game it was amazing the where they talk about how they work seven days a week yep. for like five months and you know it's it's the pure you know even if you don't know much about films if someone said yeah so you know they're working six days a week 12 hours a day on the shoot 12 14 16 hours a day you're just like, oh, wow, that sounds like a lot of hard work. You don't need to be there to understand that that's hard work. Yeah, and then uh, I remember just all the different like audio commentaries that I'd listened to, and they'd talk about how there was a, there was a creature in uh, Buffy Season 6 where uh, they say, like, this is so fucking awkward to shoot because it melted halfway through the scene. And so you had to have it attacking someone, but the actor it's attacking had to hold it in the shot to make it look like it was attacking him, and so the camera has to stay above his arms. You can't see that happening. And just like solving problems like that is just like, that's just funny and interesting and how much of a nightmare that would be. Um, I think the. Yeah, um, you see how they shoot pornos? Very awkward. Nightmare on Elm Very Street, the, the blood waterfall. It was like one attempt and that's all they had. They couldn't reset. They didn't have the money or the time. And I think it even broke, but that they got the shot. Like it's the kind of shit where you're just like, God, this sounds like a nightmare. And it is a nightmare. The guy we, we mentioned on a past EFAB, it was when they were doing Halloween, I think, or no, Friday the 13th, um, a guy when they were filming him getting hit in the eye with like uh, the arrow head or whatever, that he could he went blind for like uh, half a year or something. Like, the, the, you know, arguably that's not a difficult thing, that's just a horror of, of production. It's like, yeah, I was aware of all of this, and I assume all you guys were from a very young age. I never, I've never found this shocking I'm, that this is hard. Imagine working hard. on the set of Batgirl. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, you're either gonna be dead or maimed. <laughs> yes. And so <sighs> this this whole like you know you, he's so annoying. It's like oh people are mad at Chris because he's not shitting on the film. It's like he did shit on the film a lot. He did. He did. Yeah. If I mean he and also like there's more to criticizing a movie obviously than just saying that the movie's bad. Mm -hmm. Like I I I think we need to stop instantly making this connection between that's all it is just saying the movie's bad. That all criticism is supposed to be the same. No, I found him annoying. Is, oh, well, I found him annoying because he was trying so hard to pretend that he wasn't basically criticizing the film. Yeah. in his own way. Well, so there's a great irony like I, here. Like, I'm, like this movie is so bad, I won't even reference it directly. <laughs> is that bad? 
The great but irony is that positive. he used to he used to make videos, Chris, where he would be like, this line of dialogue, plays clip, is very bad because of this reason, and then talks about it. In the video we just saw, he went about as far as just saying Madam Web bad. He didn't give us any reason why. That is kind of, yeah. And so then High Top, the genius, comes in and says, you're just mad at him because he hasn't said movie bad. It's like, that's the only thing he fucking said about Madam Web. We're mad because we want him to fucking have some integrity, a backbone, talk about what's wrong with the film. Mm -hmm. Is there what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't even know critic. the... Did you even watch his video, High Top? Probably not. Probably not. He's one of the only critics on YouTube who manages to have an informed, meaningful opinion on something <laughs> without being mean for clicks. He was not informed. <laughs> he was definitively oh, wrong on several cool. claims. He's not meaningful. Just because he's a filmmaker doesn't automatically mean everything he has to say is better than everyone else. I mean, so they wouldn't give the... I mean, they wouldn't say this about the people who made Lady Ballers and stuff like that. I'm just saying, this, they wouldn't. True, oh, no. Yeah. You don't know how hard it was for Daily Wire to make that movie. <laughs> we get it. You're also trying to break into the film industry and will also go out of your way to not criticize Hollywood people you might want to work with. Uh, and also, and also, <laughs> it's just... our, our God, our King, he's there. Oh, look at his smiling face. Uh, a critic who isn't willing. I, 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 again, it's like you shit. You shit on Warner Brothers. Do you think that you're gonna like? Do you think that you're gonna get to make like a, a DC film ever? Do you think that's on the cards? I'm sure it is. He will personally In bring his own red and blue lights. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's true. They'll be so impressed by the red and blue lights that they'll just they they'll have no choice <laughs> but to let him direct a new Batman movie. Oh jeez. Yeah, but out of curiosity, do you agree or disagree with this statement from Elden Guy? A critic who isn't willing to hurt feelings isn't a real critic. Um, I agree. I, willing I the, to willing doesn't people, mean you're going out of your way. To, yeah, 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 that's yeah. I agree. Yeah, I I, I agree. You if you are not willing, willing to, to hurt a critic who isn't worried about hurting feelings, I would say. I don't know about yeah. willing. I think yeah, I'm, 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 I'm even okay with someone being worried about it, but that they still do it. As in, like, yeah, we'll I'm not, I don't it. want someone to feel awful, but I've got to say what I've got to say. You know, that sort of aspect. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I Chris do want to Chris could have gone out of his way to say, look, this movie is really bad. We don't know if it was the studio or the writers. We don't know who to blame, but we can just assess it for what it is. It's really bad. He could make sure people aren't blaming the writers because they don't necessarily know if the studio interfered. You know, he could take that tack if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. ...to hurt feelings isn't a real critic. Hard disagree, my guy. If people don't like your movie, <laughs> your feelings are already hurt. No if people um, don't like your movie, your feelings uh, already hurt. Now that is a uh, self-report. Okay. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, man. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Oh, oh. So, uh, Ryan Go Johnson has famously sure. said he wants people to dislike his films, so... Yes. And... And we don't even have to go to people who aren't, you know, in this call. Like, we are all creatives in our own way. It is fine. Our EFAP isn't for everyone. My videos and Mahler's videos and everyone here who makes videos, they're, they're not for everyone. And, and, and they don't, I'm not going to, my feelings aren't going to be hurt if someone says, you know, I, I tuned into EFAP, it wasn't my thing, and I didn't like it. My yeah. feelings yeah. won't be hurt. I'm not Oops. eight. I'll make it. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get through the next day. Um, but it, it, interesting how the, the guy said, willing, and then look what High Top says next. No need for film criticism itself to be harmful and mean. This is Not coming from a I guy said. who made spiteful videos in the past, but then tried making movies. Who said anything about spiteful, mean, and harmful? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just because Damn. you made spiteful videos doesn't mean that anybody who's ever been negative had a spite-driven motivation. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do they think we're gonna do? Like, dox the fucking director in our video? Again, right. like, yeah, this is our fucking address. Go to fuck up. This is windows. where he lives. <laughs> well, and, then, yeah. and then he does the exact same think. thing as Chris, where Tag it's like graffiti on their walls. Pat, pats our head and is like, oh, I used to be like you, but then I grew up, and it's like. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. That's pretty funny. Yeah. And it's just so funny that I tried making movies that I realized how hard it was. Why do people not understand that it was hard before they started making films? I don't films? know. I don't get it. How do you not understand? I don't know how to, like, I don't know how to build a skyscraper, but my guess would be that it's pretty difficult. <laughs> and that's, like, well, there you are don't some need things to, that might you know, I'm not a Michelin you. star chef. I can't cook a Michelin star meal, but I can look at it and go, you know what? There's probably a lot that went into that that I can't do that's really difficult. 
doesn't make the meal good. You know, you still the meal well, it might doesn't make still it by suck. default. Yeah, yeah I still yeah. expect it to be good. Lots of things are difficult, but that doesn't change the fact that people have expectations of functionality and quality. Making video games is hard, but if you release a video game that's unplayable or that bricks your PC, you know, what are you going to say to someone? Like, oh, well, it was really hard. Oh, okay. you worked really hard. <laughs> you still delivered this <laughs> bug filled game. I'm sure, they the worked hard on Gollum. Is... Oh, yeah, what I is mean, this trivial? Was. Yeah. Saying that a director or actor did a bad job is going to hurt some feelings. If you're incapable of saying those things, you shouldn't be a critic. Yep. True. True. Yep. True. yep. 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 This I, is. I, I, I said that S.J. Clarkson shouldn't be allowed within 100 yards of a camera for the rest <laughs> of her life. And I stand by it. Truly, how every <laughs> professional reviewer should be. Then how come you're not oh, adopting God. the style, oh, no. Brown Table, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, interesting. Hmm. If you, if you truly believe this, Stephen. yeah, start doing what he does. No more negativity. None. Only and celebrate. And we're just going to... Never. We're just no going to not talk about bad about, movies? Uh, well, Is that what... it, it's just... It's just funny how every professional reviewer should say nothing, basically. Well, no. Other than these <laughs> he really said literally. Insane... Oh, yeah, yeah, literally. He yes, said literally right. every literally. professional reviewer mm -hmm. should not cover things that are bad or negative. If if it's bad, if it comes up, like guys, I I think somewhere along the way, some of you people lost the fucking plot. All right, these are not like gifts given to us for the human culture or whatever. These are products I have to pay movie tickets to go see. I'm taking time out of my life. I'm going to a theater. I'm going to a place I'd rather not be. I'm buying a ticket. I'm exchanging money for watching this film. It is a product. All right, it, this isn't a gift. That I'm just supposed to accept and smile at. This is, we have a the movie studios and myself. We have a what was called a transactional relationship. All right. We Our also opinion. talk about how like mean and spiteful Chris is towards film studios. Like in yeah, the, yeah and, they're, they're, no, not they're not people. They're not human. He's very he's negative. Have no capacity for creativity. That's what I mean. How many of the forty three thousand people who like this watch the video? Well, and even if they did, they probably, they, no offense to them, but I don't even know that they know that that's a harsh thing to say. I think they'd be like, well, yeah, but they're studios. They're reptiles. Yeah, that's right. They're studios and producers are not people. <laughs> and they have no capacity for creativity. That's true. His video is incredibly negative, just not at artists. All right? But it's like, trying to be positive. And I guess it, that fooled it, all of these simpletons. It, it, I, think, I think it is just as simple as if you say it in a tone of voice that people don't register as being harsh, you can get away with saying a lot. You really can, um, yeah. compared to if you just, you know, it, it'd be like if someone can say calmly this incredibly scathing takedown of someone's character, but mm -hmm. someone can say fuck, and they'll be like, oh, wow, ooh, wow, calm down, oh, jeez, you said a swear word, that's, oh, gee. It, it does seem to just be the way that it works with, like, communication for some reason. It's that coupled with, like, weaselly words he uses a lot, mm -hmm. where, like, I'm not saying this, or people are saying, you know, all this sort of dancing around it making it as passive aggressive as possible. Yep. There is PPL. I, wa I wonder if there is this connection PP. that has been made maybe subconsciously in in this 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 sort of collective way. It's a little difficult for me to kind of put it into words, but maybe maybe you'll pick it up as I go, right? A lot of these people, the high tops is the brown tables, the stuckmans for I mean cosmonauts, all the people that we cover, right? Typically. They have been eating this stuff up giving it a pass for years are the Mar marvel slop all the this all the that given passes to these sorts of things and so i wonder if that in a way has bled into them having a kind of incidental developed culture of reacting negatively to those who react negatively to these terrible movies and it's created this almost divisive split um, in the, in this online these online groups of cultures, As and I is, wonder if this is just sort of the next step of that happening, where now they're just being open and saying, but with Brown Table, you use the word literally, like this is what we should be a film critic. You shouldn't criticize a film critic, and a film critic should not have negative criticism for these things, for the movies. It all needs to be positive, in the same way that they were always positive, way overly positive for the years of crap that they've been you know given by disney in particular who's had such a big dominance in the industry um, they definitely have drawn a line in the they've thrown all of us in the same section pretty much of like 
you're all the, 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 the there's one in here about how Gary among others has destroyed film criticism which I find so funny <laughs> oh, that's why we uh, invited him on so we can way get to go Gary tips and tricks. yes yeah thanks Gary tricks and tips Sorry. Look, at, look, look at you looking into interviews, reading articles, taking people for their word, taking creatives for what they say about their work. What's wrong with you? Fucking I don't idiot. know. <laughs> I don't, I don't I'm know. not celebrating just, enough. Not to, not to keep talking about how great old school Bungie was, but there's so many Dude. instances where the developers were talking about how, you know, like, nobody, nobody cares, you know, we, we can't just go, like, everybody's expecting it to be this good. We have to make it this good because everybody's expecting it and good enough isn't good enough and all of these kinds of um, attitudes that are conducive to working really hard and trying to deliver the best thing possible rather than, like, well, we tried really hard R rather than, like, well, no, everybody here is working really hard to, like, meet the standard and expectation that people have. Just seems like a better attitude to have. Rather than like whenever anybody has anything negative to say, it's just like leave me alone. It's like, well, I don't know, man. Like when you when you create stuff and throw it out there to the world, like you, people are gonna have a perspective on it. They will. You just gotta get over it. This is and literally... maybe they have something to say that's actually you know accurate that is like worth taking on board. How every professional reviewer should be. PPL that are approved reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes should have this vibe IMO, goes double for Stuckman as he's further involved in the filmmaking process. Also, yeah. everyone knows Madam Web is bad. Let's have one video on the internet talking about it differently. It's no big deal. He just okay. agreed so this... that we shouldn't bash the film, just like Chris, and then he bashes the film. And also, <laughs> what? you want you want to turn you want to turn internet reviews into a cabal circle jerk? And then the first sentence: people that are approved reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes should have this vibe, in my opinion. Just be positive. Just don't review things that uh, if you if you watch something and it's negative, you know, maybe don't post that review to Rotten Tomatoes. Maybe just don't tell people that the movie was terrible, that the plot didn't make sense, that the themes are disgusting, that the characters are retarded. Don't no don't say any of this stuff. Just Keep your mouth shut, right? We're trying to be positive here. And that means that people who go on to Rotten Tomatoes to decide what they're going to watch on Valentine's Day alone or on a weekend or anything else like that, it's going to be nothing but, oh, every movie's apparently great because all the critics are only leaving positive reviews on all these movies. They must all be incredible. Good job, Brown Table. That'll save the air. I, again, it, it's just funny. Every, the conclusion of the video is it's the studio's film, not the creator's. Don't shit on the studio's film. Like, you know what I mean? If you yeah. don't believe that they're accountable for the film, then who cares if you shit on it? You're shitting on the work of the apparently non-creative people, right? So it's chill. Right. But it's like you said, Mola, the more fundamental thing is, he says that the film is bad. <laughs> like, he well, says it right there. Yeah. What's funny, too, is that he thinks that the issue is we don't like that Chris isn't calling it bad, when he did several times. Nobody saw this fucking mm -hmm. video, did they? No. No, they didn't. It's like, it's no big deal that he has a video that talks about Madam Web in a different way. It's like, what are you to- Now you've gone to a point where you think Jay Longbone's mad that he talked about stuff different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's, that's it. As some people haven't seen the whole video, which is fine. Instead of solely criticizing Madam Web, he- You just said- that everyone knows Madam Web is bad. Let's have one video talking about it differently. And then you said, if you haven't seen the video, instead of solely criticizing Madam Web. This is pretty funny. This doesn't make any fucking about... sense. Expands <laughs> and criticizes Sony the company and the industry as a whole. Like how when Marvel VFX and- Yes, like everyone does. Why are you talking about this like it's some new thing? This is another thing, I, I can't blames the stand studio. this narrative. Everybody... All of us talk about the studios all the time. Why are we pretending like it's that's something people don't do? It's, it's the same when it comes to video games. Everybody shits on fucking EA. That's not like a new thing. Everybody shits on EA and Activision. Oh yeah, um, and they catch unfair and, and then, flack. Well, yeah, because then it became the new thing of, oh, maybe Bioware just made some bad decisions on this video game. Maybe Rocksteady made some bad decisions on this video game. You know, like maybe, maybe it wasn't the studio's fault exclusively. Maybe it wasn't even the studio's fault principally. I mean, the the publisher in certain cases ends up looking whack instead of critiquing the artists. You critique the studio. How about both? Like everybody. that's a uh, first off. That's not a great example because we have a lot of examples and testimonies of how the workers were literally just not given the time to do their jobs. Yeah. So. 
Also, yeah, this is the thing. How about both dot 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 based on context? When we know um, who's at fault. It doesn't change the fact that you people still shit on the end product. People still shit on the visual effects that end up on the screen. Hasn't he made videos like talking about how like Marvel visual effects suck? Yeah, but he would he would he may very well say like it's only sucking because of the fact that they haven't been given the time they need, which may very well be true. Okay, what I'm but, just trying to point but, out but is then that. Then why didn't Chris just do the video where he said, "Yeah, Madam Web is shit, and here's all the reasons why." Studio's fault. Bye. Why didn't he do that? <laughs> well, according to Brown Table, he did. He said he didn't solely criticize Madam Web. He expands and criticizes the company and the industry as a whole. And it's like, okay, like I said, these three tweets have different opinions. Did he? Yeah. Y yes. While clearly I don't think there's anything inherently negative or mean about telling people your honest opinion of a movie, why do we have to get on Chris Case here? He's explaining exactly why he doesn't want to do it. He did do it. We gotta respect his it. decision. He literally did no, do he's it. No, he's being a snake. Whether he even knows it or not is... I'm not sure. He doesn't strike me as a bright lad. But he's doing the thing. I'm sorry that you are so simple-minded that it escaped you. It literally must be like you're living in a different world than the rest of us. This explains Ryan Johnson fans. How about we don't? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 was, that was a good edit. I forgot it was in there, okay? This is the last thing he said. <laughs> why do we have to get on Chris Case here? He's explaining exactly why he doesn't want to do it. We gotta respect his decision. How about we don't? <laughs> I'll say it's also definitely different if you are telling people specifically that you don't believe a certain movie is worth their time or money. A night at the movies isn't something the average person does once a week, so I think those opinions are valuable. Why wouldn't it be worth my time or money? Why would I I'm say, you know what, Fellowship of the Ring, that's worth your time and money to go see in the theater. Is Madam Web worth your? I, well, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's worth well, your it's time pretty or your funny, money. You know? In, in in Chris's video, who wants to have it be where he didn't tell anybody Madam Web shit and you shouldn't watch it, but the whole point of the video is it's shit. Uh, I am for, not going know, to tell you how bad reasons. and terrible this movie is. And and then end on, well, yeah, go spend money on the films that you like, which everything that I've said in my video would heavily indicate that Madam Web is not that film. These are the videos that this guy makes. Fucking loser. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> what is MPU? And I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm telling you, I stand by that King thumbnail. Oh my god, the symmetry. The symmetry like between the top two is perfect. Dude, this oh is so mad at you. 21k likes of him just saying, fuck this guy. <laughs> fuck this hell? guy. Fuck they this don't guy. Like Echo. They don't like uh, Rachel Zegler's retarded comments. The they don't like the King woman reaction. king, one of the worst movies I've seen in the last couple of years. Fuck that movie. Why doesn't she like these movies? Unbelievable. Fucking loot. This person's a fucking loser based off of them not liking. Well, you I said know. he was annoying. King is 100 you said he was annoying. Tomatoes. You stepped too like far. Him. You called him annoying. Annoying. Not really. Although I think it's fairly easy to give credit oh, to filmmakers' efforts and the hurdles <laughs> they have to jump it. while remaining. To be fair, he's one of the more reasonable ones. In critical. The social mm. media landscape seems to favor negativity, so it breeds a lot of mindless movie bashing. I do think it's important for us to keep filmmakers' efforts in mind when reviewing even the worst films. I do think refraining from saying a bad movie is bad, while still implying it is for the- Thank God somebody's gotten there, you know? He's like, he did imply it's no. bad. It's like, thank you. The sake of the filmmaker's feelings or your career prospects is a bit cowardly, Ooh, or a bro. smart business decision on his part. Who knows? I I'm just a dumb you put a question mark there, because it was not smart. Shitting on producers is not smart if you want to work in Hollywood. No. Yep, Juba, which far is removed. Yep. what they're gonna pick up, because they have brains from the industry this is a layered discussion not suitable for twitter anyway if no uh, i mean you can I be mean, you can uh, you can be not retarded on twitter <laughs> it's possible <laughs> it's possible twitter, twitter trolls oh, it's were like guy. chris and actually learned how hard it is to make a movie instead of just crying about them from your mom's basement oh, you two would make know. videos it's like so this boring one. it's so boring boring is what this is <laughs> Ha, <laughs> uh, you're a loser. Ha, uh, mom's basement. How boring is that? How boring are you? Like, is this the best you can do? The reason we make fun of movie mom for living. Yes. I mean, 
the reason we make fun of Movie Bob for the parents' basement thing is because he admitted it. He lives in a basement apartment. Like, when he stacks up his cans by the window. It's and then he gets, like, he tweets about how frustrated he is that a gust of wind knocks them over. It's like, oh. <laughs> Opening the window is the closest thing he gets to going outside. Man, give him, just cut him some slack. I suppose the irony here is that it's always about the context of those things. Because you could live in a basement and it's chill. You could live with your parents and it's chill. More so yeah, just a... I like those uh, well, underground spaces. Because, I think they're cozy. Uh, over, over in Australia, like I, I kind of have a really favorable view of basements because they're so novel to me. Nobody has basements. Nobody has basements so, in Australia. Yeah, have we don't in Texas either. But uh, Joe Russo just insulted every nerd, whether yeah. it's intentional or not. That's what he did. It's the same old mm. fucking tired argument. By the way, go go to his website. A lot of people confuse him as one of the Russo brothers. Maybe that's why he gets <laughs> trashing on fucking Twitter. He's not. And you go see the three films he made and go see what he looks like. So oh, that's true. I need to change my last name to Nerdrotic. There you go. <laughs> Frag's Nerdrotic. Yeah, work. he sure. uh, he didn't even. Have, it's no argument. It's just the. It's what High Top did. It's what Chris did. It's like if if only you Me. knew. You're not you're not grown up enough. If only you knew. And it's like I already knew. Yeah. What got, took He's you guys trying. so long? Why, yep. why if you did were you a have film... to make a film to know that it was difficult to make a film when it's obviously yeah. difficult to make a film? Like, duh, also we all know that. Excuse... We should know that. You know, it also you doesn't excuse be... your shitty work. You no, know, it's fucking difficult yeah. going to work and making money and then paying money for your fucking shitty film. That's difficult, too. Well, yeah, yeah so... I mean, it, it does feel True. like a matter of perspective, doesn't it? You know what's yeah. hard? Working in fast food, working in retail. Yeah, that's, that's hard. fucking And most exactly. people get paid a lot less money, and when they screw up, they lose their jobs. But it's like, like, meanwhile, God forbid. These fools are rolled out of their fucking art school that their parents fucking paid for. It d don't have any concept of work. I worked hard. It was like three hours. My God. I couldn't look at my phone. Fuck mm -hmm. off. I will say a prayer for all of the lost souls who descend into the make-believe minds to make pretend. Okay, how could you? I could. I could and I will. Well, the better part of this is he does clap back, Gary. Are you ready? Because I got to edit. Really I'm well. ready, baby. Here we go. Shut up. Like BTCH. Oh, I'm, I'm served. Oh, I have been served. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm no, going to roll it back. That's my clip, damn it. <laughs> you'll, you'll, like, you'll like the edit, Gary. You specifically. Make believe minds to make pretend. Shut up. B-T-C-H. <laughs> Imagine being this guy. This blame the writer thing is bonkers. Do trolls have jobs with bosses? Are those bosses infallible? Why are we blaming creative? Nobody said the bosses were infallible. You're making this shit up. Yes. Look at this man. Look at, look at the picture. Look at the Photograph that's Power been presented Rangers. to you. The writer well, plus, of this look, all that the guy <laughs> said was, "Imagine being this guy." It's a question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's so, just it, it's encouraging you to engage in a little bit of exactly. you know Speculate. imaginative you know, speculation. Yeah. You know, it's the American dream. You can be a shitty writer and make like multiple movies and make money off it. Why are we blaming creatives and not executive meddling? One, because we don't have any evidence of executive meddling. And two, because he's never written anything good ever. And three, That's why, why I told both? you earlier, this why guy's just got both? terrible why luck. Every time, every time this guy, every time Matt Suzama writes a banger film, those pesky studios, <laughs> they just have to get involved and get their fingers into his golden story. This man, they're, they're holding us back from the modern day Tolkien, is what they're doing. Yes, they Matt are. Matt Suzama. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to see what Morbius was before the studio. <laughs> and they keep hiring him and keeps agreeing to do it, even though they bastardize his vision every time. He's like, yeah, yeah I'll keep coming back. He's just, he, you know, uh, what 95% of studio writers quit before their first creative endeavor is successful. Yeah. And not executive meddling. I've read Matt's writing on two of these. It's good and not what's on screen. Don't he keeps you. working don't because he's great. Either. Listen, I Matt, don't believe Sazama's you. Don't not gonna me. fuck you. Okay, it's not gonna. <laughs> no matter how much oh, you say, he'll Morbius fuck your is movie. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean that every writer is gonna be great. Two of the writers of Madam Web worked on another film in the Sony universe. Yeah, that's that right. Did been... you watch the video, pal? Obviously, this clip highlights <laughs> that not this? in his defense of Chris, he's disagreed with him. Chris has made fun of Matt Sazama right. for writing Morbius. So, rip. Yeah. Really criticized, called Morbius. Chris Stuckman hate is so fascinating because he's literally just some chill guy who likes movies. And there Says you have a lot it, about how... That's, no, why, that's, that's why everyone's mad. Yeah. Yeah. 
because nobody That's understands right anything there. that Chris has said. He's just said it yeah, in a nice right. way. That's you right. Don't actually it in the nice it. way possible. It really is like a, it is like a way that you can just get away with saying a lot more things if you just say it in a flat or nicer tone of voice. It's incredible. It's stunning. It's fascinating. It does fascinate me that that's the way that it works. Unassailable, yeah. Chris Stuckman hate is so fascinating because he's literally just some chill guy who likes movies. Says a lot about how much people just want to go for the quick, angry, and loud responses now that when a critic is breaking down a movie with nuance. There <laughs> was no fucking nuance in that video. <laughs> trying to explain how hard it is to make nuance. something and studio. I know. Interference. No it's nuance. so annoying. Every critic should be like him. No. <laughs> and no. none of you, none no. of you are going to change your operation to match his. None of you. Mm -hmm. nope. He just said it sucks in far harsher a way than he realizes. Yep. This shit is so bad I can't cover it. True. <laughs> so true. Correct. Totally true. Thank you. Completely true. No. What's annoying is the fact that YouTubers like The Quartering, Nerdrotic, and G plus G have ruined film criticism so much, they forgot what a real critic looks like. Yeah, Chris Stuckman, the okay? Does even fucking review movies? I don't even know. Yeah, The Quartering, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, The Quartering doesn't review movies. Chris Gary, Stuckman repent. is the only mature- Repent for your crimes. You've destroyed I will. Film. Look at you. I your am. adult in the- Oh no. I don't know how you, you call should... Chris Stuckman's video mature at all. It's so childish. It, it, it is it's like childish. It's mature expects, to a nine-year-old. He expects movie studios to be charities for artists. Mm -hmm. That's what he expects from them. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Make-A-Wish foundation for a filmmaker. <laughs> it is. It is. Oh the my room. god. You should be more no, like it's... him, Gary. You know, no. And and nobody should be like me or you. We should all have our own voice and yeah. do this thing called tell the truth. Mm -hmm. The reason Mahler is here and Jay, everybody is here is because of people like Stuckman and the, and the corporate critics who went out there and they were bullshitting us for all this time. We just said, oh, shit, well, I can I could go out there and I'll try something different. I'll just tell people how I feel. Well, and we never thought and that it, we would have a significant leg up on them by Googling the creators no. of the fucking films. But we no, do. No, I mean, like, simple. Uh, yeah, it's not like we're, it, we're, uh, it's not rocket science here, folks. It's seriously, uh, you, you can just <laughs> be like more informed by reading a Wikipedia article. You can, you can just read a Wikipedia yeah. article and then know more exactly. about people who present themselves as authorities on a lot of subjects. It's incredible. For Madam Webb, I, I, I did sit through two hours of interviews. But it was fun. It was funny for one. It was, and I find it entertaining. But yeah, I sat through t t two hours of clips of interviews you know, before I even started. What's funny is um, when I did the research and like development portion of the script for the TFA series, I, I think I made my requirement. I can't remember now because it was so long ago. But I think it was between ten and twenty interviews per actor and crew member, as in like a writer or director. Which in that case, I guess would have been like two. Was it Lawrence Kasdan and J.J. Abrams? I think, but. In any case, uh, pe people of significance behind the film. Um, the amount of shit I found was insane. You guys have seen lots of it, um, but there's still loads to come, like of funny things that I've found. It's all in the script, waiting to be seen, because it's all out there. It's just like what was being discussed earlier about The Good Doctor. Nobody knew about the other funny clips, because nobody watched the yeah. show. And they started sharing them on Twitter, because some people were like, I'm going to go through this show and find them. And my god, there were some funny moments from that show, well beyond that one major clip. But yes, mm -hmm. loads have come to come. Loads, lo lo loads to come, that's what I meant. Lo loads have come to come? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My two cents. This is what happens when film critics experience how difficult filmmaking is. At least that's a slightly different bit of wording. They experience it instead of just knowing it. Yes, which is a difference. There's, there is a difference. There is there, a difference, sure. yeah. Between what I like basically could safely say I know to be true. Uh, and I suppose actually mm -hmm. having that confirmed doubly so by doing it in myself. In much the same yeah. way that somebody can understand that animation is difficult in that drawing several pictures that are going to be playing out every second and then you balloon that out of course, uh, over the course of an entire film, you can understand that as difficult uh, before being forced to sit down and actually do it for yourself and then see how long it takes and how difficult it can be. Well, and be. then you want to pose it's, the question. Uh, we have two people with the same budget, same interference from the studio, same film to make, same script to work from. They're both the director. They both go. One of them produces absolute shit and one of them produces something amazing. So are yep. they both the same quality of director? Or is one better than the other? I mean, one of them has succeeded because that's 
it, it's so funny how like you know the whole conversation ignores okay maybe these are your circumstances but what are you gonna do are you gonna constantly complain about the circumstances or are you gonna try and solve the problem are you gonna try and do the best that you can in the circumstances that you find yourself in like well, you can't just you can't just ask for the universe itself to bend to your will to create a circumstance that you would prefer. This is Give it. Give me everything what I need and do? all the time to do it and make it easy as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> film critics experience how difficult filmmaking is. I'm not gonna bash on the filmmakers and actors personally for how Madam Web turned out. Twitter. But they made KSKSKSK he's so annoying STFU. Like WTF I don't get it loudly crying loudly crying loudly crying loudly crying loudly crying. He didn't say shit wrong WTF loudly Guarantee this person has barely any clue who Chris is or the video is. He crying loudly crying loudly crying. He's actually trying to be respectful to the filmmaker while being critical of- He was not. He didn't care anything about her experience. He demonstrated an astounding lack of respect for the director. And yet he believed that she had no autonomy. Yeah, yeah, painted her as, as a helpless victim who had no input or say whatsoever in the film. She said, uh, like in total with all those clips, I think it, even more in the article I didn't include, but uh, that everything that she had done in her life led to the moment of making this film. That she Remember, she described it as a leap. She said it gave me the foundation from which to leap. Does that sound like the kind of wording yep. you use for something that you didn't have control over in any way and uh, yep. like ashamed of? Yep. She said that uh, she wanted to get a timeless quality to the film to avoid people knowing exactly when it took place, right? Like, like she worked with the sets and the props to make sure that we wouldn't be able to nail down an exact day and time. That's something that she intended, something she had control over. Uh, oh yeah, there was a quote where she said, um, the, you know you, you know her mum, the, the, the Madam Webb's mum? I forget if she ha even had a name. Uh, she's the heart of the movie, and without her and without her story, you don't fully understand who Madam Webb is. That's something she said. And then she was so proud yeah. to have the actress available to do it because she was like amazing. Um, she obviously talked about the the stuff in camera, the clairvoyance, all that shit. Well, the... and I remember I vaguely recall the the where Dakota Johnson said, "Oh, I put so much faith in her, you know that that she was making the right decisions." Why didn't she say, I put so much faith in Abby Arad if he was involved in producing the mm, film? Yeah. Was he? Is the editing, the, the, how she had to do the repeated scenes, the, she, she actually said at one point as well that um, she took a lot of inspiration, right? She wanted to include a lot in this film. And she had like a list of films that she mentioned for all of the influences. She complimented um, working in Boston as well. Or like, um, th th there was, there was like a Boston shooting. Yeah, making, Boston is beautiful. She tried to make the place look like Boston, right? Like, you have to film it to make it look like that. And she said that, difficult, but a reality, you know? Like, not, she wasn't mm -hmm. saying it like, oh, it was fucking miserable to have to do all that. And then the fact that she said it was a, she, she said she try, she was going to tell a great story, and that everything she felt she needed to say was in the film. This is all her experience. He said he cares about the experience uh, of the filmmaker. So he didn't look into it either, at all. Either, either she is lying, or Chris is wrong. I think he'd have to admit he's wrong. That's just I, not a question that he would ever lying. address. I, I don't think she's lying. I Maybe there are aspects of downplaying possible negative experiences as you do when you're promoting a film, but I don't get the impression that there is like 0% of her on this film, or even that there's only 25%. I get the impression that there's more of her on this film than there is of a lot of Marvel directors, you know, doing MCU films have on, on their films. I get the same impression, yeah. And this is the thing, this, this is not respect. Uh, it is more respectful to say, you tried really hard and you failed. Yep. Or I mean, that's how every, like, mentor-student, you know, story kind of starts, where you have the, the harsh mentor who tells the student what they need to hear in order to improve. Yeah, you have Yoda bonking uh, Luke on the head, and just being like, no, you know? That was TLJ. There is no try. <laughs> that shitty like, movie you have made! He, he, he bonked him <laughs> once in, uh, in Empire, didn't he? Oh, I meant as I hate the ghost bonk. It's just that's all I'm saying. Oh, sure, but but he bonked his head in Empire, didn't he? At least once. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, he hit yeah, him with a stick. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. You know what it made me think of was um, Pai Mei in Kill Bill, where he bonks her on the on the head as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, good yeah. shit. 
environment it was made it this is far more valuable this is what actual oh, novice like a lie this is which is what it was actual analysis Jesus okay, Christ. Well, i can't mm. like i said I, I i don't like using the word lie because there's so much uh, intent tied to it but like saying it's really valuable to be told something about the creator that's not true I just, you know, it's like, what's what the fucking yeah. value in that? ...analysis looks mm. like. Not the clickbait reactionary stuff that permeates YouTube. Uh -huh. I have not oh, watched this video movie. yet, and I can already tell you that this man has a more sincere and informed <laughs> passion for this film. not watched this video yet! <laughs> <laughs> This is what they all are doing. Oh, shit. No one fucking watched it. The 99% of it, but this website. They want to jump in on the feeding frenzy. Yeah, because it, at this point, this video, it's, but I will suck this man's cock. Right at now. this point, it's Chris <laughs> versus the bad reviewers. All the evil reviewers are going after Chris. You got to stop them. Harder. Yeah. Including myself. My film should be coming out next year. Uh, it's submitted to various festivals, and we've been able to finally complete our ADR, which is great. Passion. And so we <laughs> are just about done with it. I mean, there's just like random little passion. color corrections and things that we might have. Obviously, the person said that he's very passionate filmmaker, and I just like this clip was like, I don't feel, I'm not feeling the passion about you guys. Just here and there, but it's like 99.9% .9 done now. It's like a movie. It's real. Passion. And I can't wait to share it with you. You guys passion and passion what that journey will be like uh and as always i'll be here with you passion uh, sharing that journey it's <laughs> been fun to be able to share these moments with you and to talk about movies with you as always passion for so many years now and I filmmaker <laughs> I'm looking forward to another year of doing that. This man I don't has know, a This is reminding me of um in the Simpsons. You remember like what was it? It was subliminal, liminal, and superliminal. Uh, that, feel, that feels like I don't. I can't tell if I what if I think that's liminal, subliminal, or superliminal. Just wearing a shirt that says "I love films," basically. <laughs> I can't. It's I the can't fucking quite meme. The the music band. I like music yeah. band. Yeah. Ugh. Sincere and informed ball. passion for film than ninety nine percent of this website, including myself. Chris Stuckman oh, did not a little bit more credit. Oh, oh <laughs> Nick, not you! Uh, Matt Jarbo. Poor Matt. Still trying to scrape something together on the internet. Oh. The man, the myth, the legend. Maybe he was he was waiting for the uh, he he was waiting for the uh, I guess to get his next order on Uber Eats to deliver. So he was uh, had some now time to make a wait tweet. a minute, Matt. No, no. He just makes me feel no. Strong. <laughs> Makes me feel great that I'm not him. Something wrong. Exactly. Something I've noticed is that people get mad when you explain how studio meddling can impact a movie show instead of just mindlessly shitting on a crew's work. They yeah, don't want. Also, not I, true. Like how this person it, thinks he explained it. He didn't explain anything. No, he didn't. And Unless everyone else talks about it all the fucking time. I don't understand. Like all the videos we make has mention of the studios at some point or another. Who are you talking to? Who is this about? <laughs> I don't know. Also, he, he's not talking about how it can, like, impact a movie. He's saying it absolutely did, even though he has no evidence of yeah, it. Yeah, I have, he has yeah. a little bit of evidence to the contrary, actually. I have no idea, but it did happen. But I have that's, no idea if it happened, almost, but boy, it definitely happened. That's almost exactly what he said. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it that's is. That's what I mean. He it, admitted several times that he didn't know, and then proceeded to make very definitive and bold statements on what did happen. Either people didn't watch the video, or they did watch the video and they didn't listen to a fucking word. He is third yeah, monitor yeah. content at best. I mean, like, actually... I'm kind of like if we're watch. Oh, yeah, I think EFAP is the only way that he gets to <laughs> become second monitor content. Mm -hmm. Engage in critical thinking. They want to be entertained by the facade of it. So fucking ironic coming from the people who I didn't know. even know what the director thinks of her own work and they're claiming to defend mm -hmm. her, you know? So fucking funny. Yep. You guys don't do critical thinking. We do. Shut up. Yeah, okay, you got it. <laughs> also, yeah, of course, the whole, like, um... People get mad that it's the studio that's fucking it up. It's like, yeah, because there's no evidence ever of any writer being an inept retard, such as... Critical thinking. They want to be entertained by the facade of it. Yeah, that's definitely a case of me just not knowing to, what to do with the script and thinking, oh, crap, we're in the second act. What, it, what Something's <laughs> gotta happen. What, what should it be? They don't want to actually engage in critical <laughs> thinking. They want to be entertained by the facade of it. This is Jeff. He's a screenwriter. Um... 
He's writing it as he goes along. Is it hard? Oh, oh my God. That's what I mean. Like, uh, and they don't even, they don't know about these clips. We're the ones that go check all the fucking behind the scenes bonus features and shit to find out how the film was made. And then we highlight this shit. We go, look at the writer claiming he has no idea what to do. They were, the, the, fucking, he hadn't f even come up with it a third act by the time they were filming the second. The other guys write it as he goes along. It's like, hey, have some respect. They're creatives, okay? Yeah, how about no? Yeah. You can't create things that are bad. It's l it's literally not possible. Gal to comprehend that he's trying to be respectful to the. F uh, oh, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I know. Filmmakers, because he is now a filmmaker himself, and making movies, even under a big studio, is very hard. What's so hard to understand? There's enough grown men making eight-hour podcasts about why superhero <laughs> movie is bad. Not <laughs> everyone <laughs> wants to watch a hate That's circle us. joke. Chris is right. This is hashtag AVGN in 2016 all over again. You're all missing the point. Chris Stuckman is all about love and positivity, so die. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have called him annoying. I will kill you in the name of love. <laughs> It's so fucking funny. It's priceless, honestly. But I will say, the robot sometimes delivers lines in possibly the perfect way. And, uh, yeah. 16 all over again. You're all missing the point. Chris Stuckman is all about love and positivity, so die. Your <laughs> shit. <laughs> so die. <laughs> yeah, these are the ones. I'll end it uh... all. You radiate the most obese, greasy aura I've ever witnessed. I Kill yourself, like scum. <laughs> I want to stick my finger in your eye and feel your iris. Oh my if it god. Wow. Oh, and now yeah. Optometrist is really mad at me. <laughs> they... Uh, 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 what what could be said about that? Like it's just like Jeez, damn, dude. Uh, I get that like people the Stuckmanites are up in arms. People they do the are. thing of being angry about fucking anything, and they'll go over the top. It's just like she said he was annoying, annoying. It's so uh, you do, like what? Kill yourself because you said he's annoying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You don't understand how hard it is to make his videos, alright? <laughs> so you funny. understood how hard it is. <laughs> so he could review it. The inability to comment is the comment. He might as well say it, rather than point at the elephant and scream him not going to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> Eat shit douche nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then just, uh, look at all yeah, that media a bunch hidden. of images, and like, yeah, I'm, I'm not opening that shit. <laughs> I don't know what still that is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs>Happening. Ilk. Nothing wrong with calling it out from the outside. True. Oh yeah, so that, that comment is just, th there's gonna be a lot of true happening in this section. Looking in, <laughs> I think Chris won't trash a bad film in hopes that if his film is bad, he'd be given some grace. Ah! That's a good observation! At this mm -hmm. point, I can tell that you don't want to criticize movies because you don't want to burn bridges with any studios, yep. directors in the future. Even though he I has. think this Except is the studio part. Yeah, yeah. Th and so, this video is an example of him doing that. He's it, just too it, it, dumb to know it. In a sense, he had to pick between studio or director with this one. You know, right? Like, who's to blame? And he was like, well, studio. We'll go with studio on that one. Uh, remember how he mentioned that um, A24, he said, you mentioned them in like a positive light, so maybe he's like, hey, A24, you know, which by the way, much more reasonable that they would pick him up than Sony would. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's more of a possibility, but yeah, Sony, and really, any major studio at all, I would, I would be surprised. 
is BS, because as far as I'm concerned, this hasn't stopped Quentin Tarantino from bashing the lights out of movies. I think that the casting yeah, was done right. well. Uh, Woody Harrelson and Ju uh, Juliet uh, Lewis. Would you have no, I, I didn't like the casting of Woody Harrelson at all, actually, okay. at the time. All right. Actually, since then, uh, we've even been feuding about it. This is uh, Quentin Tarantino's controversial thoughts on natural born killers. He's famously not a fan of it. I'm not feuding, but the he movie. doesn't like me, and I don't because it, he knows I don't like him. Uh, but actually, since then, he's actually been pretty good in some movies. I thought in Ed TV, he was really funny. But uh, other than that, though, I wouldn't cast him in that at all. When I'm, like, watching The Long Fight in Atomic Blonde, I'm like, yeah, my that's God, a great one. this is fucking amazing. Yeah. This is fucking amazing. Okay, wait a minute. No, the, the shots, yeah. the shot took a shit. The, the, the shot's not going on this long. That took a shit. Okay, and then we it goes into the okay. 70s, but then we go and went into the 80s. All right. And that's why you came up with Politically Incorrect, because that was the first, this is basically the 80s part two, what we're living through right now. Well, I'll just take one more go at it. There's going to be a new golden age. Please be there and part of it. Were you a big... By the way, I kind of agree with that sentiment. It's like, please make more movies. I like your ones. Yeah. <laughs> The idea that like that we're, we're due for a golden age, it's like, and he's retiring, he's like, please do, I mean, give me, I have oh. Hitchcock guy. No. I'm pretty sure Once Upon Maybe a Time in Hollywood is a 70 movie. Well, they mm. ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> out of Hitchcock. One more go at it, there's going to be a new golden wait, what, age. Wait, what was please that? Please be oh. there and part of it. Were you a big Hitchcock guy? Or not no? a Hitchcock fan. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you know, he's held back by the Hayes Code. I think he was really... J truly held back by the Hayes Code. I went to the theaters once to see it, and then the scene that I'm going to say was so bad that I had to leave. The funny stuff is still... By the way, uh, the point of this, of this would be, it'd just be so funny for Stuckman to be like, hey, Quentin, can you, can you please focus on the studios? They're the problem. Can you try and be positive? <laughs> yeah. The movie's my stuff. But um, the thing is, uh, uh, I had position, top position on screenplay, and I would have got lots of money because that's where you get all the big royalties and all that stuff. For fear, anybody th would think I wrote that crap. I said, take my name off the screenplay, all right? I'll get story by because I came up with the oh, name. Wow. Mickey. Ain't that fucking nuts, considering everything we've been over? You can do that. He, mm, he asked that. To, to, he, it sacrifices a shit ton of money to get his name off a of product he doesn't want people to think that he had a part to do with the writing. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Ian Mallory. I gave up money for integrity because I just didn't want anyone to think I wrote that. If you don't critique the movie, then how will they ever learn? Don't you have an entire yeah. series called Hilero City, where you essentially laugh <laughs> at bad movies? It's okay to call something bad, bad. I don't GAF how much. T's so sad for the maker who got paid a fortune and works <laughs> for a billion dollar studio. Criticism uh, isn't a personal attack. Oh, true. Oh, true. Oh, true. Don't true. Understand this. Yeah. How to say, mm -hmm. Madam Web sucks, without saying, Madam yeah. Web sucks. Mm -hmm. Remember yeah. when Sonic the Hedgehog's trailer released? The design ah, was horrendous. Yes. Intense <laughs> criticism followed, caused the creators to rethink some things. Mm. Design was changed. Now the films are far more appreciated and appealing. Criticism True. is needed, causes people to change, sometimes for the better. I started a new business, faced criticism for my running of said business at the beginning of its formation. I listened, was humble, and took the criticism. It's now more successful than I imagined. Films, like many things, need to be criticized. Helps them become better if the creative team and studios behind them are humble enough to accept it. I have to talk yeah, about this. Like... Proceeds to not talk about this. <laughs> 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 so, my takeaway from this is, if this was a good movie, he would be praising it, but because he is making excuses to stay away from saying it's bad, then he must have thought it was really bad. I wonder if when he gets a bad meal at a restaurant, he says, well, my steak was poorly cooked, and the waitress was very unattentive, but they worked really hard, so I forgive them. Oh, no, it wouldn't be that. It would be that he would eat it, and then when they ask how was the meal, he would just get up and leave. <laughs> it would be, well, no, that would be, it would be, that would be sort of be smart to get up and leave. He would instead say something along the lines of, well, you know, not every... Steak can get. I mean, I there, I there I must have been bad meddling. It's like it's like having uh, it's like ha going to a restaurant, having bad service, like terrible fucking service, and then tipping them anyway. Yeah, well, and and, and targeting bit, it, it, the um the the parent company, like of the yeah. whatever thing you're in, like it's like this all day. I'm sure your manager. Tipping, while he's real tipping, problem. is like it's not your fault. You couldn't do anything about it. Your 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 service was not a home run. 
But I, I understand that it was <laughs> yeah, not your I was, fault. Okay? I was constantly needing refills, and you didn't bring me my silverware, <laughs> and you, you didn't get out our appetizers in time, and I had to ask you three times for the salad that should have arrived before everything else. But you know what? Um, uh, boy, what a... I, I sure do love making like, films. In an interview format, you know, hey, Chris, you recently uh, dined at, you know, whatever restaurant. How was it? He says, well, I don't want to bash them. It's like, oh, so it was awful. So... <laughs> <laughs> And he's just like, I just told to bash him. I don't understand the strange need to defend the writers and directors, and somehow blaming the studio for things being bad. The team of writers, the director, are those that fail. Now the studio is partially the blame too, because they okied it. But the people on yep. team have either no history of good results of their work, or are consecutive flops. Yeah, he even yeah. mentioned this, but doesn't feel the need to say that it's an important element. He's like, eh, it's the studio. Sony. It's not indicative of anything that the writers have only made bad flops. This just feels like someone worried they're gonna burn bridges if they say yep. a film is bad as a director and not a critic. Mm -hmm. It's Honestly, these comments so it... are, are like really life-affirming. Yes. <laughs> this video sucks so much. And you flip like, it the oh, other okay. way. If you believe that Chris Stuckman is not going to say things are bad because he's worried about burning bridges, then a part of you has to be wondering, does he, is he going to say that things are better than they actually are because he wants to build bridges? Because both of these are the exact same sides of the, you know, the coin here. At what point do you say, I can't trust this person? He is, he's given in. He's bent to the knee. He's kissing the ring. It's also extremely difficult to bake a cake, but I don't go around studios asking ATM to make one if I don't know how to make a good yep, one. There's a yeah, difference. That's the thing. Eighty million dollars. Everybody who was involved would have been paid at least six figures, probably also, seven. Can we now conclude, especially with I, I mean, the, the high level, the likes of all these yep. uh, comments? He is at the very least incredibly poorly communicated his points. Yes. Yep. Because, he would have yeah. to concede that. Everyone is pointing out the thing that he thinks that he's trying not to point out. I mean, look at look at this. It's like, again, and that's a 1.5k likes. It's between bashing creators and criticizing art. I cooked eggs that's once, true. so now I can't tell you if a restaurant is any good. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, beautiful. Oh, that's good a good meme, man. That's a good, that's yeah, a that's good, a good meme. I, as you can tell, I thought it was good because it already had 16 likes, and I was like, I Better know, Lord. It's pretty that's good. That's a, yeah. Good Food job. critic. Chris, I have to say this man are Angry oh, Joe. Oh my God. Angry Joe. You <laughs> Let's go, Joe. Angry Jeez. Joe, with 2.6k likes as well. After being a follower and subscriber of yours for as long as I can remember, never feel bad about or straight out refuse to criticize something harshly when that piece of media deserves it. The second you do that you are no longer a reviewer, and that's not bashing, Madam Webb, that's telling it like it is, and you need to continue to do that to maintain credibility. People will question if you are being kind to something else for other reasons besides the merits of the media if you refuse to criticize harshly when warranted. Madam Webb is a bait and switch, it's a waste of money, it's a blatant cash in from untalented hacks with some of the most shockingly bad writing in any superhero film to date. People need to know that. I feel that because you are a filmmaker you act as if you can't do certain things anymore or can now do your job as effectively anymore, which should NT at all be the case. You can do both still, Chris. Who are you worried Why? about offending so much? Yep. This yep. video was so much soft trending when it's not warranted. You talked about everything else but this steaming pile of crap. When we want to know what you thought of it, that why we clicked. That's why we watch your videos. Never forget that for every shitty writer continuing to do movies like these, there are one thousands of other writers and directors, like yourself, who are mm -hmm. trying to make ends meet, who are far more talented getting passed over. This is something that Chris didn't even imagine as a point, which is correct. There are people who will accept these jobs knowing for you know lack of a better term they just give up in terms of the like way in pushing in in terms of getting creative stuff or they're not even creative they're there for the business side the fact they can make money i can write a shit thing like morbius and i'll eventually get mad at web and i'll just write that too quote unquote and i'll keep getting money and then there's someone next to him who's like man i really care about writing you don't seem to even like recognize what you're doing but no we don't entertain that because he's a creative okay and creatives yeah, are to be there's... defended that's right. There's this element of, by allowing these shitty movies to exist, they are taking up space that could be reserved for other people. Yeah.
You owe it to your audience to review something harshly when it deserves it, not tiptoe around it or sidestep it. And just because you bash a film doesn't mean you are bashing the person or people who made it. Sometimes it's warranted so all those involved can do better or step out of the way so that others can take their place. Don't be afraid to say what needs to be said, Chris. We want to be stuck <laughs> I imagine that's pretty funny, but I imagine that when you've got like Angry Joe coming along with a pretty lengthy comment, like like criticizing this video that yeah. my guess is that there's going to be some kind of response or follow-up this angry is too, joe too bad of a reaction you know mm -hmm. he did not give chris tuckman's video a badass seal of approval no he didn't no he didn't and he demanded to be stuckmanized the crazy thing like i said is the 10k <laughs> sub loss i was like damn this is really taking a yeah, chunk out oh, of chris yeah. chris we want to be stuckmanized get stuck manized. This was sad to watch. <laughs> I guess I won't ever come back to the channel of a movie critic who won't actually criticize a movie. Yeah. Fans, yes. why don't you use Spider-Man in your movie, Sony? Why make trillions when we could make billions? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I just read your description. I see you're earning a cut from people seeking mental help. Nice. It's comforting to know that when someone is at their lowest that there's a really nice YouTuber to come in and take a cut. Damn, and that's not even regarding <laughs> better health controversies. That's just an yeah, ouch. Yeah, that's yeah. just the referral link sort of thing. Sanctimony here. Something should not be free of criticism because someone worked hard on it. That can be said for nearly any movie. Mm -hmm. I think you, you can and just it say it for all movies. For, for well, almost no, all things. For many things yeah. in life. Building a building is hard, but you expect it to remain upright and not collapse in your head. You, you know, cooking can be difficult, but you don't expect to get salmonella. Like, there's a lot of things that you just, it's hard, but there is a purpose that it has to serve. A, a, like a functionality, a base level of functionality that it has to meet. Mm -hmm. 16 minutes of, I don't want to criticize that because maybe I want to work with them someday. I miss yeah, the old Stuckman true. with the sense of humor back when he was a critic. So. Oh my god. <laughs> this is that's it for the his YouTube section. Now we're into the I went and had a look at what he used to do because I've been told by everybody that they used to like a lot of his stuff. And I will say when I was checking it out, I was like, good God, he is he like used to seem to care somewhat. And here's a compilation of such things. Hmm. I don't think it fucking works. <laughs> the script is fucking dumb. That's fucking why. He takes a book and he's like. Oh my his, god! His backgrounds, <laughs> his backgrounds used to be so much better. They used to have a lot of character. And this, looks like of character. A, this looks like a real place to it's me. Full yeah. Length. The, the real other one is just actually... like staged and fake. <laughs> the blue lighting. The, yeah, look at my blue lights. <laughs> yeah. Look, look, it's a din it's a Mandalorian. That's I sure do love Mandalorian. This has Batman and Robin. Not only posters, but action figures. Mm -hmm. There's Laura Croft Tomb Raider. That's true. Love right there. That, that frame photo. I love of it, the happening Cage poster. Too. Yes. There's Goku, Goku and uh, and Iron Man and Hulk and and Toon Link. Zoe completely miscast. Oh yeah! Look at this. Look at all of these wonderful things. Look at all Wait, the stuff. It looks so much say, more real. Was he about to say that he was. was Rags is distracted by looking at his stuff. You're missing the compilation, I am... Rags. You fuck. I'm... Uh, Rip you, is you... fucking dumb. That's fucking why. He takes a book and he's like, <laughs> Zoe completely <laughs> miscast Deschanel. You can't see a damn oh fucking thing. And it sucks. Oh my god. I know. What's happened? Who is this man? The life force <laughs> sucked <laughs> out of this man. Oh my god. And it's just fucking weird. I didn't like it, it was uncomfortable, I fucking hated it. I really, really, really didn't like this movie, and I expected it to be at least kind of not good. But holy fucking shit, it's so boring. So they meet up with John Legua, I ruin every movie I'm in, Zamo. Wait a sec- Hey, no, <laughs> that was too hard. Jesus Christ. Right. That's where I draw the fucking line. But at least, at least, it's, an <laughs> but at least it's an opinion. It's I was an gonna opinion. say. Yes, but that's still, yes, opinion, don't go after Johnny well. Legs. I way prefer the fact that, like, this is the Chris over, like, yeah, that's- He that, made me that, think of Ice Age. <laughs> exactly. Second. That doesn't make any sense! There's barely a semblance of a narrative. It really just comes down to the unintentionally hilarious motion capture work and how horrific everyone looks. Is M. Night Shyamalan a genius? Or a hack? 
you see the major issue with George Clooney's portrayal as Batman, which could have been in the writing or his direction as well. Instructing the cinematographer, oh okay, and slowly dolly in on the butt fucking dog. Her acting in this movie is so, <laughs> so bad, and I am a fan of hers. I mean, she is just downright awful in this movie. The way John Travolta's dressed, the hairpiece choices, his acting. The, you see, this is his transitionary period. He's starting to... It's draining out of him now. It's like it's, it's still there. Yeah, the criticism, yeah. I see like, the background. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've got the blue idea. We got the N64. We got the SNES. We've got the Not statues. The NES. Casual. Are you fucking idiot? Oh, is it? Yeah, I legit. I, I, I know. Yeah. Get out of here with What's you. What's the? You yeah, ruined I, film I, discussion. I didn't know. Not the NES. All right. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Plot? And the fact that Steve Limp Biscuit fucking SNES. directed it. It's just, yeah. it's a novelty item, this movie. This movie is prepackaged and gift wrapped for the hilariosity segment. The casting choices are odd. James Corden and Rebel Wilson seem extremely out of place. And the comedy that they're going for was so terribly unfunny that I just, I locked up. Do you know what I mean? It was like, yeah, it's a B movie. You know, you're supposed to be entertained by it. It's like a, a movie where it's like, yeah, we're cheesy. We're being that way on purpose. That's that's where I'm. Well, that's right. Yes, cheesy B movie because that's what everyone's gonna think when they see it. This is where I fully checked out from Fred Durst as a filmmaker. I haven't seen a moment in film <laughs> that on the nose in years. The director having a character in the movie specifically like vocalized that he loves the director's band. I've never seen a moment so in your face as that. Oh my god, wait a second, I don't care anymore. What were my problems with this movie again? I forgot about everything. I love this movie. I'm not gonna <laughs> criticize the music, and I'm also not going to <laughs> praise this film for its music, because for the most part, this movie didn't invent any of this music. I really don't have anything else to say. Cats gets an F. This is a short review, oh I know, god. but there is nothing redeeming about this movie. I found it hilarious in all of the wrong ways, insanely boring. Despite the story's not Despite how hot everybody worked on it, there is nothing redeeming yeah. about this Motion but capture you, you is get, expensive, like, and it takes a lot of work and effort, and think yeah, of all the design elements, metal. and, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's Do you true. get how he used but, to be yeah. a normal human, though? Do you see it? It's all there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. pieces. And he's not a human anymore. He's just like a... <laughs> he's more He's more vegetable than animal. I hated the CG. The music was fine, but it's taken from something else. This is just an embarrassing movie that never should have been made, and I honestly am just baffled that it exists. And if it was today, he'd be like, I'm not going to talk about cats. I'm not going to talk yeah, about it. I'm not going to talk about cats. <laughs> yeah. People work hard on cats. Oftentimes, the first decision or the first idea that you have when you're writing or, in the case of an actor, performing is probably the worst idea. Usually when you're crafting, say, a screenplay and it's your first draft, usually the first idea is good enough to get you from page to page and craft a good first draft that you can then go back and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. And usually oh you come God. up with second, oh. third. He's giving advice to creatives. He's being critical his his so advice of the creative process. Third, fourth, and fifth ideas that are way better than that first one, because probably the first one was the most obvious. In the case of Travolta's performance in this movie, and the way he's directed, it's always the most obvious first choice. Exactly what you would think he'd do with a character such as Moose. So X-Men Origins, this was an attempt at a big franchise. I think it failed. On every level possible, directing, style, CG, acting script. Yes, I mean, when a studio makes a film and that film has specific points that reference and make fun of this one, Deadpool. Yeah. When another studio, like, let's just make a movie and make fun of the last thing we tried to do. Like, that's just, it, it baffles me that this film and The Wolverine have the same IMDb score. It says something about our culture and the blind love for bad things. And the blind love for bad things. Oh, now we're onto this is going to be the final section, but the okay. Oh, all I would ask of Chris is, does he disavow all of what he said in those clips? That's an he interesting would, question. He would write it on a resume. He'd be like, "I disavow anything I said I think before 2022 or whatever." It is curious that not only do we have him saying that he will never do what he's done before again, and that also people saying this is exactly how a critic should act and this is good going forward. He's left up all of his most clicked and influential videos that criticize creatives. Should he not take them down? Should he continue to benefit financially from something that he condemns in the future? Hmm. I think that they can be fun. They can be interesting. They can be helpful. And they can be an exploration of expression.
and I don't Cathartic. think they should be taken down. And I think that he has completely lost his way. I think Chris Duckman has been assassinated by the new Chris Duckman, the cowardly Chris Duckman. See, there you go. That's the title. We can go home now. I go home. Chris Evans. Is <laughs> I was going to see how long I get that silence to go for. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, final section. Uh, this is something we should have covered fucking ages ago. I don't know why it took so long. Uh, this is something that happened, and you'll have. I feel like I shouldn't give any context, to be honest with you. We should just let this play out. But that uh, Rag isn't back yet, and he's going to want to know the full context for this. So oh, I suppose gee. we'll just have to talk for a moment. But the, that was quite a journey, wouldn't you say? Because this is like an additional. This is this is like a you know this is like the after credit scene, so to speak. It was quite a journey. What have you learned, Cap? What have you learned? Um, I have learned that uh, the way to make it as a filmmaker is to shit all over the studios you want to finance your movies. That's okay. a good strategy. Uh, they really like it when you do that. And it's a great way of ensuring that in the future, you'll just get unlimited money to do whatever you want. Is that it? Is that all the insight we have today? Is this all you can summon, Saruman? That wasn't Let's ask the, the other members of our fine panel. What did you guys learn? What did I learn from that video? Oh, oh well, I I didn't learn it, but I suppose I, it reinforced it. Uh, just say it in a nice tone of voice, and you can get away with a lot. Should have said that in That's a nice tone of voice. I could have. Did I say that? And I don't know that I did. I probably <laughs> well, should have said it in a nice tone of voice. But we're just yeah. like happily talking about somebody, just be like, oh yeah, uh, you know, Chris Duckman, he's just like the most destructive force for you know film criticism. But um, yeah, we'll probably just you know just talk about some other stuff as well. And just like, oh well, what was that? And you're like, nothing, nothing at all. I don't Jay actually Longbone, think that by the way. Did you learn, Jay Longbone? Did you learn not to be annoying or not to call people <laughs> annoying? I should say. Yeah, I also learned how to not be a mammy, which is something someone called me because of that fucking tweet. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a bunch of shit. But like, yeah, I would uh, say ditto to what Fringy said, uh, but also to add on to it, I, I, I learned that I feel very sorry. <laughs> Did you, um, were you a fan of Chris Duckman before, or did you just, like, like what's your, your point of view on him? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I subscribed to him and I like some of his stuff yeah, back during that, yeah, the golden era, some spirit. Uh, and then he started to get, like, worse and worse and more withdrawn, I guess. And, like, it, it, you just, he's one of those people that you're subscribed to him because you just forgot to unsubscribe. <laughs> you, you, just kill, you still keep finding his videos in your feed. Uh, for some reason, you just don't know why you're still hanging on to him. But yeah, I, yeah, I just I kind of pity him because it's just like it, it takes a lot to beat down your spirit this much. I don't know what it is. Now, like I'm not being you know passive aggressive or anything. I'm just genuinely worried. Yeah, um, because a lot of people are saying <laughs> that the reason he's ended up the way that he has is because he works so hard on films. You're know, like, so why did that kill his spirit? Mm-hmm. Anyway, hey Rex. He, that would that, Hello, you, hi. Like you think that would boost his uh You'd his think. happiness oh, about shit. films. Oh, <laughs> Off he goes again. Oh, um, there he goes. <laughs> well, yeah, uh the because like we've got a few chapters in EFAP's history now on Chris Duckman. And if he does make a response video, depending on how interesting it is, we might end up covering him again. Because I'm curious if he would respond to all of this in some attempt at being coherent, because he needs to do so much more work. And if he was to try and go as far as saying something like, you know, I, I don't have the time anymore because I'm working on my major projects, it's like, well, then maybe stop making, like, crazy claims. A bit, a bit reckless. Um, yeah, since I have no idea when the rags may or may not return, I suppose we will just carry on. Also, uh, someone Wait. mentioned... What? Before we do... Um, have any of you seen his video about leaving the Jehovah's Witness? Uh, oh, yeah, group? yeah. Isn't that the one where he said he was pansexual or something? 
Uh, I don't remember that part specifically, but honestly, it's probably the best video he's ever made. He's not talking about a movie. He's just talking about his experience growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, it's a really interesting video, and ironically, probably the best thing he's ever made. So I would recommend that. Well, I've, I've heard some people say, could it, him being uh, a part of a Jehovah's Witness explain the lack of emotion? And I was just like, but he wasn't lacking emotion once mm -hmm. upon a time. Yeah, he seemed like he was like an actual, I mean, like we meme about it, but he did seem quite human, you know, like he felt like an actual person. He felt like he had emotions and he had things to share and opinions and he wanted to let the world know that I, I, he didn't say I love movies. He implied that he loved movies in the way that he talked about movies. And he had a passion for criticizing things and talking about stuff. And I like this and I hate that. And, and some of the joke kind of hit, and he was expressive and emotive, and he moved his hands. He moved physically <laughs> his hands around. He would gesticulate. Well, I never watched him. Uh, and also, it was mentioned that we may have covered this before, but I mean, I don't remember that we did. Did we? Do you, does this seem familiar to you, Rags, uh, RLM, and Stuckman? Oh, they they had his. Uh, they were talking about like. Well, wait! Don't say it critic. if you know what it is, because. Oh, some okay, don't. okay, yeah, I do. I do think that I have to. Um... All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the important part of this is more so the angle that a lot of people have highlighted who he wants to work with, but the one angle that I didn't see many people highlighting, but I still think has merit, is uh, if he can discourage everyone from criticizing filmmakers, then when he releases his film, he might be able to set a, a an easier time for himself instead of dealing with everyone saying, "Nah, you shit." Brr. I think, well, I mean, there's probably some truth to that. I think a lot of people well, who make content, they can have a certain vibe to them that sort of staves off criticism. How has he dealt with quote-unquote criticism before? Let us, let <gasps> us see. And this episode of Review, and this episode of Review, who are you going to call? That's right, the Ghostbusters. What is going on, guys? How are you doing? Uh, normally, I don't like to make cell phone videos, but I thought, why the hell not? It's Facebook, who cares? Um... This is something I was not going to address or even really worry about. But at the same time, I care about my fans. And I want to make sure you guys know how I feel because you guys really are the best. When I say it in the videos, I mean it. You're the best. Um, that being said, people like to overblow things, which is common on the Internet. It happens quite often, as a lot of you know. Today, we're talking about the Ghostbusters, the 1984 comedy film starring Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Hal Ramis, and Ernie Hudson. Rich. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Red Letter Media, my favorite YouTube channel, favorite YouTube channel, have liked them for, what, 10 years? Was it 07 when they started? So like nine years? 08 maybe? I don't know. What? You're a YouTuber, but you're not an asshole YouTuber. Oh, fuck. Love them. Love their videos. Love, love, love their videos. Always have. You can ask my friends. We'll say things in the Plinket voice all the time. Queen Amidal and the protagonist, we do it all the time. It's the best. Now, as you can tell, I'm building up something. What did they do to him? Because he's quite broken I right now. Don't know. <laughs> they've done, don't they've know. done something to him to make him say all this. And the clips of RLM of what I'm building up in the background, they're heading toward making a statement on him, and, and obviously it's had an effect, so we're, we're soon to discover what that is. I love their videos. Favorite YouTube channel, ever. Uh, I've donated money to their website. <laughs> Multiple times. I've bought their film Space Cop. I watched it. Enjoyed it. You're a liar. <laughs> but that's okay. They didn't even enjoy it. <laughs> they didn't even enjoy it. Um, but you're not an asshole YouTuber. Oh, fuck! I got confused. Yeah. Never got to talk to him, though. And the first time that I ever got mentioned in one of their videos was jokingly, harmlessly, uh, being referred to as a prick. I saw a red curtain. I thought we were that one prick. What's his name? Uh, there's so many pricks I, out I, there. I can't remember his fucking... They, uh, Rich Evans was talking about, uh... Uh, oh, the prick, uh, the prick with the red background. You know that one prick? And then they, uh, uh, Mike was like, no, you're not one of those asshole YouTubers. Uh, which prick is that? And then they had like a picture of, uh, of me and Jeremy Johns, my friend. my friend. And it was like one of these pricks. And then it, that was their intro. And um, they took like a photo of me that has a blue background and, and used Photoshop to make the background red to sort of make the, the joke punch more, to make it hit more, you know? 
when you are a huge fan of somebody like that, and that's the first time you ever get mentioned after supporting them for so many years, for me, there was just a moment where I was like, oh, okay. I mean, if that's how they feel about me, then okay, that's fine. And it doesn't did sound I fine. say or do anything about it? No. I did remove them from my channel box, though, and it was sort of an impulse decision. <laughs> I, I mean... I don't, I don't I, know. I don't know if I want to like. I, yeah. I okay. Like, all right. Like, it clearly bugged you, and I guess that's fine. You know, to be bugged by that. I get called you know, a prick by people who like me all the time. Yeah, it's like I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think the um the key is whenever red light media make fun of you, uh, you should be excited. Yeah. They usually do silly shit and fun shit. You should never assume <laughs> that they hate you for for that clip, especially where they're just like, "Who's that one prick?" And then they throw three people on screen. And you're just like, "Oh, you do this to me." And they it wasn't confirm you something I did in anger, but I think most people in my position, when you go out of your way to promote someone, um, without ever being asked, and and you're just doing it because you love their content. Yeah, that's what and then promotion the first typically time is. They ever seem to notice you is that, even though it is a small joke. Part of me was kind of like, I guess I don't really want to promote them because Damn. I, if that's how they feel about me, because as I said, I've never actually gotten the chance to talk to them or meet them, then I guess they probably don't even want to be promoted by me. So I took them out of my channel box. Impulse decision. They're back there now in my box because. I messaged them on Twitter because I realized they follow me on Twitter. And I was like, oh, well, maybe, okay, well, I'll send them a private message. I bet you knew that and before I did. this And happened. I was like, we're good, right? Like, this is clearly a joke. And they replied almost instantly, like, dude, no one here thinks you're a prick. Like, we're fine, man. It was it was a joke, and, and we weren't even really talking about you. We just kind of threw that photo in there because you're a big YouTuber. And I was like, I figured that, you know. <laughs> Which almost <laughs> makes you wonder, oh, why did you make this video? If uh, yeah, yeah. God, it's, it's so just, it's just, I don't know, it's just a vibe, all right. I don't it's think he deals with people being mean very well. Uh, which is not unreasonable in terms of a human trait, but you can move past that and get over it with just a bit of, you know, introspection and moving on in life and accepting that, yep, everyone can be a prick. I mean, he must receive all kinds of horrible things from all kinds of comment sections because he's a popular YouTuber. That's just, like, part of the course. Um, and uh, uh, admittedly, you'd be like, yeah, but this is from someone he cares about. And it's like, okay, but it was clearly for fun. Like, they, they just, they called him a prick. It's like, I don't know why this is such a detrimental he, he wasn't even. They weren't even doing an impression of him. Like, no. it's not even clear that he was the one they are even talking about. Yeah, because Rich sounded way more lively than Chris does. Couldn't have been him. <laughs> maybe, no. yeah, maybe he was re referencing old Chris. Exactly. It's all good. We're all friends here. You know, we're, we're all friends. adults. We talked for a bit on Twitter privately, and that was it. No one's upset. No one's angry. No mm -hmm. one... I don't uh, believe you. mad. Everything's good. We're all don't... adults here, like I mm -hmm. said. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And why did you make this? Why did you I, make this? It's, why it's, this video it's, exist? It's, it's just look, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm. My, my thumb is hovering over the X button right now. Okay, it's hovering over that X button. You press X with your thumb. Uh, what else? do you press the face buttons of a controller with any other finger? Oh, than your I, thumb? I was, I was PC <laughs> gamer minded. I was no, you're, yeah, you're right. I was, yeah, I was just in PC okay. gamer mode. I was thinking, I was I, just thinking, it's so you, weird to you put... had to press the A button and like the the circle button or the X button with your so index listen, finger. <laughs> I'm so I'm a I'm a PC gamer. I don't think about controllers and everything. God. So I was like, I just First thought it was so strange that you used was the NES, X. and then also, you Rags, you totally play PC X games with controller favorite. though as well. Yes, right? I have. It has just been so long ago that when you say press X, I think like the the keyboard, the letter X. <laughs> I was like, what oh is my God? This? Totally. The fun. only issue is that I forgot to put them back in my channel box. 
This is it, uh, who the fuck cares, man? You... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's so, it's did anyone so notice? Did he's anyone upset. Heard? He's upset. That's it's the so yeah. That's strange. the point. He's trying to argue he's not upset, but he's very upset. It's very easy to remove somebody from your channel box. You just click an X. Yeah, but it's like because I said, it you. A, I I like how it's like it's easy. Up, yeah, but I you hope. chose to do it because you were mad, and it's okay, kind of. But like, well, yeah. This this is like I said. This is supposed to illustrate. I think this informs his perspective on the whole. Like, we should stop being mean to people who make films. Right, because on the one time that he got called a prick in a joke by R.L. it really bugged him. This this hurt him but, a bit. Yeah. Again, if if you're not, you're never gonna. You cannot convince the world to not be critical. That's just not like that is. That's like an impossible task. I don't even know what that looks like. Where you could just convince people on mass to just be chill whenever they decide to drive to the theater, spend however much it costs to buy a ticket, you know, 10, sit 11, there for 12, a couple hours. Bucks, depends, because yeah. over here you could be paying twenty bucks. Um, yeah, maybe. And 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 then sit there and watch a film and then walk out of it and just go like, hmm, kind of didn't like that movie. You're like, I don't, th I don't know how you can ever expect to embark on the journey of convincing people to not have gut reactions to the things that they see, ever. Um, you just have to accept that if you're going to create stuff, you're going to get criticized. Sometimes it's going to be fair, sometimes it's going to be bullshit, but if you can't deal with criticism, you are going to struggle if you want to do any creative enterprise. And it sucks because he used to like have a semblance of it, right? Like recognizing individual skill sets and tasks and industries within the production of a movie and being able to stretch out his like praise and criticism to differing levels and then respect the fact that time was taken but that a project was bad that was created overall that people pay for and they shouldn't have to they shouldn't have to pay for something that's drac essentially but like he's he lost all of that and i have to imagine you know there's, there's no definitive proof and i'm not a psychologist but the fact that he takes criticism so badly and then he sees the filmmaking is difficult and he's like fuck i don't want to have to deal with like a torrent of people saying you're a pathetic you know whiny idiot who thought he could do it but can't all this sort of mean stuff is like i think i think i should use my position as a force for good and advocate that we should stop uh anything other than film's celebration but i mean i just what does that look like you wouldn't what what is the world that you can create where you will have convinced the majority of people when they walk out of a film to never think something negative about it when they walk yeah. out of the, the theater. The thing is, he could have advocated... That they're with. He could have advocated that we stop being unnecessarily cruel. That would have been pretty straightforward oh, that yeah. nobody would really disagree yeah. with. He teaches us where to direct our criticism, maybe. Mm -hmm. But instead he said, I won't review it because I don't want to bash a movie. Well, when yeah. you're, if, you, if your dream comes true and you do get put in charge of making big movies and writing them and directing them... You better, you better, th you better be really good at doing that. Because... Well, and even even in the unnecessarily cruel video, he should probably recognize like there's times where it can be really entertaining or it can be as part of an, an art project in and of itself. There's a lot of things in the world like satirist, satiristic uh, productions that are based on trying to make Satirical. fun of another thing. Yeah. Well, it's... his his apparent love of filmmaking it never comes through in his videos. Now it's the most boring, dull, flat shotted look trailer footage kind of stuff you can come up with. You you'd have to he would have to tell you over and over and wear t shirts that explicitly state it and insist over <laughs> and over. No, no, no. I really do love films. That's why that doesn't show up in my videos in in any way. How I shoot like cinematic venom. When both of the times that we've covered him, the second time he was on, great video, he actually did something that was like interesting and clever, where when he responded to his old video, he shot it, like, but he bought a jacket to match the old one that he had, he found the tree, he acted like he was a time traveler responding to his past self. Like, if, I get more, I get more filmmaking vibes from that than I've really ever seen from Chris Stuckman. I mean, to be fair, he's, he, the passion used to be there, but like even in production, he never really implemented any um, of what he learned in filmmaking into his YouTube videos, which he could have. It was an impulse thing where I thought to myself, well, if that's really how they feel about me, then I, I guess I don't really have to promote them anymore. But I wasn't going to say anything about it. I can't speak for the, the person in the but video that's what that you're they doing were here. clearly making fun of, because it isn't the first time they've made fun of that person either. And like I said, he is my so friend. What, so what is it meant to be that they're making fun of either Jeremy Johns or Armored Skeptic? 
I don't know what conclusion he's sure. reaching, but the conclusion he should have reached was just they just having a bit of fun. It's nothing it was serious. a meme. It was a joke. Yeah, it was it's a fun a joke. joke. Yeah, it's just a little joke. Just a little jokey joke. It was kind of like, uh, but like I said, <laughs> I <laughs> we talked about it. Like Red Letter Media and I actually got to talk about it. And it's fine. No one's mad. No one's angry. Nobody's angry. People are overblowing <laughs> things as usual. Um, Nobody's mad. To the be people? honest. Or you. To be called a prick by Red Letter Media in a video is kind of a compliment. <laughs> uh, is it? No, but, um, uh, is it? You didn't treat it like it was a compliment. No, you got very upset. So that's, that's, I mean, hmm. <laughs> <'Cause>, I mean, <laughs> it's a real laugh. Who, who else would you want to call you a prick? Just some random asshole? Well, I mean, evidently you plink. didn't because you removed them from like your channel. And you just told us. <laughs> you told us the story, Chris. Seconds you told us the ago. story and the reasoning. I don't understand. Like, what? Why is and this the, video. Like, why would I promote somebody exists? who called me a prick? But, I mean, really, it's a compliment. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fucking Plinket, of course. Still my favorite YouTube channel. Honestly. Thank goodness. Um, it was just like this weird thing where I was like, "Does this not feel like someone uh, nudges you into a wall who was your best friend in, in primary or elementary school, and then you you like cry, and then you come up to them later and say you're still my best friend, but I just thought you should know that I just wanted to make sure you knew when you pushed past me, you hit you hit me, and like we were best friends, you did hit me, but the ultimate is kind of funny, but." We're still best friends. Just like, what the fuck's yeah. happening? And I think it was really a compliment <laughs> that you did it. I'm glad you did it, actually. Now that like, we've talked about it. Oh, right, so, sorry. About? And then we talked about it. I was like, oh, it's fine. You know. This is it weird know, that good. he's in a room that's like dark blue. Is it weird? I yeah, I think that's kind of an, I, I that's an odd color abnormal. for a room. I feel like the most blue. normal color for a wall is is cream slash white. Yeah, um, like because yeah. you want to because the color of your walls is going to be it, it, it's going to impact how bright the room gets, right? Um, That's true. It's really important for interior design what your sources of light are, and you know, east and west facing windows, things of that nature. Oh my but god, is... Rags the architect here. Yeah, my parents are architects. Um, but it's it's just it's odd to me that he has a dark blue room. I wonder what the reason is. is this like his movie room where he watches movies and stuff? Because that might make maybe, sense. Maybe. If that's his yeah, place where maybe. he watches all this stuff. Because you'd want a darker room for that. Maybe that's it. Maybe this is the, the sanctum. Uh, <laughs> the, this is the Stuckman sanctum where he, he watches are. his films. People overblow things. People make something out of nothing. And uh, everyone's happy. <laughs> like you. Everything's everyone's good. happy, man. I got a shit ton of editing to do. But I'm not I'm mad. Sure I'm not mad. You're not mad. I'm not mad. The facts. And, uh, excuse me, facts. And we're aware that, uh, yeah, nothing is wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. No, oh my no, God. Well, have a good day, guys. Just... Look forward to more uh... videos. I am working a lot right now on them. I need to stop eating Domino's pizza, though, because it's so easy to just order a pizza when you're editing. It's so easy to do that. Okay. You guys Would ever the grease affect your brain? Is that what you're implying? I will it. say, I will say though on the on the topic of food, I was gifted for my birthday an air fryer. Oh and hell yeah! They're fryer, they're pretty. Yeah, I've never had an air fryer before. Now, oh, let me great. tell you, the whole new world of possibilities has been opened up for me. So far, I've really been enjoying my air fryer. So, something to think about if you need something quick and easy. Hell yeah, air fryers are great. Oh well, yeah, I've been doing like broccoli, green beans with them. Some chicken thighs. We even tried some bacon in it, but like veggies and stuff. Oh, per excellent! Highly recommended. Good, potatoes good stuff. Are good. Oh yeah, that's on my uh, that's on my to do list because you know, I love my I love potatoes. Oh boy, I sh I love potatoes. <laughs> so that's it. Adventure complete. Wow. Woo! Oh, I learned so much. What did you learn, Rags? Hmm. Yes, you weren't here when we were talking about what That's we true. learned, so you got to provide an answer. Well, give me a, give me about a minute. Let me think about it, and I'll switch you this food. Okay. Hmm. What other generic questions can we ask about what we've been through today? Uh, I'll I have a random thing. So I I can I keep coming back to David Fincher in my mind because I feel like he's a filmmaker that actually has a rather mature understanding of the sort of relationship between filmmakers and studios he rather infamously was a, a victim if you want to use that word of intense studio meddling rather famously alien 3 was a disaster and he disowned the movie 
But he since then has said a quote that I quite like that I come to I come back to a lot when I hear people talk like this about studios. He says, I don't make movies in spite of the people who pay for them. It's like, mm. yeah, of course. I like that quote one. a lot. Yeah. I'm not doing it to like get one over on them. All right. They like they're a partner in the process. I don't fund my own movies. They're a necessary part. And I tell them exactly what I want to do and why and explain it all to them. And then we make the movie. Like an adult. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like a bunch of, like, because that's what movie making is. It's a collaborative process. Collaborative process between a lot of different people that have different roles that all ultimately create something that's bigger than their individual part. If you're a director, you have to know how to be able to talk to the costume designers and the hairstylists and the, you know, set people and the film guys and the best boy, whatever that guy does. Um, you, you're going to have to find out, you know, what, what do you do and how do we all make it work? I'm, I'm kind of like the leader of this team. Do you think about what you've about, learned? I, I did think about what. First off, I learned don't don't call Chris Stuckman a prick, even jokingly. He'll take it very seriously, and he'll be very upset. I um, think so. Uh, Twitter's a cesspool. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there really is a lot of probably tactical advantage that can be gained from playing the nice guy, and a lot of people want that sentiment. But I think that when it actually comes to it, people are not going to live that sentiment. Um, Chris can't do it because he, he doesn't seem like he's a bright lad. And he doesn't understand that what he was saying his, the entire time in that video was what he claimed to be the opposite of what he's saying. And I don't think he's pulling a 40 chess on us. Um, I learned that people understand the difference broadly, and this is good. People understand the difference between being critical and being like in personally attacking someone. And the people want things to be criticized. And I think that you're failing sort of your, your self-appointed duty as a movie reviewer by not criticizing the things that need it, because it's the other side of praise. Um, you are undermining people's trust in you when you have this attitude and when everyone can see it, even if you haven't said it explicitly. Everyone knows the game that you're playing. Um, and ultimately, I've also learned, especially with its last segment, watching the clips of old Chris Stuck, or it's like, I guess he was, yeah, I, it's weird, he was younger back then, but old Chris Stuckman was that, he, he seemed like a really you know, neat guy who was very down to earth, very human and relatable. And it seems that in a sort of subtle and semi-terrifying way, he's sort of been chewed up and spat out by this aspiration that... He doesn't want to be, he thinks that being a first-rate YouTuber is maybe, it, that in and of itself isn't good enough. Better to be a filmmaker who makes real stuff. Because when I, when I look at his videos, I never see that spark of creativity. I never see that desire to make things and to, and, and to let your self-expression flow through a, what is ultimately a medium where you are essentially creating mini-movies. You're making five to ten little mini movies about you and how you feel about things. You have camera equipment. You have access to editing. You have your stupid fucking blue room. You have all this stuff that you can do and you never utilize it. You sound just like a boring, boring person. I who think, has to... um, I want to yeah. add to that point that you make in there, Rags, about the sort of attitude towards, um, I guess, YouTube creation as lesser than older more established um forms it seems to me that it's good if you're entering into any creative pursuit to try and focus in as much as possible on what is it that you want to do slash like about any given medium whether it's you know movies or video games or music or you know um like art or any of these sorts of things to try and focus in as much on what is it about that medium that you find exciting that you want to learn how to do and get less out of the mindset of like the status symbols that can be attached to a lot of these sorts of things of like, I'm a filmmaker working in Hollywood rather than the lowly YouTuber who's sitting in their home office, you know, making something that they're really passionate about and excited about and putting a lot of work into. Um, but like that attitude can be, because it seems like there's so many people who basically view like YouTubers well, that's the lesser thing. That's the stepping stone to the real thing that I want to do, uh, rather than an end in and of itself. Absolutely. It is, 
always better, probably, to be a first-rate YouTuber instead of a second-rate filmmaker. Ooh. Well, it's it's funny because you could go for the whole like big fish in a small pond or whatever, but it's like it's not really that. It's just you're a fish in the pond that you like. It's a nice pond. It's it's and then and then the people are saying, yeah, but that other pond's better. It's like, I mean, you say that, but like this pond's real nice, you know? This pond's real nice, and I got access to plenty. What if what if what does like a regular fish eat? What do they what do they eat? Other than oh, smaller uh, fish, potentially. Other, no, I was that was my first answer, other fish. But they eat like <laughs> oh, plants like algae, they eat little bugs and little bitty you know, like shrimps. Yeah. Krill. As you can see, my krill fish are not my things. area of expertise when it comes to animals. Right? Algae and kelp. Fish are friends. Yeah, I suppose really. so. Fish are friends and food, I guess, as well. Um so I, like if you are a YouTuber and you aspire to be a filmmaker. It might be worthy to ask yourself, what is it about being a filmmaker? What does that enable me to do that in a meaningful sense I can't actually do here? Is it... Is it well, yeah, why, why would I shop my film around to festivals rather than just throwing it up on YouTube for everybody to see for free, for instance? Do you want to like, have access why? to famous actors? Do you, wanna, do you need a big budget for your CGI things? I mean, what is it exactly that you're trying to move away from to get to that will in you know what are you trying to enable yourself to do because as a youtuber you can write books you can just sit down in front of your camera and say you know i've been writing some ideas out for some plots and stuff and you know sometimes i i, I like to visit these and toss them at you guys and see what you think and maybe you can tell me about you know these ideas and see if they're good or not and you just tell people your ideas for your general concepts for things or maybe those concepts make it in to the reviews of what you're covering like it often does when we're covering stuff, when we're talking about movies and shows. Our own ideas, they just bleed through into what we're talking about because we're, I think, pretty creative people. I wonder if this is going to gradually destroy his channel in that the big appeal of him is his honest takes on films and he's openly admitted that he doesn't want to do that anymore and now he's shown us a really bad example of that exact thing. And then he's going to release his film and if it doesn't do well or even if it's, like, good and doesn't get that much engagement, I wonder if he's going to have to, just by, you know, sheer financial reasons, go back to Come reviewing movies. crawling back. And uh, mm. it'll be, at first, under the guise of something, right? Like, oh, no, this one's different because the creator has actually come out and said this, that, and the other thing. Or I decided to catch up on some older movies that are well out of, like, you know, the creators of them are dead now, so I can do some fun reviews of that or something, but then eventually just slip back into what he was doing. I wonder if that'll happen. Don't forget, you're here forever. <laughs> it's, um... Well, it, it, it would be Thanos is, like, reviewing YouTube, you know, stuff, and he's just like, your failure brought you back to me sort of thing, right? Like, it's, it's oh. it would be kind of poetic. Chad has reminded me. He did do that. His Batman vs. Superman script. Oh yes. my goodness. That's right. The legendary Ooh, Batman vs. Superman. We Super definitely covered that. Tell that to Sod Snap Neck. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful meme. It's a that really we see good pop meme. pop up even in our community. It's a really good meme. Oh, thank you, meme. Chatter, for reminding me of that. That's oh. the, um, the Bayoin meme for the stream. It relates to oh, okay. a great Chris Duckman drawing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good Chris Stuckman there. <laughs> Get stuckmanized. I just like, I love the angry Joe ended his comment with, I want to get stuckmanized. <laughs> like, you didn't stuckmanize this in the new one. You got to stuckmanize. What does that even mean? Get stuck. Know. What does that even mean at this point? It's the vibe. I don't know. It's I feel it. I feel like it, it means you're you're being like mind controlled into being. I was about positive, to say it's like, like you're getting, getting assimilated, drugged. you know? You yeah. get dragged it's into the machine and, and injected yeah. with the flames that transform yeah. you into a stuckman nice. What's the uh, uh, what's the Aldous Huxley novel, Brave New World? Mm-hmm. Take your, your happy pills. Yeah. Your soma. Take your stuckman eyes. Take your stuckman pills so you can never be critical. I only happy thoughts here. <laughs> Well, before we wrap up, um, Jay Longbone, since you're the, 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 the cause of all of this pain for so yes, many people, honor. the <laughs> disgusting monster that... Just next time, just don't call him annoying. Just say, you know what? I have feelings about this, and then present it, and that's it. Maybe that will get you the, uh, the chill. Or you should have said, I agree with him on almost every single thing he said, except and then label everything he said. So that 
you know, people don't get past that first sentence and they just they upvote you being like, yeah, I agree with them as well. Um, no, just yes, do I, round 100% table and say, be a simp. should all literally exactly. be this. Everyone literally should be just like Chris. No yes. one's going to do what he did, but sure. Yes. Don't be critical of movies, movie reviewers. In any don't case. Don't you know that's bad? What are you up to? Tell peoples what's, what's happening. Even though, oh, well, uh, I was going to say other oh, than wait, pissing yeah. off everybody. Other than trying oh, to make okay. us watch more porn with you. <laughs> yeah, well, that day is gonna come. There's another one of those. Remember, there's another one of those 365 days movies. So, thank goodness. You better oil up. Anyway, yeah, that's good. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta find out how it all ends. You know, together. So to speak. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I got a channel where I review stuff and react to stuff. Uh, another video coming out later this week. So, if you want to subscribe, you can look out for that. But yeah. Check out my reviews and other videos. Enjoy. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, and of course, well, we mentioned a good old drinker, uh, Gary, and Chris Gore was here for a few moments. He, he, he had lots of opinions. It's funny because like, a lot of people wanted to talk about this, including them, and it was like, oh, this will be a perfect opportunity, but everybody was like super busy with all the different kinds of um, time zones and stuff. But someone who yeah. clearly wasn't was Capital Opinions. What are you up to? <gasps> Tell people. That's me. Tell people right now. All right. Well, uh, we're streaming regularly now on Sundays. Uh, we did a stream like two weeks ago or something that Fringy and Rags joined for. And it was a lot of fun yeah, talking it was about fun. Napoleon yeah, and Ridley we Scott. Ripped into a creative. So nice. Don't say we. You weren't Yeah, you there. weren't there, Mahler. Wait a minute, right. I, I said you ripped into a creative, you bastard. Okay, I heard then. we. That's okay, then. And no, would, he was saying, I, like, I, I like would Napoleon, never, we. I would never like, rip yes. into a creative, because that's not what you're supposed to do. I'd rip into the studio. True. The studio forced Sony Ridley to did. say the mean things about the French. Rip into the French parliament. <laughs> uh, yeah, so regular streams on Sundays. Stay tuned for that. And then Devs is very, very close to done. I know you probably don't believe Yay. me, but it's true. Devs episode four, coming soon. Ooh. And that's what I got. Beautiful. Links to everyone's channels are in the description. We appreciate you all for uh, what was quite a. The, the, you, you guys really liked this episode, I think. At least that's what I'm gathering. Um, it was a, Chris always. He always brings him in. Chris is quite a. He's quite a character. It was funny setting it up. I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to include his comment section. I obviously got to, the whole. The whole original point was just to look at what people said to Jay Longbone. And I was like, oh, I gotta have context. And then when I was listening to his video, I was like. What did the director even say about her own movie? I'll just go check. Oh. And then that's what I mean. Like, the video just kept fucking growing in size. So I was like, oh, I should put that there, put that there, put that there. Then memes. You must want to be a filmmaker. Uh, maybe. Who knows? But, you um, should wear a shirt. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Rags, Fringy, what did you guys want to say, if anything at all? Um, not ready to say anything yet. I think I'm getting over a hump. Life has been very, very busy. A lot going on. But hopefully, you never know. Hopefully. Um, I'm just working, the current project is EFAP TV Hello Season 2, which has been, Woo! oh man, oh, ho, ho, ho. um, yeah, uh, that, um, other things, you know the deal. We have to just watch two episodes in two days, Fringy, are you excited? Woo. Um, Woo! yeah, I'm so excited to see the fall of Reach, it's gonna be yes. really, I'm sure that it's gonna be... I'm sure it's going to rival both The Fall of Reach, the novel, and Halo Reach in terms of its epicness and riveting storytelling. Well, but that's, yeah, that's also, me, Editing Dungeon. You know today, uh, Loki should have come out, but obviously we were here in its place, so it'll go out tomorrow instead. I get, oh wait, this needs to go out too. I try not to do more than one upload per day. Fuck! <gasps> what if I put this uh, out? Well, it, it could go out on, uh, on EFAB, you know? No, because right? that's when Fellowship no. of the Ring's coming out. Oh, right, okay. Jeez, there's so much stuff, guys. I guess we could do Friday. Loki Friday, everybody. I'll I'll aim it to be complete before Ooh. Friday Night Tights, so you don't have to uh, don't have to pick between the legendary entertainment of both. I'll uh I'll set her up so because this this episode you're listening to right now will be out on Thursday, more than likely. Because I got to upload it, get it ready, that sort of thing. Also, someone just said this stream was pointless. How was it pointless? pointless? We just went over like <laughs> yeah, a million yeah. arguments from everyone. <laughs> we learned so you much. It, as a group. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here then? Yeah, N word. Listen, <laughs> if, you, if you walked away from this stream thinking it was pointless, 
then I can see that you're probably a Chris Stuckman fan. And you Damn. Think he's insightful. I'm just sorry. On that note, I, uh, I, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to feel that you think that. I I disagree. I think there were many points. What's going to happen uh, is is now Fellowship of the Ring will come out this Saturday because this episode will be this week's EFAP. Following week, it'll be the Sunday just after. No, wait, the Monday? No, Sunday. Ugh. Basically, you're getting Fellowship, then a week, and then Two Towers, then a week, then Return of the King, then a week, and then all the mini movies. I think they're actually called mini movie or movies minis or some that me and Omega are figuring it out. Of which, like I said, there are either 26 or 7 of them, but plus the three Lord of the Rings and then the weeks, that's 30 weeks of Lord of the Rings stuff that you may oh, or may not good. have seen. That's so right. that'll be if fun. You want to watch those videos to see Sauron get stuckmanized. Ooh. Um, but yeah, on that note, that's all I've got to say. You'll also get your uh, Super Chat catch-ups are also coming out uh, with any days that are free from uploads as well. Muller is just pumping. Got all the stuff on it, all the time. Still that's working right. through Loki. Who knows what else Chris Stuckman go. might want to work for the big budget studios, but we at EFAP, we really know where the money and the support comes from. It comes from all of you. It comes from our incredible fine audience who stuck with us. The what fine, fine people at home. Bouncing from Loki to Halo to Lord of the Rings to Chris Stuckman. That's just, look at that. Yeah, we, we need your super chats to pay for our better help therapists after watching <laughs> Loki and Halo. Um, <laughs> oh, and also, because uh, we haven't mentioned it in a couple of episodes, you got the uh, the EFAB highlights channel is still just just popping out all kinds of things. If you oh, haven't yeah, yet subscribed, yeah. it's uh, it's doing all kinds of things. You never know what's going to happen next. If you're a fan of EFAB, it's a fun thing to jump into. I think. Uh, yeah, the channel's really great. It's awesome to go and revisit a lot of EFAB moments because we've got you know, quite a library at this point. It's great to go back a certain amount of years sometimes and see the origins of memes and old EFAPs and people we've covered. So even for us, yeah. good stuff. It, is, um, it, it like bounces between the sort of cuts of the new stuff and then just random old stuff that pops in based on everyone's sort of uh, requests and links in the comment section. If you just want to let the uh, well, Wolf is the one that runs this channel know, then he'll try and get things done for you. Shorts come out even as well, as shocking as that is. It is possible that there are funnies that happen with under 30 seconds or whatever with, with us. Crazy. Mm. In any case, that's about it and all we got for the night. So we'll just say goodbye, everybody. Have yourselves a fun day. Goodbye, everybody. everybody. Bye. Have a See you later. Day. Have a great bye. night, bye. great day, bye. great bye. afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.